Hey guys, welcome back to Theme of Don't grab your coffee, water, tea. No, I'm kidding. How is everyone doing? Welcome. Um, can you guys hear me? I'm going to put the mic closer. Um, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? All right. So I'm assuming that you guys can hear me and I'm going to continue. Um, Someone said, I am new here. Welcome, Kay, if you're new. Um, my first theme is live. Um, welcome. Actually, let me try to slow down the chat because I actually am very horrible at this. Um, before we get started, I wanted to share something with you because we're going to go over the Moynihan Report. Um, ignore me as I attempt to slow down the chat. Um, I just saw it jumped and I do not want to cause any problems to anyone in here. Um, <clears throat> while I do that, um, <laughs> oh, we have a ton of new people. Welcome, everyone. Um, I actually wanted to address something from the last live. Um, I think I would be remiss if I did not, um, if I did not attempt to do, to, to address this. So, there is this very strange um, thing where I will ask for men to come on to share their views, and they will, I guess, want to come on, um, but they come on and I will ask questions and everyone gets upset. I don't understand it. Um, <laughs> I got my popcorn ready, so so ready for the night, the live. Um, let me share this with you. So this person says, um, if you allow men to talk when they call in, maybe more would actually call in to talk to you. I don't think this is true. I <laughs> Thanks so much for reviewing this. No, thank you. Um, I needed the push to do it. Um, and I've broken it down, hopefully in a way that that feels more like a discussion rather than a lecture. Um, and I decided that I will not be reading it live, but rather kind of going over it. And then we can go to different places in it to to, to sort of figure out um, what it means. Because I, I'm very much confused by people who attempt to use it. But before I get there, let's do this. I think... I am very, thank you, uh, Finn. I think I'm very generous with both my time and the people in the chat box's time. That is, we sit here night after night um, and we attempt to engage in conversations with people that are not necessarily ready to have conversations. You cannot blame a person asking you to elaborate on that which you have said for that which you have said. If you are not yet ready to speak, even if you feel obligated to coming up after I'm asking you to come up, do not come up if you do not understand what it is that you are saying and do not come up and represent yourself poorly and then blame someone else for your inability to articulate yourself. I am not responsible for your inability to articulate that which you believe. Now, while I do w want men on to talk, I am not going to not question you. Like, I'm not going to just allow you to talk and, and not be interrupted or questioned, right? So it would be irresponsible of me to just allow you to just keep talking. I hope that is clear and we can get started. Um, no, you let them talk or filibuster for too long. You give them every opportunity to say what they got to say, but they don't do it. That's how I, like I've rewatched and I hate rewatching. I don't know how you guys do it, but I hate hearing my own voice. But I rewatch it when I'm criticized and I'm very sure that the problem isn't me. <laughs> it's a breakup. The problem isn't me, it's you. And I'm not saying everyone is in, inarticulate. It's just the people who come on here aren't able to 
fully explain where they stand, and that's a problem. Don't expect me to read between the lines and read your minds. I do not have that kind of power. I'm not Charles Xavier, though I wish I was. Um, I cannot. I, I just cannot do that. So um, appreciate the feedback to all the men emailing me and telling me that I should um, give people more of a chance to speak. I have tried. I have tried. I truly have. Um, and I've been embarrassed too many times. Um, thank you for everything again. Hey, everyone. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Let's roll the intro and get into this Moynihan report because <laughs> it's not doing what I think they think it's doing. So let's do that. Uh, Melinda, again, thank you so very much. Um, only Alyssa, thank you. Theme, if you have the patience of Job with these men. Oh, I appreciate that. All right, let's roll the intro and then let's get started. So the question I have is, <clears throat> how does an internal memo from the Department of Labor, the Labor Department, to LBJ at the time in 1965 still have such a tremendous hold on the cultural conversation? I think that is the first and most important question. And when I open the panel up, we are going to broaden the discussion. I'm going to attempt to go through this quickly. Um, well, not, not quickly. We're going we're gonna to be a little bit slow today. <clears throat> and we're going to talk. Because one of the issues that I've had over the past, I don't know, five years, but more pronouncedly over the, most, the, the last year, is the conversation about uh, agency individual agency, our ability to take control of our lives uh, versus the structural issues that we face in society, particularly in the world, being quote unquote African-American or being black, right? And then I hear that welfare took black men out of the home. Thank you, Sapphire. All right, now the, <laughs> I've always known this, but if you're using the Moynihan Report as, as some kind of example, an example of what was happening in the 1960s, early 1950s, late 1950s, and the 1960s and beyond, if you're using the Moynihan Report to claim that welfare took Black men out of the home, there is a ton of problems with this position. The position, mind you, is from Reagan era Republican. What I mean by that is, is that it is a conservative idea. I'm not saying it's wrong for you to have it. I'm saying it is definitely inaccurate. And I don't think people who own the theory understand what it means. So here's what it means. <clears throat> if welfare is the thing that destroyed the Black family, i.e. took Black men out of the home, you have taken the Reagan sort of conservative view, i.e. that poverty, right, is an issue, but it's not about race. It is, not, it is more about morality, behavior, and spirituality, your spirit, right? That is what you have taken. Now, that's fine if that's what you believe, but that is in direct opposition to the idea that taxes, education, and work, employment, are fundamental issues facing the Black community. Now, I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I'm saying that the Moynihan Report can actually be interpreted in these two fundamentally different ways. And we know this because Democrats and Republicans alike have cited the Moynihan Report and have used the Moynihan Report to advance or not advance policy. We'll, we're going to get into, into it in a moment. But it actually treat, infantilize Black men. So I don't understand why Black men would use this or cite it at all. Because it infantilizes black men. It actually 
it highlights something that I don't know if you want to agree is true. It highlights a lack of leadership and masculinity. Now, look, <laughs> I don't tell people about masculinity, but we can talk about it in a moment. <clears throat> <laughs> generous is an understatement i've been binge watching and all these bandits want to do is dusty deflect and blame black women which which is it last night i came to a, a very very specific realization which i will talk about um i will talk about someone said buffering am i buffering please let me know am i buffering all right other people say they can see me, so I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Full kings, no responsibility. All right. Thank you, Curry. All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm not buffering. I can continue. All right. I know a lot of people don't really understand what I mean by this, and we're going to go to the Moynihan Report to draw some quotes in a moment to explain what was happening and, and what this writing implies. So the wealthier, even if we accept this as true, that wealthier, quote unquote, took black men out of the home, you're accepting that wealthier or uh, women choosing wealthier was a better choice than women choosing you. So wealthier and wealthier programs could provide for women what you could not. Now, to the extent that men could not be in the home is a question about the, the actual regulation itself and the rules, which did not exist in most of the wealthier um, statutes and the regulations for more than four, three to four years, right? Now, we can go into that in a moment if someone want to come on and talk about it later. However, the question here is, could you not compete and could we as a community not compete with providing that which wealthier could provide for women? It also is a question of what population was impacted and disproportionately impacted if it in fact took you out of the home because why was it the fact that only one group was quote unquote taken out of the home? Now, hopefully, in the, in, in the beginning, I'm doing all of this because if you click on and then click off, you'll hopefully get it. If we go to the Moynihan Report, when I say it infantilizes Black men, which is why a lot of uh, scholars and sociologists, I don't know why I separated the two, have pointed out that they believe the Moynihan Report was racist. We will get into some kind of historical context between um, the pro-Black movement and the Black power movement versus MLK's approach to the Moynihan Report. Uh, well, not the report, but my, Moynihan's ideas. All right, so here's what Moynihan had to say regarding Black men. So let me be clear. He did not think women make good leaders. So if you're a feminist in the chat, please note that the, the document itself is inconsistent on policy. It is inconsistent on race and what to do about developing the Black community. It is extremely inconsistent. This inconsistency has been used by Democrats and Republicans to push forward their policies. Just an FYI. One thing it was not inconsistent on, in my opinion, is gender. It presumes that the woman should be or at least take the back seat while the man should lead and provide. The problem, the Moynihan reports points out in Moynihan's mind, is that Black men did not have, if you want to call it the moral aptitude, academic aptitude, to lead. And they, they did not have the economic resources, right? And Black women in that way had more power in the relationship, i.e. the matriarchy. But let's look at um, what what the solution was for Moynihan. He says, <clears throat> there is another quality, special quality about military service for Negro men. It is an utterly masculine world. All right. 
there, <laughs> there is something here that is really frustrating, and th that is Moynihan is pointing out that they he did not believe that black men were quote unquote masculine in 1965. And how I know he said he didn't believe black men was masculine. He wanted to remove black men from society in, in the, the largest sense of the word and place them in the military so that they could learn to be masculine, that they could learn discipline. He says this verbatim, by the way, that they could learn, black men could learn discipline. So let's let's actually read the, the full paragraph together. There is another special quality about military service for Negro men. It is an utterly masculine world. Given the strains of the disorganized and matrifocal family life in which so many Negro youth come of age, the armed forces are a dramatic and desperately needed. The armed forces are a dramatic and desperately needed change. A world away from women, a world run by strong men of unquestioned authority where discipline, if harsh, is nonetheless orderly and predictable and where awards, if limited, are granted on the basis of performance. So the advocacy here, <clears throat> Yes, I'm glad you pointed that out. Black men have not been seen as masculine, so how could black women rest in our femininity? Well, so <laughs> the thing is, there is a kind of push and pull happening in the Moynihan report in that he's attempting to coax black men into going into the military to learn masculinity. He said you would be able to compete in the world better. You would um, be preferred in terms of job application. He talks about this in this section of the report. And it's interesting to me because there is this underlying sense of as a man, you do not yet you do not possess the leadership qualities and going to the military will allow you to be able, get this, to compete with women, at least be able to turn the quote unquote matriarchy into a patriarchy. So <laughs> it, they, there's a, I'm laughing because there's a kind of, there's an embarrassment here. The embarrassment here is that when, when I hear men, black men like myself, cite to the Moynihan report as, and say it took them out of the, you can see that welfare took us out of the home, i.e. the Moynihan report. Not only is it incorrect because of, the, the desertion piece, which I think we should get to, but I mean, Sinji, you actually talked about this already, um, how desertion was happening, desertion was happening prior to the wealthier, the wealthier state, but also the reason for women getting on wealthier, Black women specifically, was that they got, they, they were left alone with their children. They call it the quote unquote, poor man's divorce, where even a married couple um, the man would just up and leave and no one would know where he is. Now, there are claims about how women would lie about this and that the man didn't actually leave. Um, these, these claims aren't from academics. They are from people on YouTube. And it's interesting because if the man didn't leave and women only lied about desertion, then you both would have benefited from welfare. So it still wouldn't have taken you out of the home. If there is a man in the channel that is actually of the opinion that women lied about desertion in an effort to get welfare, could you please get ready to come on at some point? Um, not just men, but women. Um, I would actually like to hear the argument here because I thought it was so easily dismissed. The second point on taking Black men out of the home when it 
relates to welfare, again, is the acceptance of the sort of Reagan era conservative ideology that says um, the problem isn't structural. It's not institution. It's not be. It's not about. Uh, taxes and education, but rather it is the moral deficiency in the Black community. When they say Black community, Black women, unfortunately, in this report is relegated to being like every other woman, that they should not be leading, that they should rest in their femininity and all of that, and that the inversion of power that happens because the report points out the lack of education in Black men um, and Black boys and the lack of employment for Black men, that women had to step up and lead. So it is interesting that this report would ever be cited by a man, specifically a man in the manosphere. Now, if you are a feminist who opposes the, the, the report, then you can argue it. If you are a man who is a Republican, like I can see Black Republicans who do not believe that racism is the issue and that the system is perfectly fine and that they are okay, I can see why they would regurgitate anything in this or use it at all. All right. <clears throat> so... When we think about the Department of Labor at the time at LBJ, one of the things we need to understand is that the report is extremely vague. Someone said buffering again. Wait, am I buffering? I am so sorry. I, this might, Techie, I am sorry if I'm buffering. I'm not sure. It might just be you. All right. In any case, all right, they said no. Everyone said no. So it, it might be you. I apologize. I'm sorry. I, my flow is kind of getting messed up in, in terms of like checking to see if it's buffering. All right. So what does the report argue? <clears throat> the report argues that, and I let's bring it up. <clears throat> the Moynihan report argues that one of the fundamental problems in the community, in the Black community, is the family. The unstable, Moynihan argues, the unstable structure of the family will damage efforts to reach equality. Now, the reason this is such an important part, let's actually go to the report, because I actually think this is quite fascinating. It opens with this statement that I find extremely fascinating. The United States is approaching a new crisis in race relations. He talks about what is happening as a crisis. One could argue, I probably should wait for this, one could argue that this might have been the first time, and maybe the last, that the white male community, white men, attempted to help Black men elevate in terms of quote-unquote masculinity. And it's interesting because, wait, the Black Power Movement in the 1960s, 1965 to be precise, actually agreed with Moynihan. Um, not only did they agree, they advocated for policies as the feminist writing at the time pointed out that, and later, the feminist writing at the time and later, pointed out that even though the black the the black power movement opposed Moynihan that their rhetoric was the same, right? And then they agreed with Moynihan that it was okay in terms of what he advocated for them to do, except they did not want to join the military. So they accepted everything up until joining the military. It's interesting because initially they opposed. They opposed Moynihan and the report. The reason they opposed him is because they assumed and articulated that this was another case of a white person trying to come in and describe for Black people what Black people were. And so they opposed it, but they agreed with the sentiment about the patriarchy and that societies function well 
and better as a patriarchy as opposed to a matriarchy. That is, men are natural leaders. Now, <laughs> is this true? Are men natural leaders? The Moynihan Report assumes this without verifying it. Now, if you believe this, this is on you. Um, I am not a feminist, so I wish I were. It is interesting because I don't think by virtue of birth, in terms of your gender that you are a natural leader. And part of that is looking around the community and realizing, well, nah, <laughs> you're not a leader because you have, you were born this way. No, absolutely not. But the Moynihan Report, let's bring it back up, sorry. <clears throat> the Moynihan Report looks at family headed by women as something that is not good. It assumes that the woman should be at home with the kids and the man should be the provider. The man should lead. Now, the, it points out, and I'm not going to this section because I am not reading it directly. I'm not quoting this section. But it says, Black men lack education and employment compared to their women. This has caused an inversion of the roles and the structure of the family. So it is the lack of education and employment. In fact, Moynihan advocated for removing women from positions and giving them to men. The problem comes up where the men could not qualify for these jobs. So as much as one would claim sexism, which I think is a fair critique, like my biggest critique of um, <laughs> the fallacy of black, the, the critique I have of the Moynihan Report is the assumption of male supremacy, the assumption of um, sort of heteronormative roles in terms of the white middle-class family. However, the reason I cannot push back is because I do not have the research available to to dispute, right? Welcome, Mika. I don't have the research and I don't have the information, so I definitely cannot stand on the ground that a two-parent household is the best for the family. Now, I will say a two-parent household is not itself the best because you have to look at the two individuals. And then when you come into the Black culture where there were issues about culture and wanting to be accepted, we literally just had a live. Um, Erica did this live, Sinji did this live, and I spoke about, well, I didn't spoke about it. I speak about it. I played Erica's video on um, King from T.I. and Tiny's son. He had both parents. So the idea that both parents in the home will somehow create a good child, um, and we'll get to that when we talk about the, the tangle, of tangle of pathology here. It's kind of ridiculous, I think. I think so. It would be foolish to take history. It would be foolish to take history without a, without a grain of salt. With a grain of salt. The... We should get into this, actually. Um, I think there's a without there. <clears throat> On my first reading of the Moynihan Report, I will have to admit that I agreed with my professor. It felt racist. All of it seemed racist. My second reading and third, my final reading, the problem is that black women have been been ignored. Black men's history of black black women have ignored black men's history of failure, and I all I, I think actually we I'm going to open the panel shortly after I finish this because I do want to talk um talk a bit more about the the roles in the community because it seems I don't want to use the word schizophrenic. Um, but it, it seems to vacillate between um, I am not a feminist and I am a feminist from Black men. And it's very confusing when we so vehemently oppose um, ideas about feminism, but still want 50-50. Um, and even if you would like to lead, if you don't have the financial resources, the academic intellect, it, like if you don't have the equipment 
to lead, then what is the problem? It then feels like it's all just kind of bravado. And you don't know that which you're doing. So I not you, but like men who come forward and say um, they want to lead, but then you ask them to provide and they say, oh, well, I don't want to provide or blame women for the decisions that their family made um, when they should have, quote unquote, led if they were the leader. So that's part of the problem. Now, again, I actually think as a rule of thumb, we should disregard the Moynihan Report. The reason I think that is because it is inconsistent academically. It is extremely inconsistent, right? The reason I know this is because it says that, uh, I will quote the, 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 the um, paper, the report when we get to it and explain why. The report has confusing ideas about race and the role of government. You can literally, and we know this because both Democrats and Republicans agree about the Moynihan Report and attempt to use it to push forward their plans, right? The Republicans say, pull yourself up by the bootstrap because, again, if you think health uh, healthcare, if you think welfare took you out of the home, then what you're arguing is that the problem in the community is a moral one. It is not a structural one. Um, and less structure from the government would be good. Now, again, have that opinion. You cannot have that opinion while crying racism. You cannot have the opinion that welfare took you out of the home, which is essentially a Reagan sort of approach. You can say, well, maybe it wasn't done right, and this is how you should do it. But to have that opinion is to take either what we call a Reagan approach or the libertarian approach, but either way, it is saying government involvement is bad. You can have that. I don't mind you having that, but know that you are saying racism is itself not a problem. The problem with poverty is a moral question. In fact, this, um, if you read, and I think a lot of people don't really talk about this because it's so confusing, but the the way the, the the report talks about family, I am not sure if the report is saying the bad family structure is a consequence or a cause of poverty. We know they feed into each other. Anyone reading the report knows that the report is saying they feed into each other. But the issue that I'm having when we read it, and when I open the panel for those who have read it, You've known I'm going to talk about this for a week now, so I'm assuming everyone on here have read it. If you can bring clarity to this, that would be great. But it does not say that poverty is a result of the family, obviously ex post, but ex ante, right? Is the cause or a symptom of poverty. The family structure, is that a cause or a symptom of poverty? It does not answer that question, which I think is a fundamental question to answer, to ignore that. I think Moynihan is an opportunist, and he was purposely vague, and he became a neoconservative, right? He then went to the, the, the Reagan administration, so LBJ to Reagan, like, he became a neoconservative, and that became his position. Benign neglect came out of his thought. This was him, right, in terms of how to handle the Black, black problem, the Black problem. So I do think, and if we have an historian in here, it would be great to have a civil rights historian here um, because that would be great. I'm not a historian. Um, I think most historians um, lie because of their, their own biases. Anyway, let's continue. So <clears throat> Moynihan points out that, oh, Christy, songwriter, welcome. Welcome to the membership. <clears throat> So the, the 1965 civil rights movement culminated in um, equality, Moynihan argues, for the Black folks in America. He does not, and, and, and this is really strange, he does point out 
that this kind of equality was de jure equality. Um, I, I don't like moving back and forth between the screens, so I apologize. De jure meaning that it is a formal or legal equality, as opposed to de facto equality, which means that as a person in society, you're equal to the next person treated that way. This inequality is part of the problem he's going to address about full equality. The question is whether or not there should be economic equality, right? This is the Mislav. Let him finish his point first. Wait, I don't know what is happening. I'm kind of ignoring the chat. It's moving too quickly. Um, <clears throat> So the civil rights culminated in de jure um, equality. There is a sort of formal legal equality. Then the question is whether or not we have de facto equality, which is we are equal by virtue of being people and we're treated equally, right? The issue here is that there was a complete ignoring. And this, I have written so much on this. I have never published on it, but I've written on it. So this is the first time I'm publicly talking about the civil rights. All right. I do not like critiquing the civil rights movement. I do not think I have the authority to critique the civil rights movement. And in fact, what I'm about to do is not necessarily a critique of the civil rights movement. It's pointing out something that the Moynihan Report, as we see here, leans in on. All right, not a critique, just an observation. When we think about the civil rights movement, the 1965 March on Washington was not just about freedom of movement. It was not about integration only, not just freedom. There was an element of it that was about jobs. Now, I don't know how that jobs requirement got lost in the civil rights movement. I don't know, well, I, I do. <laughs> the critique will be where I say I do but I'm just going to ignore that critique and go for, for this. It seems in the celebration of integration, we ignored the job part, the economic e equality. We accepted, and I don't, people are gonna say, why are you saying we, you are not Eidos? <laughs> Fair enough, fair critique. I am a student of history, I love history, but I'm not a historian. I put myself in and I should take myself out. So in accepting equality, right? In accepting um, equality in terms of being able to move around, integration, that is freedom of movement, freedom, we ignored, completely ignored the job aspect in the celebration. And when I say completely, I don't mean that no one at all was involved in trying to get economic equality, what I mean by this is that we ignored it in the national conversation. Brown v. Board of Education and the Civil Rights Bill, removing discrimination as a, a legal sort of barrier for people who attempted to discriminate, seemed to be enough as opposed to commanding that even in the federal government that there are better programs, the, the billion dollar freedom fund got ignored. And what the, interesting actually, what the Moynihan report did, right, for people who were very invested in it, it allowed a kind of escape. So the government could say, LBJ, right? The government could say, yes, we agree with what's in the Moynihan report, and we think that there is an inequality in the Black community. In fact, that we think it's the family, but they could escape responsibility of doing anything about it by saying, well, they should bring themselves up. And part of that is not just true, it is embedded in the psyche of the people who espouse ideas that, hey, this is in fact the truth that welfare took us out of the home. If you accept that welfare took black men out of the home, and this is the point through which I'm reviewing this report, if you accept that, what you are saying is that the government should step back. 
Again, you can believe this if you want. You can believe this if you want, but know the consequence of this belief. Know that the consequence of this belief is that racism is not a thing that causes poverty in the contemporary world. Rather, it is your lack of leadership that makes you impoverished. Now, you can believe that. That is a very conservative approach to what happens in the world. But if you look to the Moynihan Report as a basis, it is not a good basis. We Scholars agree. I disagree with the rest of people who review this saying that it's a misinterpretation. People are misinterpreting the Moynihan Report. I don't think it's a misinterpretation. I think there are conflicting ideas in the Moynihan Report. There are conflicting ideas about the role of government and what causes poverty. There are also conflicting ideas about how to address poverty. One thing is not conflicting is that it is sexist. <laughs> that is the one thing that is not conflicting. It actually rele relegates women to a sort of meaningless object. Now, there is some level of understanding here that if you are a woman who believe that you should rest in your femininity and be with a man who provide, and that's what the, the true sense of family is, then I think part of that should be you agree with the Moynihan Report that men should learn to lead and men should provide and protect. That is fine. That, that's actually fine. I, I think that's great. What I don't understand is men who oppose <laughs> Sorry, let me drink some coffee. Look, I'm saying I see why women would use the Moynihan Report <clears throat> as a weapon against men. I see why white people would use the Moynihan Report as a weapon against black men. I see why in a gender war, the Moynihan Report would be used against black men. What I don't understand is why black men would cite to the Moynihan report that infantilizes them. I don't understand that. I don't, it is saying that the failed leadership of black men in the black community has created the need for women to step up. In fact, uh, should I go? Let, let's go to a, a, a quote in in the report. I actually don't don't want to do this, but um, there is a story in here. I don't. I'm not going to read that. Where Moynihan is um, opining about how women. Um, he looks around in a government program, and there was all beautiful black women and no men. And he talks about how these women would go home to their men and ask, how are you, how was your day? How was your day, dear? Or what did you do, dear? And what he highlights in that moment is the asymmetry in power as it relates to black men and black women in the black family. The interesting thing about this is he is talking about black women, black men taking on the role of women in his mind, what women should be doing, and then black women taking on the role of black men being the provider and protector. Now, if you believe in traditional sort of patriarchy, right, and maybe post war liberalism. Um, puts this at the forefront of what should be done, right? When you look at this in this way, it is saying that Black men have failed. Like, there is no way around it. You can, you can say the government program involved caused this issue or helped to perpetuate it, but ultimately, the report is saying the government, the world, everyone need to help black men so that they could at least compete with black women. There is no way around, again, there is a ton of interpretation of the Moynihan Report. The issue with the interpretation of the Moynihan Report is not one around gender. 
and the role of women and men. That is not weird. Now, you can say there is a tone problem, right? There is a tone problem. Oh, Demis deserves more likes, you guys. Oh, yeah, you can like the... I'm such a horrible YouTuber person. Um, remember to like the like the video or the live stream. Cognitive dissonance to my man at the home. You can be upset about all the things that are happening. What you don't get to be upset about is that Black women take on the responsibility. The world, through the lens of the Moynihan Report, sees Black men as something to be infantilized and like maybe help in this way. Oh, there should be at least 700 likes. Now, let's get back to, to it. Again, we can disagree on politics and what the Moynihan Report is advocating. The fact that he become neoconservative to me implies that he was intentionally being vague about his policy prescription. One of the policy prescription, as I pointed out, is that black men should go into the military. Now, agree, disagree with it. However, <laughs> What that means is you going into the military or a program requesting more black men go into the military is not one that requires any real policy change. It does not require legislation to do that, right? As a part of the, the, the executive branch, the president would have the power to do that. So there is no, there is absolutely no movement required. The thing is, he was intentionally being vague. And we know he was intentionally being vague because we're still having the debate about what uh, Moynihan talked about, what he meant, all of that stuff. The one place where there is no disagreement is the feminist attack that this was sexist. That this was, that, that is the one place that, that no one disagrees with. Now, you may disagree that the sexism or the, let's not use sexism because that, that that implies that it's bad. Let's say patriarchy. The one disagreement about that he's advocating for patriarchy is that maybe you don't like patriarchy. But if you like it, you're fine. And if you believe men should lead and provide and protect, then you're also fine. That is the one place in this document when we're talking about the, the framework that is important and that does not actually at all changes and it conflicts with each other. So what does that mean? That means the report is fundamentally about the failure of us as men to lead. Now you can blame whatever you want to blame for that, but the purpose of this is to highlight that we have failed as men, black men, and that we needed to improve because it's causing a crisis. Our lack of education, lack of employment, and ultimately lack of leadership in the home and beyond are reasons why we have failed. Now, you can say, oh, but he pointed out that if the matriarchy and women are leading, but if women are leading, that means men are following. Sinji just pointed out that you are in the community still. So if you're in the community and women are leading, it meant you have failed in your leadership, or at least you are not leading, even if we don't want to say failure. So it is interesting to me that the conversation happening regarding the Moynihan report is one where any man, Black, any Black man, feels comfortable citing to something that treats us as infants, that one that, that that says we need to be trained to be masculine. Like the, the, the report is literally saying black men need to be treat, to, to be trained in masculinity. Or you have conceded. Yeah. Yeah, or you have conceded. Dream out loud became a member. Welcome, Dream Out Loud. Let me drink something. So one of the issues that the, the Moynihan report po ask, uh, points out that it wanted to solve is the idea is that full racial equality would be hindered 
by the crumbling or deteriorating structure of the African-American family. <clears throat> so equality is not possible. He believes, um, or at least it would be hindered because of the crumbling or the deteriorating um, structure of the African-American family. This structure, he says, is a tangle of pathology. Now, if you know me, you know I don't pathologize. Um, I don't have the degree to pathologize. I took two psychology courses in uni. Hey, sober bobo. Um, I took two, two, social, um, two psychology classes, so I can I can pathologize. I do have the DSM-5. But he says the tangle of pathology for um, is at the center of the issues in the Black family. That is juvenile delinquency, drug use, and poor educational achievement. All right, drug use, juvenile delinquency, and poor education. It's interesting, this is when I read this part of the report, the reason I'm not pulling up the report is because I don't wanna be going back and forth with the screen. And I also don't want it to seem like a lecture. So I'm literally just kind of going through it. I apologize if you guys wanted to see it. I don't, I don't know why, but <laughs> I do apologize. All right, the reason why I have the thumbnail as it is with future and with future, um, is that I think we are, if we accept any part of this to be true, right? Hopefully it is that uh, drug usage as a community has been detrimental and is not good. Hopefully we can agree on that. Juvenile delinquency is not good, right? Poor education is not good. When we combine all of that in a community, what we have is a community that is not doing well. Now, how you want to fix that, you can argue that there should be structural changes, but if our culture, right, if, <laughs> this is difficult. If our culture perpetuates these things as, something to achieve, right? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, if our culture perpetuates these things as good, right? Juvenile delinquency is good. Drug usage is good, right? And we, I believe that we have an anti-intellectual approach in the community to learning. I do believe this. I think we are anti-intellectuals. I do think that we disregard the importance of um, academics. And in fact, there is an overt push online right as we speak to tell women that their education does not matter, right? So there is, in fact, this anti-intellectual bend in the community. So if we have people promoting drug use, delinquency, <laughs> and poor education, if those are any kind of cornerstone of good moral character, then we would be failing and we will continue to fail. The Moynihan Report talk about poverty e feeding itself, right? Which also goes against the idea that poverty is a structural issue that need to be addressed. So on one hand, the, the report says that there are structural issues, but on the other, it's a cultural and moral issue. It's very conflicting. Please don't ever cite to the Moynihan Report as an authoritative, um, an authoritative source, authoritative source for attempting to do policy. I don't think it's intellectually honest to do so, um, but you can ignore me. <clears throat> so how do we combat racial inequality? You can think you need the state to have active involvement. That is one approach. The Moynihan, again, the Moynihan report gives both as if it is 
both, and it both are um, somehow not diametrically opposed, and he, it does so in ways that are conflicting. So it does not reconcile, reconcile um, these two things. Black black men in YouTube on YouTube said the Moynihan report is the. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't look. This is what one of the few times that I'm going to say this. I like when people say, "You, you know what? I was wrong. I'm changing my opinion." But for this, I would like if they just changed it. Like, you don't have to announce why you're changing your opinion on the Moynihan report. Just change it because it does make you look horrible. Like, it makes you look really, really bad to be citing something that essentially says you are not masculine and you don't know how to lead. Not my words. This is a Moynihan report. The whole point of bringing up that Black men should go to the military is that they want, the Moynihan report advocates for removing Black men from the community because they're becoming like women, essentially is what it says, and put them in the military where they can learn, quote unquote, masculinity and discipline. If you're citing the Moynihan report, that's what you should be citing. And I know no one wants to cite that. Absolutely no one should be. Look, I mean, if it's true, it's true. Right? Like, if you want to say, hey, this is true, but you don't cite this without literally pointing out that the report is looking at Black men as people who are in need of help because they cannot do it on their own and they fail to lead. That is what the report is doing. Like lit The only prescription, because Moynihan does not prescribe anything really, right? And this is why the Democrats and Republicans can use it and pretend like they, they both are saying what, what the report says and he doesn't mm -hmm. clarify. So it's fine. You can use it. That is fine. The only prescription made in this entire over 70 page document, right? The only prescription made is um, go to the military. That black men should go to the military. And the reason black men should go to the military is that they will learn how to be masculine and they will learn how to um, be disciplined. There were other things there, but the, like, it is an affront to your own perception of masculinity to cite to this. To use the, like, again, black women can and probably will use this if there is a if there's a rhetorical back and forth. I understand it, right? But and however, black men, we shouldn't use it. At least, like, I can use it because I don't care about like your masculinity, your performance of masculinity. I, I could, I, I could not care less about it. However, I would want to be able to provide and protect my family. So I'm no, I'm not. It is embarrassing to me also. So when we think about the effect of, um, and I was thinking about this as I was reading, the effect on family. On one hand, there's a the question of should the state intervene. On the other hand is, um, and, and Moynihan, so this is the, the sort of confusing element, right? On one hand, Moynihan is saying that the, the argument is that the state have to have an active role in preventing poverty. This is where we got the war on poverty. This is where the war on poverty came from and everyone agreed and blah, blah, blah. We saw how weird that is. But this idea that the government has to be actively involved, no prescription again, was undermined by this later notion, right? So national action was undermined because the report, the same report that essentially advocate for active involvement of government in fighting poverty, argued for full male employment with annual income, right? That's the kind of thing that I would assume would be here in there. Again, it wasn't. But it treats family as a pathology, um, not as an effect of economic inequality. 
but as the, the primary cause of in, the inability of African Americans to compete with other groups. So the same document that is saying government need to be involved and this is what we need to do. Well, they didn't say what we need to do, but that the government needs to be involved then treats the family as um, pathology and, and that not as an effect of economic inequality, but as sort of the, the primary cause of the inability. So African-Americans cannot compete with other groups because their family structure is bad and it's a moral, ethical, sort of religious issue outside the scope of the government. That cannot be true, it can, like generally, but it, it cannot be true when the document is also talking about active involvement by the government. So it is this very weird push and pull that happens because Moynihan did not want to tie himself, in my opinion, to a political party. He wanted the flexibility to run and go for senator in whichever party that he did. He ultimately won and was a senator. But it is interesting to me that we are relying on a, a framework that is not at least at all concrete. The only thing it's concrete on, the only concrete thing in the, in my opinion, in the Moynihan report is the issue regarding gender and the fact that Moynihan believed that women should be at home and be at home and not have to work and do anything, which is fine. Love that. I <laughs> Look, if the manosphere agreed with that, I would be in the manosphere. I, if they were advocating that women should not have to work, not that your education and your job doesn't matter, but that you don't have to work and that the, the median income wasn't between 70, 400, 400, absolutely not. The median income wasn't between 45, 43 to $45,000. And I would be, I would advocate for it too. I think that would be a great advocacy stance. But you don't, you don't make that money and then advocate that um, the government isn't in, like like you just don't. They, there is too much inconsistency. Why am I doing this? Well, not this, but why am I pretending like um, I look to these group of people for academic rigor? Because I absolutely don't. So if. The family structure was the, the source of the inequality in the community. And the family structure is a cause of poverty rather than a result of poverty. That excludes government intervention. Poverty, Moynihan argues, is self-fulfilling. Um, it feeds on itself. I actually want to find this portion because I've been going through it really, really quick and I have not been um, showing you guys what I'm talking about, but um, I want to show this part. <clears throat> it said, third, it is necessary to acknowledge the view held by a number of responsible person that this problem may in fact be out of our, out of control, sorry, not our, but out of control. This is a view with which we emphatically and totally disagree, but the view must be acknowledged. The persistent rise in Negro educational achievement is probably the main trend that builds <laughs> this thesis. On the other hand, our study has produced some clear indications that the situation may indeed have begun to feed on itself. I don't know how you contradict yourself in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least in the same paragraph. It's not the same sentence. There's a couple periods there. I don't know. But when you say it feeds on itself, you have created the picture that literally, wait, let me, <laughs> so agreement onion potato chips took my man out of the home. <laughs> I hate to have. Um, black men need to create, I hate this. So in the same breath that we are talking about what creates 
the po poverty and the single parent household, there is this kind of unwillingness to admit either. There, there, there is an unwillingness to, uh, to fully and emphatically observe and accept either, which is interesting. So the question, and actually I should probably open the panel. I'm almost done. I've been through the almost the entire um, thing. There's a part that I wanted to read, but I won't because I do want to open the panel. The ambiguity again, I believe stems from an opportunistic politician in Moynihan. That is my opinion. Probably won't change. Not likely to convince me otherwise, but that's my opinion. The question I have, and when we get on, where's my pen? When we get on, I'm going to try to figure that out from you guys' perspective, is corporate capitalism is what we have, right? Is this a white, I'm sorry, a white sort of middle class framework that ignores other kinds of family? Know that when we have the discussion, and if I don't remember, you guys can re remember to bring it up because I don't know why I have so many notes that I ignore. If you believe that, that this is archaic, this is talking about the white middle class family structure and it is irrelevant, please consider that in a society structured to benefit that two-parent household with uh, a child, right, um, in the suburbs, have that vision out there. If you believe that there is an opposing view on how we can do child rearing and the impact of family structure, you are going to be competing with a ton of research know that. I won't be pushing hard, but but please know that. Um, Black men on YouTube said the report confirms that welfare took them out of the... <laughs> Actually, I've seen this. I have seen... Let me drop the link. I'm going to even try it. <laughs> Black men on YouTube said the report confirms that welfare took them out of the home, when really the report says Black men black men's walking, walk out of cause black women to have to be on welfare. Yeah. The thing is, even if we accept that welfare took them out of the home, then you could not compete with welfare. And if, if <laughs> I really don't want to finish that sentence. <laughs> I don't want to finish that sentence. I, I do not want <laughs> The report doesn't say welfare took black men out of the home. In fact, the report says that black men were leaving the home and women had to turn to um, welfare for help. The, re the, re the report says black women were out educating black men and also that black women um, were out competing black men in terms of economic resource. What is issue, what is that issue is when it comes to qualifications for job, like Moynihan was arguing that men should be, should replace women in certain work. The problem here is about qualification. <laughs> you can't just replace a woman with a man unless the man is qualified, right? Like, and, <laughs> I just, I, I can't, I, I can. Again, I do actually also want to consider when we think about family instability, is that a symptom of poverty or is that a cause of poverty, right? Um, and then the white family structure. I actually do want us to talk about that when we start. Um, so MLK liked the approach in the Moynihan report. I don't know why. Um, because there is no approach. <laughs> there is no approach in the Moynihan Report. So I'm not sure what MLK was agreeing with. Um, initially, as I said, the Black Power Party, um, the Black Power Movement, the Black Power Group hated the report, and they talk about African-American should be able to define for themselves what it is 
it, that that is in the African American community, who African Americans are. Now, black feminists critique the black power movement by saying, well, you might disagree because it's a white man who said it, but you essentially espouse similar idea. Now, again, they agreed, except they did not want to serve in, in the military. Take that how you want. Um, but the question about white middle class is one that we have to ask, and we hopefully will answer at some point regarding um, regarding what we expect from men and what the expectation is of women. And whether or not you agree with Moynihan does kind of inform me as the political beliefs, right? But not only that, most, I shouldn't say this, but I will go out on a limb and say most Black women would not disagree with the fact that they would like men to be able to provide. I don't think women are competing with men because they want to take care of men and provide for men and have the roles reversed, quote unquote reversed. Maybe there are feminists that would like that. To bat what's that vegan lady's name? Do not put do not put those avocados in my chat. <laughs> what's her name? The vegan lady who retired her husband. Let me not go there. Anyway, I don't think as a general matter, we, even if women are arguing for independence and economic independence, I'm not sure that women are saying, I want to compete with men so I can take care of men. I, 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 I don't think that's what is happening. So, yeah, I'm not putting her name on here. I shouldn't have asked the chat, but I'm not putting her name on here. Um, look, I... <laughs> <laughs> Let me step back two seconds. This is not a critique of her. I don't give relationship advice. You guys can structure your relationship how you want. If you want to provide, if you want to retire for a van, please feel free to do it. That is not my place. I have no authority over in that. So <laughs> she can do whatever. Retire, retire who you want. I, I, I don't care. <laughs> Yes, deflecting is deflecting. Doesn't negate the reality that there's systemic discrimination, withholding of equ equity and resources vital to pro progress, which didn't create itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's part of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be as a fear as I can in reading this report. But when you read it, it's like, I don't know who would read this. Sorry. I don't know which black man would read this and then use it ever to justify anything unless you are accepting the, the, the position that the research puts you in, which is one that is, that is requiring a paternalistic approach of every institution um, to help you be able to even compete with women. Like, yeah, like I, I, I don't know. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm saying you should. I think you should. You should do whatever you want. If how you, if how you keep your relationship stable is, <laughs> let me stop because I can't give advice. Hmm. The problem is, and by the way, the the it took black men out of the home is not did not come out of nowhere. It came out of, again, the conservatives taking charge of the Moynihan Report and in the Reagan era and making that the state like thing, government involvement in people's life is disruptive. We do not need government to be involved in people's life, right? Well, they don't say that about the corporations, but that's neither here nor there. Um, we are going to step back and you should pull yourself up by the bootstraps, right? You can believe this, just know that it's a logical extreme of what you believe. So if you attack the welfare state, which is what this report was used to do, I don't mind. Like, I, I literally don't care about your political belief. 
in fact, bring your political belief here. Just know that you don't also then get to blame racism for anything, um, or at least things relating to economic power. Like you don't. Um, I, where is it? I'm gonna put the link in the chat because I do think that covers most of it. Um, also, this is the part, your view leads to uh, benign neglect, right? Your, if your view is that wealthier took black men out of the home, this is what your ultimate view is. Um, uh, let's try to pull this up. Again, written by Moynihan. So he was just all over the place. <laughs> uh, why, why is this not? There you go. Can you guys read that? <clears throat> the time may have come when the issue of race could benefit from a period of benign neglect. The subject has been too much talked about. The forum has been too much taken over to hysterics, paranoids, and bootlers. On all sides, we may need a period in which Negro progress continues and racial rhetoric fades. So this is saying we, <clears throat> we should leave the issue of race. We should stop talking about race. We should stop talking about all of it altogether because the Negro community will be able to raise itself and bring itself out. Um, <laughs> um, and so it, it's interesting because if you, if you believe in the sort of conservative approach, which is that wealthier took you out of the home, it's not accurate because the, the conservatives don't even believe that. Anyone who read the report knew that there was sort of abandonment happening way before um, the, the quote-unquote wealthier state. The argument is that because of this, then that, it's condition precedent, right? It, it happened in really as a result of men leaving the home in the quote-unquote um, the, these kinds of divorces that I don't want to say again. Hey, Marcus. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, yeah, I can hear you. What so, are you? So, sorry, I just wanted more uh, from a historical perspective, um, the idea of the government, uh, basically government action is not totally, it's not from out of the blue. Uh, for example, during... Uh, world, basically the 1950s economic and like the nuclear family idea that was created, basically where everyone's harking back to, for example, like after World War II with the GI Bill. So of course with World War II, uh, the men being bond, women were told to like work and they, uh, in the factories and everything, when the men came back, they were literally not allowed to still work. And so if the government if they hadn't stepped in. And then you have all these men with like no place to work. So it was artificially created these places for the men to work. And then all the finances like with the GI bill to basically create that. So basically my point is if the government hadn't stepped up and like women weren't forced to stop working and, or if the government started providing help to care for children, cause that was neglected while women were working during World War II, what would have happened to, you know, uh, general American families? So it's not, so the I, so this idea of like this nuclear family, it's created and support, and it was created and supported by government action. Does this make sense? No, yeah. Well, let me see if I, I understand. Because true, World War II meant men kind of left to go fight wars, right? women were left alone to sort of raise children. There needed to be some other help for these women. And the explosion of the quote unquote welfare state started. And that cannot then be used as saying, oh, well, these women got this thing. And so now we are going to say, this is the reason for um, men being kicked out of the home. Because the impetus is not the government wanted to disrupt the black family. It was 
women needed help when men were away fighting wars. And also, well, there's also another part of it uh, where the women- Was that correct or no? Um, there was a missing part of it where women were actually had to fill in work in the industries to support the war effort. So they yeah. were working and making good money. And so I'm saying if uh, coming back where they weren't forced out of those positions and the men were who were coming back were basically left to languish and there was no GI Bill, no push to get them into positions, what would hap what, what would have happened to the 1950s? I you know, ideal, you know, family where the man is the main, like I'm saying all of that was artificial. Yeah, yeah no, so, no, yeah, it, 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 yeah. I mean, I would so, agree. I mean, but the, in the broader context of white America, it's also true, but in the narrow context of black America, the men, the, the men never, I, I, no, I know what you're saying. So basically um, my point is, if you want that broad cultural change, you you would have to have like major outside forces. Cause like if like you're comparing, you know, black family to white families, I'm saying even that idea of that we have of white families is not natural. It was created. So definitely in the subculture with less resources, there would have to be an outside force. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good one. Kadisha. Kad oh, hey. Oh, it's Kadesh. Kadesh. <laughs> okay. How are you? First time here. here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to put my little two cents in this conversation. Um, you know, the whole Moynihan report. I, um, I feel like um, the Moynihan report, like it just um, concluded what was going to happen at the first time. But like, I heard about the government and I just want to say that, you know, while the government, you know, people have stuff in this and that, without the government, black women uh, would be struggling in the streets and wouldn't do, you know, much because the fathers were leaving, not because of like wars, that can also play a factor, but also because of, you know, they just didn't want to be fathers. <laughs> so can I, can I say that? <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I mean, not. I mean, not only that. It's like if if the welfare took you out of the home, you didn't own the home. Let's continue. Exactly, and it's like I remember. Um, I have a boyfriend, <laughs> but I remember he's like, "No way will I ever be kicked out my home, and I can't be there for my family." Like, it, like there are some people who will literally go to the end of the earth to fight for their home or their family. So like, th there's like excuses. I don't really think like the wealthy can do much power. It's like how you re like react to it and yeah. how you let them get yeah. into that. But yeah, I just want to say that. <laughs> I'm going to let others. First... Yeah, I'll, I'll add someone. Thank you. This was your first time. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Um. I think UG is next. Hey, Sonny. You're muted. Hello. You're muted. Okay. Can you, hear me, can you hear me now? You're muted. Oh, you have to turn me off in the background. Uh, Rose. Hi, famous. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for taking the time to break some of this down because I see, I like, hear this elusive report referred to a lot. Um, but from what it sounds like, and from I, I, I'm sure I could be wrong, so people are welcome to correct me if they're more historians. But it what World War, the World War is happening. I believe that there are so many conspiracies out there that say that it was intentional. The industrialization of the of the, the the workforce got rid of the need for manpower. So only those who were really who are really savvy at business were able to adapt to the model of of uh, consumerist capitalism that was 
imposed on many communities, especially with the communities of color where the nuclear family is something that is inherent to us. So if you're not able to take your skills and adapt them to more softer skills and use them in a certain environment, then that is already a strike against you. If you're already educationally not qualified for many of those positions, that's another strike against you. If you already have a cultural trend of abdicating your parental responsibilities, that's another strike against you. So it's like, there's always gonna be propaganda spinning, but as I said in the chat, you know, a broke clock is right twice a day. So you, they can't say, oh, well, you know, well, it, it's, it's, it's this group's fault, it's this group's fault, when you're, a, if you know that government has never been something, that the, the foundation of this country have never been one that is uh, favorable to, uh, to us, why would you expect them to help us? Why do you think that them giving us any kind of welfare is actually helping? We struggle still when we when we receive any form of public assistance. So it's not like, oh, women are sitting here like, oh, well, I'll gladly go on welfare. Who wants to have just enough when it would be wonderful if the both of us could be at home and you're paid enough so that I can maintain the home and then you can go out and earn the money? I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> that's the logical conclusion of the argument, right? If welfare yes. didn't like, take you out of the home, then you could not provide. Right. Like, you, I don't, no, no, I, maybe there are, but no, no woman is going to say, I'm going to dump this man providing for me more than what welfare is providing to get welfare, unless they're like, you know what, I want peace of mind. Exactly. See, and that's it right there. If your influence in the home is negative, of course, I'm going to go to the nanny state and go and get help so you can get out. I don't need you here trying to beat my back in when I'm trying to hold down the home and you're yeah. off doing whatever. I will, yeah. And that's where they throw it back in our face. But it's a true statement. I, I can do bad by myself. If you're not going to be a good influence in the home, leave. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, Vibe. Welcome. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, black men literally walk out on their families largely to chase the generosity, then spent the last 60 plus years and counting blaming welfare and black women. It's sad, it's a, it's sad of you, it's sad when you realize and think about when you realize when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, the way the conversations happen online is very strange to me because it's like, how would you sit there and accept? Oh, the timing of the report also coincided historically with the rise in the acceptance of divorce across the board. After Vietnam and during the 80s, economic downturn, many men couldn't provide. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they could, that, that's the point. So this idea that like we are like there was just mass movement of women just kicking men out of the home. First, if they were kicking men out of the home, then... You didn't own these homes, but that's neither here nor there. You just accept that we could not provide, which is fine. It's not fine at all. But maybe the economy and we couldn't provide. Now pick ourselves up and go. Like there's don't don't blame, don't sit there and blame everything else besides the fact that you couldn't provide. All right. <clears throat> As Amara SKJ. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing well. As soon as oh. I saw you, I remember something that I needed to do. But that, let's, uh, I'm gonna it's okay. That. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but um, I wanted to touch on the girl's point who came up first, pretty much saying that the men came back from war. And because women were already working, that um, you know men just couldn't really catch up. And I would say in that in that scenario it would still be the man's role to kind of create some type of structure where he can like fit himself back into the system, you know? So that way, you know, there's a, a good flow that would still be the man's job. And that's still what they're trying to say about black men, not having masculine, um, you know, tendencies. I mean, the, <laughs> who cites a report that says you need to go to the military because you need to learn how to be a man or you need to learn masculinity and discipline. Who, do, who does that? I wouldn't even do that. And I don't care about a masculinity. Like I, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to me. SKJ. Hi, Demons. Um, hey, how are I you? Definitely, yeah, good, how are you? 
Um, I definitely agree with, um, you made a brief point earlier where it seems like a lot of these men, uh, they, they verbalize their issue with feminism and how feminism does not benefit them and how it is destructive to the society, to the black society. And it's like, well, it's, it, it seems like by the way you guys interpret this report that feminism would actually do you guys really, really well. Let women take up some of the role because it seemed like y'all don't want to take it. Is it me? Like, it seems like I'm misinterpreting because like you just said with this report, a lot of the conclusions um, pretty much allude to the the lower setting of what black men are and it is inherently a racist report. So it's very interesting to me that the minister and that one gentleman that I'm not going to mention, this was like his Bible. And it's like, have you read this? Has anyone who you followed read this? And have you realized that if this feminism that you keep um, complaining about, if it was uh, continue to be a real thing for a lot of women, that your life would be easier and you would have less to complain yeah. about? I mean, to complain about that, I think, who wrote this? Someone just talked about Goldman Sachs. <laughs> you should be asking anyone for money and resources. Like, if you actually believe this, you shouldn't be asking for anything. <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> I'm not, there was, <laughs> Sin was live, and I can't do this, because this is funny. There was this talk about, like, you couldn't get um, the money from these men, so you tricked them into giving you money with the PPP loan. <laughs> I right. wish y'all would put this amount of effort into actually getting money. I really wish y'all would. <laughs> I really, I really wish y'all would. I, I do. I do. Right. That, that was, uh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, go ahead. Uh, who is this? Uh, Sunny side, 1984. Okay. Am I working now? Okay. Uh, I actually wanted to talk about my aspect on the Moynihan report in general. Um, I think he put it together very strategically because um, he left the door open to pick a side. Like you said, Democrats can use it, Republican use it, conservatives, liberals, whatever. He left it open to, to pick a side because he had, he had good talking points, Well, but he also didn't connect them together. He left them separate, on, I think, on purpose, like you say, he did it on purpose to pick a side. Whoever's winning at the time, uh, you know, the election or whatever they're doing, he could pick a side because racial, obviously there's racial issues. Clearly there are. And there's clearly a, a lack of masculine household, men running households. That's true. He didn't actually go into detail to connect the two to find out, you know, and there's different factors. You know, you have a cold, your symptoms are, you know, shit sn uh, sniffles, you know, runny nose, and then that opens you up to other viruses that cause more symptoms. He didn't connect everything together to find out what, he didn't want to, he didn't care about the core oh, issue. No, no, he didn't even go into this community. He just stole but, other people's research. But, yeah, but <laughs> allegedly, also, allegedly. But he also left out, you know, he didn't actually connect white folks either. I mean, it, it, honestly, I mean, even, okay, let's say the government really was trying to help black men by giving them different jobs, blah, blah, blah. Well, there's white folks out there independently, you know, doing things too outside the government rules. So he did, he didn't explain anything at all. All you do is talk and make, say true statements without giving any type of death behind it. And we just make our own, like right, you said right now, we're, we're debating about it. He left it for us to fill in. He could, so we could, anybody could walk in on it and use that, use that report, report as a talking point. Yeah. The man and household thing is not a talking point at all. You, you have to be retarded. They actually think that's a real thing, but there are actually legitimate different views you guys take from that, that actually was said that can be determined differently. Man and household is not one of them. But I think it, I think it wasn't contradictory. It was very strategic, I think. But yeah, I think. Well, I mean, he was politically sort of on the so in the middle, right? Yeah. So he wouldn't have tied himself to a political ideology. Strategic. And we saw the transition into like the neoconservative for the for the Reagan administration and him becoming a senator. Like he knew exactly what it is that he was doing. Cami, um, welcome. Actually, since you just put up something that I need to like put out there, <clears throat> where are all the black men who said welfare took them out of the home? They're at the home. They got the internet. They're at the home. <laughs> They're in their mom's house. <laughs> yeah, I'm Still, not <laughs> 36 <laughs> years old. <laughs> if you're here, I'm not going to beg anyone to come on, but if you're here wanting to defend, um, please, please feel free to come defend. Hmm. Thank you all. I'm going to add some more people to the stream. Um, well, they got to go to McDonald's, get McDonald's Wi-Fi because they're out the home. So wait till you get to McDonald's. How far, how how long this you got to get to, you know, Burger King and Starbucks Wi-Fi so you can call in real quick. 
<laughs> We're not doing this. Y'all are dead. I, don't the Metro got Wi-Fi now? They might be able to get it on the bus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. No, no, no. <laughs> Only Alyssa. Hi, CMS. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, Good to be on the show again. I just want to add something. Um, This is very low tier, bottom shelf. But it does play a part in uh, the Monaghan Report. Put this aside for a minute. I, a couple of years ago, I got into a debate with a Manosphere-like person. And they were calling with the Monaghan, Monaghan Report said this, said that. And they were going back and forth. And some of the things that this person was saying, it reminded me of a movie called Claudine back from the 70s. And it was James Earl Jones, and I'm sure some of the people in the chat are familiar with this, James Earl Jones and Diane Carroll. She was a mother, I think a single mom, I think like five, six children. She was on welfare and she met James Earl Jones and they decided, to, they, they got into a relationship and um, he got caught, you know, spending time in her home by her social worker. And some of the things that a lot of these Manosphere people, they're spewing rhetoric from Claudine when they say that welfare took them out of the home. And they're claiming that it comes from the Monaghan Report, but it doesn't. They're spewing rhetoric from Claudine. And I had to tell them, go back and watch the movie again, because I'd seen it many, many times. Go ahead and watch the movie again. That's not what the movie, they did not kick him out of the home. What they told him when they went into the welfare office, that none of the children were his, that they could get married. He could live in the home. They would cut her off welfare and she would continue to see, receive child, you know, um, social, um, so, you know, social support for the children, but he could very well live there. Uh, uh, this debate went on for days until some of them took the time and they were like, you were right. And I'm like, so why are you bringing up the one hand report when you're talking about Claudine and that's not even what happened in Claudine. I'm serious. I'm telling you, that's what a lot of these men are when they're saying the Monaghan report, they're talking and they're pulling bits and pieces from a 1970s movie Claudine, and they're not even getting that right. So the it, I know for a fact any most of these people who cited the Moynihan report didn't read it. Nope. Because if you did, you wouldn't have cited it. That's just that. There you um, go. Not if you think you're an alpha. Not if if you think the things that people espouse about themselves online, you would not be. You would not be citing this. However, if you randomly opened the document and went to the section on black women taking care of their daughter and pushing their daughter to school and ignoring their sons, um, you would actually believe that, except out of context, you, would rec you wouldn't recognize that that is sort of a foreshadowing that never actually came to pass. Exactly. So exactly. I don't think these people read I don't think like it's very like you don't have to read it, but at least just go to each section, figure out the conclusion in each section, and then make an, a, a judgment. But, there. but see, famous, they don't have that structure. No, they're they're saying the Mon. A lot of them are saying the Monaghan report, but they are referencing a nineteen early nineteen seventies movie, Claudine. Yeah. Uh, how James Earl Jones was put out the house, which he never was, but that's what they are. That's what that's what they're regurgitating, and they I got mean, it all never, mixed up and all fumbled up. I've never watched Claudine, but I can believe that because I remember Julius um, talking about how um, using the movie what Scandal, the TV show Scandal, Scandal. to explain. The <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not what even going to do it. That's not what they're doing. I, I sat there and I was like, I cannot believe you just cited to a fictional movie character um, where actually the woman sleeping with the president could have actually taken the president if she wants. That that was a great line. If you haven't seen it, you should. But where did you go? Out, where did they go after they kicked? They were kicked out. <laughs> Group home. <laughs> 
They went to another woman's home and laid up and said <laughs> more uh, kids that they couldn't provide for. That's where they went. So and then just, they left again after that. So I just wanted to <laughs> add that to ha give a little perspective because I've, I've gotten into this with quite a few uh, men. And then when I hear what they're saying, I'm like, oh, my goodness. They're talking about Claudine. They're not talking. They're mimicking Claudine, something they heard somewhere. And they're calling yeah. it the Monaghan Report. It, I mean, it is so bottom shelf, so so low tier that it, it, it this is what it is. I'm telling you, you're putting too much intellectual, in, you know, into this. When it should not be. That is what I mean, they're quoting. I actually might agree with you a little bit. I feel <laughs> like I've been expending too much in sort of intellectual rigor and academic care because I don't actually think these people read any of it. So, like, in my mind, what this live would look like, right, would be I started to talk and there would be men who came on and say, actually, the reason why I said it was because if you look in this section, and contextualize it in this way, this would be the outcome. My opinion is predicated on this, this, and this. That's never gonna happen. Never, <laughs> Not gonna never, happen. never. I must, I'm gonna step down, uh, Themis. I just wanted to come and add that at this I had a know, question. platform. Go ahead. I had a question. On Claudine, do they mention the Moynihan report? No, they just talk about she was on welfare and they were going to get, they were thinking about getting married. She had all of these children and they was telling him, you can marry her. We will drop her off of welfare. The children will continue to get support, but you have to support yourself and her. And he didn't even want to do that. So mm -hmm. I wonder how they, I wonder how they learned to connect the two, the Moynihan, the Moynihan report to Claudine. Because I've seen the, the clip that you're talking about. It always uh -huh. circulates the internet, but, maybe like every five years. Yeah. The you know? connection is a political discourse, I think, that people don't understand. The Reagan era conservative used the Moynihan report to talk about how government involvement in family breaks down family. This was an argument for government to not help families at all. No kind of social security net at all. Just none. And I think trickle-down economics and all of that. Yeah. But I people who fight I this are also the people who say racism is a fundamental problem in the United States and the reason they can't get jobs is because of racism or whatever. But the ideas out of Reagan, the Reagan era conservative is literally diametrically opposed to the idea that racism is a fundamental problem in America. So if you're going to accept that, that, if you're going to do the shorthand where you say wealthier took black men out of their home, I don't think you fully understand what that means. Even if true, that is infantilizing black men. It is saying that you don't have the capacity to compete with the measly amount of resource given to a woman through the government using uh, welfare. Like, I, I, I don't understand the mindset. The Moynihan Report put out in 1964, most black men, black men I hear pull like 65, pull on like it pull like it, a Bible weren't born yet. <laughs> Black men, could you be kicked out before your birth? Some of your fathers weren't born yet. You chose to leave. Yeah, I mean, let, let me find this comment. Thank you, confidence with love. I'm excited for the debate on Friday. King Julius strikes again, fool's go. <laughs> Period, uh, all right. Too lovely, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, I think you're actually giving too much credit because I don't think it's politics and you know misleading of politics that got a lot of black men out here, black men out here saying these things. I think they're kind of dumb and they don't research. They don't under they read comprehension. Yes, a lot of them don't get context clues. I think they're kind of just dumb and you're into. I think you're giving too much credit intellectually, and they're not. They're, they're not there. They're not. They're not there. You're thinking and reading and research and understanding, and they're following. Most black most people in general are followers. They're repeating and regurgitating somebody else's talking points. They don't understand what they mean. You ask them a question that somebody hasn't answered. They got to drop off the line, pretend they have audio problems because they, they can't answer it. They, they can't answer it. They're followers and they're dumb. So, yeah, wait, they're, wait. 
You took too order much of, Order of operation for a BM, black man. Siding, one. Saw a cousin do it, too. A fictional... <laughs> Marcus, go in the corner. You are on timeout. You are on timeout. Absolutely not. Um, thank you, <laughs> sir. All right, let's go to Blue Man. Go ahead. I'm assuming you're here. I don't know. I, this is your first time, right? Um, yeah, it is my first time. And I actually am a subscriber to your channel, actually, if you didn't know that. I did not um, know that. Yeah, okay. I am. Now, here's like one thing. That, uh, there's just this one point that I wanted to bring up, and it's something that I don't understand why a lot of black men say this. Um, first things first, when it comes to the entire welfare state back in the 1960s, the man out of the house clause was actually something that was abolished in 1968, just so you know that, right? Yeah, no, since when G did, um, it was abolished. It was abolished. It was abolished back in 1968. Just so you know that. And then, yeah. and secondly, um, I wish I was able to provide the link for you guys for you all to see. This was actually a link of some time I think with black women back in the 1960s discussing why they actually had to use welfare in the first place. Even though around that time period where black male employment was actually going up among young black males they weren't making enough money to take care of their families. That's why, and you actually see these women actually talking about it. So of course they had to use welfare at that time to provide for their families. So I don't yeah. understand why a lot of black men are using this as, you know what, they intentionally kick their black men out of the house to use welfare. It's like this, they're, they're really establishing like these white supremacist talking points. And it's like really destructive, like, I don't understand why they do it. I don't understand because they're not thinking logically. If black women are doing this action, they have to ask, why are they doing this in the first place? Why, yeah. why would they deliberately break up their families when their husbands are making enough money to take care of them? Who does that? Yeah. No one. And that's the point. That is literally the point. Even to accept that you didn't leave, no one walked out, welfare did in fact take you out of the home. The only possible way is that you weren't a good husband. Like, like, like you were, and by good, I mean you weren't taking care of this person financially and emotionally and physically or whatever it is. You, the only way you would get kicked out of the home by welfare is if you could not compete with it. Like, I even to accept that you were removed from the house because of welfare, which is not true, it would be a you problem in terms of your ability to compete. That is it. Um, my husband is a historian, philosopher, and in public policy. I wish he was home so he could come up and speak on it. Um, I wonder what side of the... Um, the equation your husband would be on. I'm actually curious. Um, too lovely, go ahead. Thank you for letting me talk. Um, I actually just wanted to get some clarification on something you said, but I had one thing that I wanted to talk about and it's with the growing disparity. I know that between the black household and the white household, I understand the idea and the argument that we have systematic issues that are keeping us from thriving economically. But my issue is that I would say in this day and age, we have less systematic oppression than we had right after um, the civil rights, right? But we're yep. in a much worse position than we ever were historically. So that's a problem that I'm having. The gap has oh. grown like, okay. All right, I, I'm gonna let that slide because I actually have um, a paper that I'm writing regarding the, I would say as a community, I kind of agree, but if we split it in terms of gender, I think black women obviously are doing better than they were. Um, I in terms, yeah, and so, I mean, there is an issue about children and taking care of children and having to dump your economic resources. Yeah. Not dump your resources into yeah. children. You know me, drop them children off. <laughs> drop them kids off. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let that go. Um, Cynthia said, uh, King versus Smith. Now, I read this case, like, 
a while ago. Um, this was when the court held that, uh, like, substitute father regu uh, the, the right substitute uh, father regulation, um, which denied the federal government aids to family with dependent children payments um, to children who has a cohabiting parent, a person cohabiting with them, uh, male, um, in outside in or outside her home with any single or like married bodied men, marriage able men, um, able-bodied men, let's say that, was invalid because it conflicted with the uh, AFDC, AF, AFDC um, which is the aid to family with dependent children. Yeah. Now, I read this case a while ago, but yeah, it, it this is what would have struck it. This is what struck it down. Um, it is con it's not constitutional. And yeah, this happened in 19, late 1960s, 1968. I am not looking up because I'm like, oh, I remember all of this. In preparing for this live stream, I did go back to a ton of notes. Um, and so that's how I know. It's not like I didn't remember this just like randomly. Um, in looking through my notes on the cases, that's where I found it. So yeah. Um, why would yep. we put them out of out the home for a wealthy only to go to the Supreme Court to get them back in the no if I like women challenge the rule because they want them I'm I'm tired of these people. I I I am exhausted. Well yeah because you're not educated in that and I don't understand no it's just a really dumb talking point. And if you notice like even a lot of black male conservatives use this talking point as well like uh Thomas so well no and, right so, and the so thing Thomas is so, that I understand why conservatives use it. I get why conservative use it. If you want to accept conservative ideology, please use it because you then get to say that racism doesn't exist, that this was the system is bad and you should pull yourself up by the bootstrap. You can take that approach, but you have to also accept that the reason you were pushed out of the home, which you weren't, um, was because you failed to lead. Thomas Sowell will tell you about degeneracy in the Black community. Candace Owens, who is some kind of mentee of his, will tell you about the degeneracy, and they will point to the community as the fault. Now, I don't have a problem with this. I have a problem with re different kind of rhetoric. I don't have a problem with this ideology. If you are just logically consistent, be logically consistent, it would blame you for your inability to perform. If you want to do that, do that. Like, I, I don't mind. I actually would rather you come out and be like, yeah, well, they, those men suck and they couldn't do that. So I don't believe that the, the government should help. You guys need to pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Just say that. Don't, don't yeah. say it and then you cannot say it. And then, like, welfare took you out of, the ho us out of the home. And then say something like, oh, systemic racism is why we can't. No, you you don't get to play. but You don't have your cake and eat it, too. That's the phrase. And, right? on and honestly, there is one point that I wanted to make. Um, I do agree with you when it comes to, like, gender and, like, how the Black community is doing today. I do feel that Black women are doing a lot better today than back then. I yeah. do think Black women have made tremendous strides especially being black and plus female or mm -hmm. plus being a woman. So, I mean, I don't know if I can necessarily agree with the fact that, you know, black people are doing much worse now. No, I think black people are doing a lot better now because there's a lot more, a lot more black millionaires. There's a lot more black wealth. A I black mean, women especially. I think and black so, women. the reason why I allowed it was because at the same time that the upper class is increasing in terms of wealth and access and resource, the lower class is just decreasing. So if we are to apply like the Gini coefficient, which we wouldn't, um, to specifically black people where we are comparing the wealthiest against the poorest, mm -hmm. it is bad because the drastic, the, the drastic difference is bad. Like for me, I think in that disparity is where I can accept that we are doing worse today than we were 
before, even if the people at the top are doing better than the people at That's the bottom. Fair. The people at the bottom are doing too poorly for me to accept that we're doing if better you want, now. If you want to take inflation into consideration. Um, but also, the, those numbers are adjusted or you can find them adjusted for, for inflation. inflation. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I just kind of ignore, unless we're talking about like inflation at, at 8%, then I don't generally bring in the inflation because I, uh, if I'm looking at a research, it already it would already factor for inflation. Yeah, so just I don't know why I would be inflation. looking at it. But like that's not yeah. incredible economic research. And I me. agree. I mean, I agree that Black women are doing a lot better. But what I'm saying is, as a whole, so the argument that was made earlier is just that poverty is the reason for the condition of the black community and i'm just positing that it could be two things at once so yes we it's like it's not a chicken and a hen we didn't just become impoverished and so now the black community and the the household is broken apart and so that's what keeps happening because of systematic oppression i believe it's it's both things that are helping to keep the situation as it is or perpetuating the same situation mm. one we yes we came out of slavery we weren't impoverished all those things are true and yes money has a compounding nature where it grows over time so that may be a factor but when you look at the gap that is where i'm having an issue because if the finances have a compounding nature then it should not the gap shouldn't be growing at the rate that it is and not only that the fact, I'm sorry, not only that, the fact that a lot of oppressive policies are being lifted, that would mean the gap should be closing. And, and that would mean that the culture should be repealing itself, but it's actually getting worse. And so that's my only problem, not to put the onus on Black women, but specifically on the end of Black men. Wait, let me just repeat this part. <clears throat> okay. On the other hand, our study has produced some clear indications that the situation may indeed have begun to feed on itself. The situation, yeah. again, is poverty um, right. and the structure of the family. So the part of the issue, and not me citing to this, but part <laughs> of the issue here um, outlined is we are reproducing poverty. That's, right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's it's um, becoming not just a, a systemic problem, it's becoming a cultural issue where we our behaviors, mindset and around finances and education yep. Yep. is starting to perpetuate our position. And not only that, there's a mindset that okay, well, this isn't the system that we're in. We were slaves. And so that's the end of it, where there, if, if, if we're going to blame uh, systematic oppression and slavery, can we continue to be in the mindset where we blame these things and is it ever going to change? So that's, that is my issue. I think we've beaten it down at this point, talking about the way we got into the position and what i want to know is how we're going to get out of this position that we are now in oh, or if we can yeah, ever yeah, get yeah. out yes. go ahead amara sorry um i feel like with what she was saying it's like it's that or will we ever be able to get out like sometimes when i like do my deep dives on my thoughts it's like we get to a certain point in this conversation where it's like are are we even capable of climbing out of this hole that we are in as black people, you know, because I'm looking at our men and I see how the government uses, um, uses its, tries to use its tools to kind of create some type of structure within our community and how it doesn't work and how it's always kind of like a, that de degenerate mentality, you know, that you see all the time. And I'm just like, is it possible? Is there any way we can change? And I was just saying, wait, wait, before you continue, this is, I think, one of the biggest discrepancies between myself and the subscriber. I am fully um, thinking that I am wrong on that it is possible to change. But for that to happen, the conversation has to change into some level of accountability. Like, 
unless we start having conversation, men amongst each other, um, taking accountability for that which is happening in the community. I mean, that's the bare minimum. Conversations about accountability is literally the bare minimum. If we can't do that, if we're still having conversations saying the, the man is the leader of the home, if you believe that framework and you come up here and you are saying that the man should lead with an iron fist, but when the child turns out bad, it's the woman's fault, we are not even in the same library. Like we're not the same page is not even a thing right now. We we don't even have the same level of understanding of what leadership means. So no, you shouldn't be leading. <laughs> and if you if we can't do that, then we're in a dire position. So I'm, I'm with you 100%. Oh, sorry. I'm with you 100 percent because I know this is an anecdotal evidence. But I work with my legal aid society in the community. I work on a financial aid, st um, financial stability team in my community. In the Black community, we help low-income families, nonprofit organizations. That's the work that I do. So my problem that I have is that Black men are not in these spaces and not in this work. Majority of these organizations are full with Black women. Um, and most of the time we're actually assisting and giving aid to black men, singular, and black women and their fam who are supporting their families. So that's my issue. It's black women in the community perpetuating these good things, helping starting these organizations. And I don't see black men in those spaces, black women getting the education, and I don't see black men in those spaces. And on top of that, a lot of our resources are also benefiting the very black men that are that are not even wanting to help us to build up the community. So it's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to think that at a point we're going to be able to overcome as a whole, as a community, if one, they're not willing to take accountability, like you said earlier, for their actions. And two, they're not even in they're not even in the spaces that are they're needed to be in to make the changes. So it seems like they don't want to, and I can't keep trying to pull pull a man up and encourage him to do the work. Oh, yeah. Well, if you do that, then you're masculine and they attack you. It's funny because everyone hates, but Black men uh, apparently online hates Black feminists who are like doing the groundwork to support Black communities, thus Black men. It is one of the strangest things I've seen. Even the Black feminist the black writing, feminist writing is, going is going to, to have change. to change. I, wait, who is this? Uh, I was going to say that even the beginning of this conversation, um, we would say we were doing better and we brought up finances. It seems like when it comes to black folks, doing better means accessing capital. Well, if you're saying that we can't access capital, which we have, I mean, they reported, you know, when black men get a lot of money, they funnel it back to white women. And in black men say when black women get money, they give it to so-called quote unquote debt. They can access capital, but so financially, financially isn't the, it's the heaviest, the strongest issue. The mindset, and you said accountability. It's our mindset. Once we access capital, what do our mind tells us to do with it? So, yeah. even though we are behind finance, we are behind economically. But I think we're more behind morally, intellectually, legacy-wise. We're behind thought process-wise more than we are the ability to access capital. Uh, every time people bring it up, doing better, we always say money, money, money. Well, yeah, we can, get, we can we can access money now a lot more than we could before, but we're still the lowest demographic of people that actually access money that holds on to it. I mean. So what does that tell us about our mindset? And accountability is the, the is like the Achilles heel of black community. We can't do any of it. Uh, and I, so I don't know what I do with that. It's a very, very, it's a very deep conversation to have when you have to turn a mirror on yourself. Everyone wants to turn a mirror on you, but not on themselves. Yeah. Let, yeah. Yeah, let's not wish accountability requires a self-reflection not to turn it around, but um, let's not act like the easiest way for families to build wealth is to own property. Wasn't redlining a thing? Um, I'm not sure. I, I feel like this is supposed to be the reverse. 
well, red line was a thing, but that red line was to separate us from white folks. So why would that make you not be able to build wealth? Unless you, your oh, your wealth ideal is being next to white folks. So I don't know what that part means. And Let's their point here. of redlining is because of how the males in our society behave. They didn't want the male, the males in our society and their society. They're like, okay, we we're going to merge, but not completely. I feel like they're just trying to do that to protect the pr protect themselves and their white privilege or their white supremacy. You know, that's what our men should be doing to our community, kind of yeah. protecting the black supremacy or the black race or whatever. Hmm. Hello. Wait. Go. Oh. I, I did not know that was a, a whim. Well, I don't know. Oh, no, nah, this is Kevin. Damn, Kevin is better than a motherfucker. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, I noticed that as we were talking along, I'm sorry for like putting the, the thing off subject, but I just want to say that while we were all talking, I noticed that no one didn't talk about how like the whole welfare thing, I'm sorry for bringing it up, but like the whole welfare thing, People didn't mention that um, black men were abandoning their family and going to Asia at that time, like mostly Vietnam. And they were, you know, what to the women over there? Like they were armed the women there because of the stereotypes going on. So they left black women there just for this little stereotyping kitty stuff. I know it's no one like talked about that, but usually when they're talking about black women took them out, they're not gonna mention that part that they were willing to leave just to have fun with the women there. And so that's what men. they're doing right now too. They're literally doing that as we speak, going to different Asian countries and um, just different countries around the world and using their women for sex and just to, to get cheaper access to women. Yeah. Yeah. Most black still men I mean, which is causing an entire separate investigation, but that's neither here nor there. Um, we will see Most how that turns out. Most black men to talk about welfare wasn't even a part of that era where they were kept out of the home anyway. I mean, I've seen oh, men my age talk about welfare, keeping their dad at the home. And at my age, no, they weren't. Um, my uh, my my mom passed away last year and um, I was going through her stuff and I found her uh, Section 8 application. My father was on it. Mm. So it, he was on the application. He had to sign it. He was on it. They had bank statements. My mom was a hoarder. She kept everything. He was on the application. So you weren't kept. If you, your mom was hiding your dad, he probably had warrants. He probably was wanted for something. He, they were looking for him for another reason. They didn't keep you at home because of welfare. But you could be on it. If you had low income families, you were on it. So if he had, he couldn't carry the weight, then he could be on it anyway. If he could carry the weight, if he kept off on purpose, then you both were lying to the government. But you could, be, if you were poor, you could be on it. He was on it. So I'm not. Hmm. America is becoming a third world country. Um, disagree. I, <laughs> I I think America is operating in the way it, it it is meant to operate. And my problem is we focus on the wrong people. Like we're focusing on black women instead of the system. And I do actually believe we are 14, 13%, 14% of the population. If half of us move up, it doesn't disrupt the econ economic system that requires a permanent underclass. That permanent underclass does not have to be you. <laughs> that is my belief on that. Um, like, like you're coming right here. Yeah. Like you're to me. <laughs> Redlining isn't about being next to white folks. It was about denying people loans who could be worthy for it. Who not denied them loans? not be based on their demographics. Um, it was a systemic denial of service. From who? From so who? it's interesting because when you... <laughs> Orange Bill, I'm not responding to your comment unless you come up here. Someone drop the link for Orange Bill. I respond to it. Denied from who was denying it? Who was counting on who to, to offer them something? Who? Mm -hmm. Ding dong. So if you didn't need, if you didn't require white folks to help you, you wouldn't, wouldn't be next to them like that. Who was denying you? So quit playing on me. Their father, I, their daddy. I, I, I want to, I want um, Orange Bill to come up to, if I, if he wants to discuss this, can one of the moderator drop the link? Because um, I want to know where he stands on the welfare taking black men out of the home before I respond to this comment. That is all. Um, Marcus, go ahead. Hello. Hey. 
Okay, so I was just uh, responding because uh, the earlier lady was talking about how um, the gap should be closing. And um, there's actually a really interesting um, Instagram of a woman, I forgot her name, but I recently saw it, where she's like, you know, all the money and capital resources generated from slavery that didn't go away. And she's actually uh, doing a project where she like tracks as much as she can, where like basically those resources went and endowments went, so it didn't go away. But basically, it the opposite. There was also uh, I'm trying to find it, but if anyone's uh, heard of it, a couple of years ago, were basically saying that education is not closing the wealth gap between uh, Black Americans and White Americans, and it's basically like White Americans would have to be slaves for two hundred years in order for that wealth gap to close. That's how much of uh, head start it was on and it's not just slavery you know every 10 years we have recessions that of course his african americans uh worse and also since reagan uh the u.s has been stripping more and more of the social safety nets which affects all poor people but of course is going to disproportionately affect us more and so i was just coming up to say it's it's not just like slavery and then 200 years it's more like it's more, it's building more on that. And the institutions that still exist today that got, the, were able to financially benefit from uh, slavery are still able to lock us out of areas. One other anecdote. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I don't actually disagree with you. The problem I'm having is, I, I've I've tried to keep my political views out of it because it doesn't actually matter for the conversation. But my problem isn't whether or not this is true, but the problem I'm having is, even if true, these are the systems you should be attacking. <laughs> like, I, like, I feel like we are spending energy fighting, like Black women, particularly Black feminists, but Black women more broadly are actually attempting to attack the system and black men at least the ones online but like the, they have so much support so it's very difficult to imagine it's only the ones online are attacking black women I get it. because uh, anti-black how, how, how is one group holding up the community and the other one trying to beat the, that one down like the community is going to fall like i don't understand that yeah um, it's like black women are fighting the system and black men are fighting black women. Yeah, which it, is why, it's, Marcus, by the way, I'm not like saying stopping you, 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 you'll be able to finish now, but this is why it's so difficult for me to like talk about this system as opposed to agency. I've been very clear that like I don't know which one run, rules supreme in terms of ultimate access. You can say, I didn't get into Harvard because of racism, but you can't say, I didn't get into any university because of racism. Hashtag Hafiz. And, and, and actually, I was, I was getting to that, like, I have trouble um, seeing where I stand on that because um, so the one live, like, you know, Black women are the most educated, but we're the most broke. And uh, we're also still broke, partially student debt. No, 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 no. That is not true anymore. Black women aren't the most broke. They are neck and neck with black men in terms of um, income. Okay, my bad. And um, they're on an upward trajectory in terms of income based on every predictor. Um, so at the proportion of the population, you guys are getting educated at a, at a disproportionately high rate in comparison to, I mean, black men, but other groups of women too. Is that income translating to wealth? Well, wealth is going to be measured over time, um, but our wealth in the black community was in, in the teens of thousands. <laughs> That's also a drag, but neither here nor there, continue. So in about uh, black women being more to fight the, for the community, it's been shown that women generally are more community-minded and men are more individualistic generally. And so, with that combination and also um, in uh, internal black, um, I forgot what it's called, but when you're black and you internalize anti-blackness, that um, black 
men don't seem to want to like because we're i think it was last live too but a lot of people say it, black men either want to be white women or white men it's like they <laughs> they want that so it's not so that's the where their individual individualistic ideology is coming in. but sorry my last point um it's so i also have a prop of like a hard time coming and say like where is like the individual accountability and you know systemic um because Wells Fargo, my, my, my last story, sorry, if I'm going too long, cut me off and I, okay. Wells Fargo, where this man, he basically got into real estate and he was um, basically buying apartments. He did what you're supposed to do, buy land, invest in real estate and everything. There was uh, one of his water pipes exploded and it destroyed his uh, apartment complex. Well, Wells Fargo had this policy of in black communities, because they're black communities, you can say, oh, it's probably fraud. And so they, like the water pipe did hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage and they only gave him like 10,000 and he became bankrupt and he had to go to live. And it turns out this is a wide reaching policy and like it's becoming, so it's like stuff like that. And I'm having a real hard time, like in the same time, like where is the systematic, where is personal accountability? And also there's a part of me that can't, if you know the way of the land in poverty, I'm not going, I can't sit here and say, oh, you shouldn't basically, in certain aspects, in certain extreme cases, okay, yeah. But I can't, who am I to tell you, oh, you should put in this effort to learn this other way and stuff? Because if you know what you have to do to pass on your Section 8 uh, housing to your kid in a very expensive area or whatever to like basically get on to get on, like who am I to say like, Oh, but you have to learn these whole new different set of skills to maybe be able to make it. And I don't know if that's too negative, but I'm, I'm like I can't I can't feel comfortable saying that across the board. Sorry if that well, went. I mean, fair enough. I I again I don't engage anymore fully in the structural argument. I won't do so until personal personal responsibility is at the forefront. Um, you can't blame systems for your behaviors if your behavior includes like attacking people and bringing down the, the, the ones who are actually bringing up the community. Like you open yourself up for questioning about your role in your own poverty. So unless we start cleaning up our house, I don't look outside of it anymore. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But I get you. Um, Lego. Hello? You're muted. Hello? You're muted. All right, Paris. Can you hear me? Hi, famous. Hey, how are you? Oh, wait, Paris, before you go, I, is it Lego? I think he, it's a, he, I think. Yes, it's Lego. Lego. Can you hear me? Yep, I can, you need to speak a little bit louder. I'm oh, sorry, my bad. I'm not a very good speaker. I, there's something playing in the background. Is it possible to like turn it down or off? Is it, playing, is it still playing in the background? Yes. Um, hold on. Sorry, my bad. All right, it's no longer playing. All right. Hello. All right. Well, Hi. hello. Yep. Yep. We can hear you. All right. Thank you. I'm having, I'm having trouble. Oh, you want to go ahead? Just go on on the tirade? Yeah. Well, tirade. what do you have to say? Oh, just the general conversation is kind of unfair to black men at all. I mean, I'm in Jeffro and stuff. We're talking about, 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 wait, wait. Um, 
First of all, I cannot hear you. Um, I don't know if you can speak any louder. Second, we're talking about the Moynihan uh, uh, report. Do you know the Moynihan report? Wait, what? Oh, yes, I heard about it. All right, what is your opinion on it? Uh, I'm through the Reddit. I haven't uh, read it, though, just going through it. You have not read I it? I haven't read it, I'm going through it. All right, what do you yes. want to talk about? Wait, what do you want to talk about, then? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I'm not even sure what I want to talk about. I was asked to come up here by your mods in the chat. Because I was talking Wait, what about you Sandra in general. Wait, what were you talking about in the chat? Oh, just the general Miss Andrew Noah in the chat. All right. Well, I don't know what's happening. Um, thank you for coming up. I, I, I literally have no clue what's happening. <laughs> was, it, was that the orange peel or somebody else? That is not the orange peel. No. Um, let go. Um, I. <laughs> Look, I am so confused. So this is what you guys keep saying. I should just let people... Like, uh, Betty Marcus here, look, I was wrong about a fact and I admit it and allow myself to be corrected and team has moved on. Yeah, please don't... Let's not drag each other. I mean, don't drag each other in the chat, um, particularly those who are engaging in good faith. But Mr. Let Go, that is not his name, but that's what I'm going with. I don't understand what's happening. So um, they said, Demis, let him go. Um, you were told to come up here. Why? You're muted. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I was supposed to come across. I was, I was talking about Sandra in the chat. And what about it? Oh, I was just calling out who I saw who were speaking to the Disdainfully about black men in the chat. Oh, wait. So you were talking to someone about misandry? Yeah, misandry in general in the chat. Oh, well, all right. Well, go have fun in the chat talking about misandry because I don't I don't have any context with the conversation. Um, sorry that one of the moderators told you to come up here because I literally have no clue what's happening. It's fine. All right. Have a good day. Bye. You know, that kind of supports what I was saying that most people, including black men, are followers. He was told to come up here and he had nothing to talk about. He just was told to come up here. He wanted you to guide him somewhere. I guess give him a talking point or whatever. He's like, why come somewhere? Are you, you, why are you over here? So, I mean, it's it just. Is, it's sad. I mean, <laughs> if every else, interaction. If nothing else, it's the audacity. I don't, like, I don't. He just, he was told to go somewhere. He went there. I'm like, that's why when they. I don't actually like talking to a lot of black men because they repeat other people's talking points, but if you give me anything new, they also the other they auto audio drops. He was sent, he was sort of come up here and didn't even ask, he didn't even say in chat room, why would I go up there? I ain't talking, I ain't talking about talking. I thought it was someone else. He's like, okay, I'll go up there. He just they just follow followers, man. Talk followers. Uh, followers, man. I don't get it. Yeah. I subscribe. I, mean, I subscribe. A lot of people follow. I subscribe. A lot of people follow. It's weird. Yeah, I, I, Paris, go ahead. I'm sorry I cut you off and went back to to talking about nothing. You're okay. Um, I find it very interesting that the idea that we all discuss that black Paris, women are ahead. fighting the system and also somehow having to fight black men, um, coming from different organizations as far as corporate America working, we go through these. Um, programs and colleges and getting these degrees. And then we, we, when we get out into the workplace, what I have to remind or tell some of the Black men I know is that because the world is genderized as well as racialized, we have a lot of workplace just violence, not physical, but emotional, mental, uh, and financial violence that comes from white women. And black men have kind of allied themselves with white women a lot of times because of their act want for access to their bodies. 
when they in, help them invade black women's spaces and things like that. But it's, I've had multiple positions that I've been working in where I've been undermined in my management positions by white women. And the one, the white woman above me helped the ones under me and things like that. So we're fighting the system. We're doing all the right things, going to college, you know, getting good jobs, working our way up, doing all the grunt work, which is one of the reasons why black women tend to be more hireable because they know we're loyal. They know we need a job and we, they know we work our butts off if nothing else. And I feel like it's a pride thing too. A lot of black men are not willing to give up their pride to feed themselves sometimes. Black women are like, listen, I got to do it. If nobody else does it, there's nobody else that's going to do it for me. And oftentimes black men are given the feminine space of sitting at their parents' house for longer than they should. Yeah. And still being able to rest in adulthood. Yeah. I uh, wish I had to disprove the, 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 the fix that, that women were allowed to stay at home more than men. That was not true. Um, men were actually staying at home more than women, which just like turns every Eastern community on its head. Um, Y'all are extremely, so this is what I don't like. <clears throat> Y'all can be in the chat and you can go off, but when you came up here, you couldn't talk. I, I don't, also maybe it's your Wi-Fi. I don't know. Maybe it's your fault. I don't know. So I'm going to just assume something was wrong because you literally got the space to speak and you were like, oh, I was just talking about some, I was talking to someone about Mr. <sighs> All right, honestly, whatever. I honestly think that a lot of the men online are they think women are against men because they're against them because they're maybe they feel like inadequate and they feel useless they display them they display themselves a certain way i volunteer for a, a black a black man's organization of a, 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 a homeless shelter for a, the youth 16 to 24 this mm -hmm. is his thing I, I, I volunteer for his thing i don't i get paid for i volunteer if you're not doing anything i'm not going nowhere with you so i'm not against men i'm against I'm against useless people. So if you feel like I'm against you, because you're useless. Yeah, I'm against that. I'm against that. If you're useless, I'm against you. So the, if you feel attacked, then you probably should maybe should feel attacked. The interesting thing is, I, 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 it feels almost like this was the word of the day for some channel somewhere. And so everyone started using the, the word. They Googled I, it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they know what it meant. Somebody said it, they Googled it. Probably spelled it wrong too, and Google corrected them, but they got it, they got it right eventually. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it, definitely it, it, on trend right now. Kadari. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Demon. I want to say one more thing if I had a little bit more time. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I was actually going to say, um, and this disdain for Black women is not just with cishead Black men, because I have a lot of friends that are part of the LGBTQ plus community, and I oftentimes find myself getting into it with gay men that I'm friends with that will regurgitate the misogynistic talking points. And I'm looking at you like, are you really going to uphold the same system that will then turn you on, around and treat you crazy? Like, I had they're, my friends. They're over here right now in this chat. I, wait, wait, wait. Gay. Paris, they're yes, over here yes. right now in this chat. A lot of them came... <laughs> at least one I know very specifically, came on and spew the same thing over and over, over here. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen this firsthand, right? Like in everyone who's been here have seen it. Like even this man came on here and said that women were the reason for gay black men being attacked. And I was very confused because I asked, who was attacking you? These Were these women attacking you? Okay, so it was men attacking you. But the women were at fault. Please walk me through this. Um, exactly. This has happened. This has happened exactly. over here. Paris, I'm sorry. You, I miss, you say that people assume you're against what type of man? I, I didn't, what was that? Oh, no, I was saying that cis head men cis cis what's um, like what's cis heterosexual that? men are not the only ones that oh. hold negative ideology towards black women it's okay. the gay men too because i have a lot of friends who are part of that community and i've always 
felt solace in having them because it's the access to manhood without the violence is what I always, it was my freedom space, my place where I can go to a club and not worry about a guy following me around or acting crazy and stuff like that. But I have physically been pushed by gay men before. Uh, they'll get in your face and fight you as a, like, try to like a woman because they have access to both gender identities to a certain extent. Um, and then they have hold a lot of uh, negative connotations with women because just think, if someone's misogynistic and they are not even physically attracted to you or don't want access to your body, then you're really useless at that point. Excuse me. So there's a lot of people in the community, unfortunately, that hold these really negative viewpoints from their uh, rearing up in a male dominated society. And they sometimes uphold these same really negative ideologies and talking points that their that, straight counterparts would have and it's disgusting but it's there sometimes too yeah i, I just didn't know the word you said because some of the words i don't know what they mean so this head this head is heterosexual no, yes this is a uh, born born male and then heterosexual attracted oh. to you know opposite sex okay um before i go to orange pill with the playstation shirt um Let's go to, is it Kadari? Hello? Nope. All right. Orange pill. Go off. <laughs> go off. No. Uh, no, I was, when I, when I we talked about the redlining, uh, was that Sunny Side, 1984, I think it was? Yeah. But what you were saying about the, um, I don't know if you meant just, I don't know if you're talking about black people or black men, or black women in particular, wanting to be around, wanting to be around white people, white folks. And I was just adding wait, wait, to what you were saying. Wait, wait, wait. Nice. Who did it, when you say you? Are folks, you talking? So. He was talking, are about you me. talking to me. Oh, all right. He was talking to me. So you are want you to talking? know black men and black black men or black women about the one be around white folks? Anybody that supported the uh, anybody that she supported the civil rights movement, and anybody that supported the. The idea of redlining about not be, by being by white folks. If you want to be, if you think the redlining had an issue so impactful that it, it kept black people moving forward, it's because you want to be around the group that wouldn't want you around there. So if you're black or if you're a black woman or black man, thought that redlining kept you from building wealth on your, on your people, building pride and morality with your own people. How about you? Okay. Well, well, as far as what I what I what I uh, know about redlining is it's it's not so much just uh, moving into a neighborhood. And for for uh for better quality or whatever moving into white neighborhoods it was also about the resources coming to your neighborhood as well who's so resources? huh who's resources uh the governments Government so as far resources? as yeah as oh, far so as like loans and stuff i'm sorry can, can i finish i'm just trying i'm trying, I'm trying to explain oh, okay. so, right, yeah so appreciate it so what happens is like the federal housing administration getting those loans um so you can uh, build up your community. So there have been history of black communities being denied loans based on their demographics. So it's not just moving into a place, but it's also about the resources coming to uh, us based on the banks denying us loans. And it's not just mortgages. It's also, they found that there was a trend of just black people in general being denied mortgages, uh, being denied credit card loans, being, they got, but they did not school loans. So they found this trend, and that's what they, and so it's more to redlining that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, like I said, I don't like, and I, I know you asked me, uh, uh, theme is about, I don't want to speak on the whole minority, minority report, <laughs> morning hair report, because I haven't read it yet. So I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to speak on something I don't know. You know what I'm saying? All right, wait, that's, before, but don't have, you don't have to speak on it, but do you, are you one yeah. of those people who believe wealthier took black men out of the home and why? Don't believe welfare took black men out of the home? Did black men just um, up and walk out on their family or did welfare take them out of the home in the 1960s and before? 1960s? Um, I, I don't believe that. I don't think, I don't believe welfare took black men out the home. 
I don't believe. Yeah. I, I've heard of some instances where, like, and I, huh? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I can't put my finger on it, but I, I don't believe is. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. Like, I don't believe welfare, and you know, um, like just off of me, just not knowing information, just going on my hunch. Like, I don't believe welfare took the black men out the home. I don't believe that you know women getting these, these government jobs and all that stuff took uh took uh, black women out the home. I mean, took black men out the home. Sorry, took black men out the home. As well, I don't, but, but I don't know what the reason is. But I, I, I just have a hard time believing that that's is that. So that's what I'm saying. So is that like I said, from what you, because I, I don't know, because I hear I hear black men saying, oh, the Morning Hand report puts the blame on black women, and I'll hear black women say no, it puts it on black men. So I'm like, I gotta read for myself. I was telling LB and the comments, just, I gotta read for myself, to determine that. So I don't know. All right. Well, when you read it and come back, you can let me but know. I, but for, for now, if I had to make a hunch, yeah. yeah. But the just know that the Moynihan re, report, the Moynihan report, is not about black women so much as it is about black men needing to be able to lead. And they, in fact, put forward the idea that black men might need to go to the military to learn discipline and how to be masculine so if that same report said that um welfare took you out of the home the in the, the consistent way to read it is that you could not compete with welfare i mean obviously like if black men were taken out of the home by welfare it's because you couldn't compete with welfare right like Yeah, you couldn't provide as much as the welfare could. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. All yeah. right, well, continue. You and Sonny yeah. were talking. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, you said um, uh, Black or minorities were denied loans from the government. Um, who, the government is, is an entity, it's an institution built up of people. So who was denying the loans? Like who specifically was denying the loans? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, I guess. I mean, you think they 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 think there are black people that work for the government denying the loans and, and white people denying loans too. Like who do you think were denying denying the loans? Uh white people were denying loans if if that's the case. It's a systematic, it was a systematic thing. It wasn't just one person controlling all the things. It was a systematic oh, no. practice they found. So, so in a study they did in the 1960s. So section eight, when was that first do you know who first benefited from section eight? I don't. I don't actually. Uh, Section eight was actually um, was a, actually a popular, uh, actually a supplement built for white married couples or married married couples in general. I think that black people in eventually, mm -hmm. but it's actually a great. Um, you, it was actually a good thing to move up to Section eight housing, but when they brought black folks into it, white folks abandoned it, and that's when they did. That's when they did the red line denying the loans. You can't get a house. They, they promoted housing for white folks and denied it for yes, black folks in Section eight. Section eight started with white folks, but then the government did step in and separate them. And wife went over there and got their mortgages and they kept black people here. So Section 8 was actually a really nice, uh, considerably a nice yes. area. What happened to it? And why couldn't black people maintain that nice area? Like, what happened to it? Yeah, so it, it's really weird because what they say is that the, uh, the, the like, it's called, like, the federal administration, they actually put in their, uh, like, they're kind of like the manual, their script that it was just basically too risky to mortgage. There was, like, with no evidence, really, there was too risky to to basically finance inside mortgage, finance inside no, of black neighborhoods. No, I'm sorry. I meant the Section 8 housing. They, they kind of forced black people to stay back in. It was actually a oh, nice set. What happened to that housing area? Like, you know, Section 8 housing is a terrible district now. But it was nice at first. What happened to that area to where we couldn't maintain it? Our predecessors couldn't ma maintain it. That, that's a good question. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, so it, it's, it's one of the things, like, if white, if white folks are banned, I would assume that they're taking their resources as well, which because you can't, it's one of the things like, okay, we left it to you guys in such a great condition. So, you know, you know, so make sure you treat it nicely. I, I don't think it was like something like that. Like you just kind of gave it to us. It's like, no, we're taking all our stuff out of here. Now you guys got it. Oh, and there'll be no funding coming for it. That's that's taking that's what like, huh, what you say? like taking what stuff out with like resource, like, like water, you took water and electricity out. Like we mean resources. As far as the building it, building it up and keeping uh, developing more in that community, like that, so, you know, if, they, if if more black people are moving into a neighborhood, 
this is actually if you saw that that show them they kind of talk about this kind of stuff it was like a that, that little horror show they talk about basically about, about people white people starting to move out because black people are moving in uh, and I then they get concerned about that it's white flight white flight yeah I kind of feel like that may that no that did happen but I kind of feel like that the fact that it wasn't maintained was because we we wanted white folks to maintain it and we, they wouldn't do it we didn't do it so they taken well, we, taken yeah. they, like, they, they didn't take water electricity or gas from the, the hood they didn't take that they they took their their influence they took their money they took their resources they took their ability to build it up and left it to you and we and we didn't do it so what does that yeah. mean about us? Like we didn't, they didn't go in there and just destroy it. They didn't do, they didn't black wall street section eight. So why did yeah. so dismantle like that? Why, what, what happened to it? Be so broken down to where we need, we require white folks to carry it so much. We could do nothing at all to keep it up. One yeah, second. Imagine, before we we continue. Wait, wait, wait. imagine the resources we had. Okay. Um, words of a poet. Have you been here before? No, nah, I come over because um, I'm usually listening to Cynthia G. And um, she mentioned your show about the Manhunt Report, so I decided to come in and listen to her. But I followed and thing, man. I like how you're doing. And bless up. I know you're from the island too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, bless up. Yeah, Trini here. So anyway, I just want to say that, could we agree that, um, that what he was saying, that all the resources that was first made was not even intended for us, whether it was the civil rights movement or... You know, they felt sorry for us. What we kind of fall into all them benefits. I don't think none of that shit was invented or made for like um foundation of Black Americans. And also, as far as the uh, report, I just wanted to say I don't think like you know welfare can take somebody out of the house. You know, I don't understand unless like the welfare check grew some legs and shit and and drag you out physically. I don't know how something can make you want to go anywhere. If you want to stay with your family, you know what I'm saying? Take care of your family, your kids, your woman, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, yeah. So that was just the two things I wanted to say, that all the resources that we end up getting, that everybody's happy about, that we get through the civil rights movements and stuff, it's like a sour grape. You know, if I ask you for something and you give it to me, that's all good and dandy. But if I ask you for something and you have to complain and make a big deal about it, I don't want it, you understand? So them white people, the things they had, they already, that was for them. You know, we yeah. want to come in, rush in and get it, and we get it and feel special like we get it, but it was never intended for us. And that's about it, you know. Yeah, I mean the 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 Freedom Fund was completely ignored in the civil rights movement. Um, so it, it's just sort of interesting that the the push for integration just overshadowed um literally just overshadowed economic equality. I, I, I don't know, like, why Why was integration such a fundamental part? Like, I mean, I get it, and it's skewed and whatever, but, like, why was economic equality, or at least access, not, like, the forefront? LBJ and the rest of them were able to use the Moynihan Report to just say, are used to talk the rhetoric of civil rights without actually implementing like socioeconomic policies that would affect socioeconomic status in a good way. Um, I find that like hugely interesting, um, but also I just, the fact that you just came up here and just started dragging um, was funny, but it, it is true when I hear people say welfare well, took them out of the home, I'm very like, on one hand, I want to like intellectually engage with it, but on the other hand, I just want to laugh. Like, so let me ask you this: Why? Where did it? Was that that come from? Was there some type of rule or something back in the day that they say, "Oh, if your man decides to stay and love you and make more babies, you ain't go get shit." Like, uh, yeah. how did they? Yeah, like, I mean, that, that was part of the 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 rule that we were talking about. Um, with the King versus Smith, um, overturned that in nineteen sixty eight. Um, but it was only there for like a four years, I believe. I don't quote me on that. Um, and it's not, I mean, if you can't recover from four years of separation, then I don't know. But also, why are you getting kicked out of the home for providing for and letting the government provide if you could provide? So the, the, the answer all leads back to the government in terms of its financial aid was able to do more than you were 
And I feel like in the conversation about welfare took us out of the home, that mm -hmm. part gets left off. Why? I mean, it didn't, but even if it did, how is that possible? And when you ask, people say, well, the women chose health wealthier. Okay, fine. Why did the women choose wealthier over the man? All right. Okay, yeah, come out with it. Yeah, 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 that's why. So if you couldn't provide, then should the, everyone suffer? Like, I don't understand. Like, what if, should everyone suffer and be unable to provide and keep roof over their head to be with you? And if so, is that love? Do you love the people you are around? Like, none of it makes sense. Regard if you take, assume arguendo, assume that it's all correct and welfare did take them out of the home why why was it able to and also if you own the home how how could it do that um i i think it is a very reductive conversation one that i generally don't engage with but i would prefer for a man or woman who have this belief to come up and explain it to me I would much rather that because if I go on, it's going to feel like a drag and I don't want to be dragging because it might be a logical stance that I just don't understand the logic for. And I also have too much pride to even try to admit some foolishness like that. They take them out, it take them out the home because it promised them a white woman around the corner. <laughs> well, I feel like it's also contradictory because the civil rights movement was about, supposed to be about, you know, not having resources from, from the government. But then when then we black were abandoned, they got resources for resources from the government, all of a sudden they took them out the home. But you fought to get resources from the government. You wanted resources for the government, you wanted funding for your whatever. I so, mean you wanted resources from Goldman Sachs. <laughs> when black women got it, all of a sudden that, that, that resource took you out the home, but you fought to get resources brought into the black community, but the black women got it, all of a sudden took you out the home. The way but people started, about resources. It's about the resources. Way Wait, the way people started whining about Goldman Sachs, when I thought, where was it, $850 in Georgia during the height of the pandemic um, to black women? I was like, oh God, I yeah. was waiting for that. <laughs> and it came, but like the billion dollars from Goldman, the 10 billion from Goldman Sachs, the money from, like, if you want the money, say it. Admit that you're a feminist <laughs> and that you should be equal to women. Like, I, look, I am like, what if you're logically consistent, then I'm here for it. But you're you can't say the white man is bad, blah, blah, blah. But I also want this. Like, no, like, at least be consistent. Be consistent. I can't attack you. If you say, I am a feminist, men and women should be treated equally. I, as a man, should also get money that women are getting. Period. Like I, I can argue with that. That is your belief. You, your belief is predicated on something, and that is feminism. And period, your feminism and equality of the sex. I'm here for it. I won't argue with you on that. Root shot <laughs> explains how black communities were destroyed through public policy. Redlining was an accepted practice by lenders. Um, wait, there's an echo somewhere. I don't know who's echoing, but I'm sure there's an echo. Um, in any case, please feel free to come on. Um, I actually don't disagree with redlining. The schooling is tied to property tax. If you've been pushed into a neighborhood that does not have the kind of resources that other neighborhood have, then that school is going to be broke and you won't have the resources to educate the children. Now, I, I think that's the problem, but you need to be willing to admit that education is a problem in the community, and then we need to take the next logical step. All of this needs to happen. I am not willing to sit here and cherry pick the, the different ideas from feminism and then the different ideas over here from patriarchy and pretend like this mil the, 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 the cesspool of the generous to make sense. It doesn't. It does not make sense. You cannot want 50-50 and then argue that women need to be submissive to you. You cannot argue that welfare took you out of the home and that 
um, there is racism and structural issues. No, you you need to take your arguments to the logical extreme. The logical That's extreme good. of some of these argument is that agency is what is required. You can become a Reagan conservative and do that. You can, you can do that. That is fine. That is a, an appropriate stance to take. But don't then come back here and say racism, stop and frisk. Don't, don't do it because you, you're inconsistent and that I can't go with. Yeah. If I tell a woman that uh, we need to go half half every time I get paid, she get in my damn check. I can't say shit. <laughs> I can't with you. I'm so done with you. I am done. <laughs> um, all right. So I did you guys Sunny, did you finish did you and Orange Bill finish your conversation? Uh, I was gonna actually just lead to what you were saying that you know the resources are taken out of the community, but that means you needed white folks to build your community because you couldn't do it we couldn't do it on our own. We needed them to do it. But then when black women got resources for the government, all of a sudden that ruined the community when you spent your time fighting get resources for the community. It's just like it was just contradictory. That's what I was gonna lead to, but you already brought it up anyway, so kind of you know. Yeah. Can I ask you all some uh, sunny side and themes? What you have think that we can do? Because, you know, we know that like America, what it was built on, we know it was built on black people and other minorities, uh, but mostly black. We know that um, the white people and the white man own everything. Do you think it's too late for, you know, I didn't want to turn this into a black woman, black man thing, but black people in general. Do you think it's too late for us to like get our own, like, because resources, you got to get resources from the ground up, right? Um, yeah, right now, yeah, 2022. Oh, yeah, we're, we're too late for that. I was talking about before civil rights. Too, right now, yeah, yeah, definitely. We're definitely late. I don't, I don't, think, think, I don't think we're too late. Yeah, I either. disagree, but the, okay, I not, think not capability, not capability, but mindset. Too late, mind, yeah. capability, mindset. Too late, mindset. If we're gonna do it, the women have to do it. That's why so I don't that, think so. Well, <laughs> actually, I Whoa, don't think basically, the only people that are gonna do it will be the women. Wait, exactly. wait, 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 let's stop. For so wait, the man can help? Wait, wait, can can I get in for two seconds? I don't... My answer is that there needs to be a mindset, mindset sort of shift. Unless that happens, like, we cannot even attempt to attack the systemic yeah. issue. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> right. Right. That there is going to be a mindset shift I don't know that that is likely. Not if you had asked me two months ago, I would probably say it is possible. <laughs> but I have spoken to too many people in between that time. And I'm, I'm seeing a kind of pattern. And from this pattern is this unwillingness to acknowledge. Like when someone will go to the end of the earth, and be illogical, they will look um, like they're literally lying. They will literally make no sense just to stay right. Like, right on an issue that is not, like, consequential. Like, in a conversation with uh, some of the people that came on here, they will just go on and on and on and refuse to accept that they are wrong. If you can't accept that you are wrong in these tiny moments, I'm sorry, I don't trust you to change. Mm -mm. Trust Correct. is built over time. And those little moments where you are unable to even accept that, okay, even if I'm not right, I might be right, or I didn't consider this. Like in those moments where you're unable to accept that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very afraid of you. I am very much afraid of you. Like, I'm not about to believe in you. I'm not about to put my faith in you. You are definitely not going to lead me anywhere because I don't trust you. These people want to be leadership without the responsibility of leadership. And that does not make sense. How are you going to rule with an iron fist, but then blame everyone else for when things go wrong? An iron fist means that no one else has decision-making power. You made all the decisions. You don't then get to blame me. I am sorry. The mindset thing is not about to happen. It's it happening. People rather, rather be right than grow. Yes. Yeah. Right than grow. Exactly. So I think there's definitely an attachment to ego. Well, I think everyone has an attachment to the ego, but there is a very specific attachment to ego in the black community and rightness. And I also think that y'all not gonna like this, but 
I think that the solution for us to kind of separate ourselves from a lot of the degenerate mindsets and the, a lot of the things that are perpetuating the cycle that was kind of uh, mentioned in the Moynihan report. Amen. Is the D word. I think everyone needs to divest from the degeneracy in the black community. I think all black people need to acknowledge what are the mindsets and the traditions and the narratives that we hold onto that actually corrode us. It corrodes our women, it corrodes men, it corrodes black children, it corrodes black families. It does not, it does not benefit us. And I think that we have a hard time kind of pinpointing what these narratives are because some of them are masked in humor. Some of them we don't take as seriously as we should. And I think that we encourage and, um, and incentivize a lot of shitty shit that quite frankly is tearing us apart. And I think that a lot of people are not, are not willing to admit that because again, there is an attachment to ego that's like beyond unhealthy. Um, and I, I know for me, I know for me personally, and I'm, and I'm talking on a societal collective level, but I know for me personally, in my own just growth journey, like I've, I've had the most growth when I've decided to detach myself from my own ego, like to say, like, Hey, like, I know you think this about yourself, girl, but that ain't the tea. And what's actually going to work for you is this instead. And you're going to have to humble yourself a little bit and move in this direction. And I, I would love to see, I would love to see us to be able to do that, you know, on a large scale. Um, I don't think that it's impossible and I don't think that it's too late, but I definitely think it's, it's a mindset thing. 100%. Trey, Trey, thank you so much. Um, she said she enjoyed this convo. All right, let's get, I'm not for everyone. You haven't spoken yet. Okay. Yeah, y'all been saying the same word that I said last night, the mindset. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that last night, Themis, that I said that the mindset of most men, there's something there's something wrong with it with, and the way that they connect to women and how they treat women. Um, I'm just going to say one thing for right now, and I'm just going to leave it at this, especially, please, women, please, if you've never listened to me, please listen to me now. And this is very good advice that I heard from someone else. Never take advice from someone who doesn't have to deal with the consequences. That's all you have to do. He's not the one that's going to get pregnant. There you he go. doesn't have to deal with that consequence. He's more, more than likely not the one that's going to have to end up with DV. He's not going to live with the consequences. He doesn't have to deal with black femicide. You have to deal with possibly being in a body bag, not his consequence. It's This really is not that hard to, to get past. You just have to want to get past it. It's very simple. If he doesn't have to deal with the consequences, there is no reason for you to take his advice ever in life, period. Yeah. Um, Nora, oh, Nora, go ahead. Hello. I've been, y'all hit so many different conversations. <laughs> um, but I had originally came on because of the whole redlining thing, because that's what I do for a living. I work in the mortgage industry. So that's why I wanted to, I was going to talk about that. But as far as what everyone's saying, as far as divesting from the black community in the sense of picking out the positives that we want to highlight and just ignoring the negatives, I think that is the only way this is going to change is to say a future is is disgusting. Like is to have that conversation like and mean it and treat them as such. It sounds messed up, but not to compare to white people, but that's what they, that's what they do in their community. They're very quick to shun you for certain things, as I would say, that's how they did in, in the past. Um, and with the whole redlining thing, it wasn't just um, African Americans, it was Jewish people, it was Italian people. And the sad part is that with we now see what those communities look like. Like we see what, what a Chinatown looks like, we see what like if you like, I, I'm from the East Coast, so I know what a New York City looks like when they specific they had the same redlining, but they made an effort to maintain their communities. So it wasn't. I would I would agree that it was it was about proximity to white neighborhoods because it wasn't stopping you from buying your own neighborhood. It was saying you can buy over here because this is a white neighborhood because. Where I'm from, it's a black suburb, but that's not how it started originally. It was one of the sundown towns in America. So like they would literally only sell, like we have different parts of our neighborhood and they would only sell 
to black people in this particular neighborhood. And there was a neighborhood that had a golf course in that same area, but they would say, no, you can't live here, but we'll show you houses over here. What happened is black people said, okay, fine. And they bought up those houses in that area. And they said, okay, I'm going to maintain these houses in that area. And because the school systems are all put together, there was no choice but the white kids to have to go to school with the black kids. And then the white flight happened, but the neighborhood was still maintained in the sense of it was for like black people essentially turned a sundown town into a black neighborhood. So I'm a little extremist. I believe that we should not desire to live in white neighborhoods. Um, I feel like we should buy up our own communities and, and take care of them and take pride in the way they look. Um, even though it's just aesthetics, but aesthetics is how houses get sold. But it's just, I wish we that was part of like the mindset change that I wish we had. It was like, get rich, leave the area you're in instead of finding ways to improve where you are. And I understand the dangers. And that's why it's gotten to a point where I can't blame people for leaving. Because Wait, what's that like, rapper's name? He died... Um... He was with this lady. I forgot her name, too. She's an actress. But he died at his store because he was trying to build up his neighborhood, I think, in California. Oh, um, Nipsey. Nipsey Hustle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He um, didn't, I, think, I don't think he lived in the neighborhood anymore. But I think he made like he made a very a effort to he buy lived a, here. Like, commercial and like yeah. properties and, and stuff. And so it's hard for me to say stay in the neighborhood. Um, but yeah. I... I do take your point. Black men are not going to change. Are you going to change how you deal with them? Your esteem in them when they have retreated long ago. The thing is, even if they were, even if you, we consider black men in this term and whether or not we can change or we're not going to change, I actually think you, we, this is not advice. I don't give advice, but I, vetting doesn't work. And actually, Finn was talking about that earlier. If you have sort of different expectations, boundaries, and things like that, that is better because it's continuous. As soon as someone stop, stop meeting these expectations, reasonable, obviously, um, then you move away from and stop engaging with them because to attempt to vet I don't think is good people change and people lie. Um, but thank you. Take it to your house. I don't give advice. I don't give dating advice. I don't know how you vet a man. I don't, I don't care. Um, because in terms of vetting, I think it's useless. No agency can do it. I don't know why you should be able to do it. But I do think having boundary standards and expectation is a good uh, alternative. This is why leadership requires accountability. Yeah, agreed. Thank you, Concern. So our black men, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read these. I usually say don't send super chats because they kind of interrupt the flow. But I appreciate, um, I do appreciate you guys trying to support, but you don't have to. I just, it, it, it really sort of interrupts. So our black men stating that they possess no agency, can't make grown men decisions, single black women choose their children and black men aren't capable of choosing their children. What are you accountable for? Leadership, I actually have a comment. Remind me someone, um, SKJ, remind me to put a comment on the screen that I got um, regarding a car analogy that was made. Thank you, confidence with love. Um, this sim says, you literally cannot vet people. Agreed, people lie. All right, <laughs> too many super chats. So I'm... <sighs> Thank you, LB, by the way, you haven't come up tonight. Uh, this is Jessica X. You were also Mama LB said, tell him I said, oh, hola papi. She seen you flexing on the ground. Me, no, <laughs> me, no mother. Um, period. I was on vacation. It wasn't vacation. Um, tell your mom I said, hello. Hello, LB mother. Um, all right. Jessica X, were you on yesterday? I think someone said they were you and... Um, everyone said I should talk to you. I don't know why. Yes, for some reason, like I'm trying to figure out why it's such a big deal that I'm here. If your fans oh. are so are so gun ho about me being here, tell them hoes to come up. 
and we can have a talk. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. You remember me, right, Jessica? We could talk. But yeah, anyways, wait, 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 wait. All right. So I talk to a lot of black women that don't want to take accountability. So I can't say if I remember you or not. All right, wait. Is that is that what you want to talk about? Accountability? No, I want to be respectful of the the conversation tonight. Wait, I you want to read a what? I said I want to be respectful of the conversation tonight. Oh, all right, gotcha. All right, so what is your opinion on the Moynihan report? I believe that you guys are distorting the facts in my opinion. Mm -hmm. However, I don't live in the United States, state, but I wanted to just I'm hearing a feedback. I don't know what's going on. Oh, we I can hear the feedback. I don't know either. Uh uh, you're fine. No, I can hear you. I mean, if you can talk through the feedback, I, I, I don't think I felt as though you muted me. Who? No, I did not mute you. I did not mute you. I promise I did not. Let me put my hands up. I promise I, I don't I don't mute generally unless people like being loud and like obnoxious, but no. She's a finesse, Demis. Huh? <laughs> she just used like... um political wordplay like she tries to switch situations and scenarios to make you sound like you're kind of like like this whole thing now is like that, exactly that's you're what she does do? that's what she does right there like right. you're definitely not doing that let, let me just say this i don't know um what is happening and i refuse to even engage with like buffoonery i don't mute people as a general matter I don't care about your opinion, your political beliefs, anything. I generally allow everyone to come on. Um, if you're getting muted, I'm just muted, trying to understand. I did not kick her out. Um, <laughs> I under. Wow. Um, I don't know what happened either. So, it's not a real person. I think it's somebody that literally just studied the art of manipulation and tries to get win arguments, like. The, he not, he not, or she, it could be a boy or a girl. I'm not sure. Doesn't just doesn't want to be wrong. It's okay. It doesn't matter what they're saying as long as they're not wrong. So she's you not. Know? A subscriber. She's actually a, somebody that people know. She has a YouTube channel. Like me uh -huh. saying that I know she remembers me is because we had a conversation where she tried to play some manipulative games, uh -huh. and then she used my clip, chopped it up, and like tried to make herself seem like she won that argument. And she does that so that she can create, so she can get money from men who um, just want to see black women be bashed. Well, hopefully that's she, the, hopefully that's her main her. motive. Right, well, her uh, or his, uh, I honestly think uh, it's a man. If you ask me, if 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 um, uh, someone is going to argue that I muted them and removed them from the live stream, um, that I don't do that. That that is not even in the way that I was socialized. So, like, I don't I don't right, care. Right, like, it doesn't know. matter. Um, um, if she comes back on, she says she, she wants to hold black women accountable. If she comes back on, do you let her talk about that topic? Even though it's not about the Moynihan report, but would you let her? Would you let her talk about where she, how she want to hold black women accountable? She says something about that, and uh, that, I actually want to hear that too. So if she comes back on, it's okay. She talk about how women should be held accountable for whatever it is she thinks we should be held accountable for. Can she do that? If she comes yeah, back, someone said that is not the real Jessica X. I live in the UK, and this, um, this is not her. Look, I don't. I care. will say so, that I've wait, seen wait, just, her. Wait, 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 stop, stop. Wait. I don't care. Who it uh, is? I don't know Look, she is. No, no. Let me just be. <laughs> let me be frank. Let me be clear. I don't know anyone. I don't care about anyone. You can come up here and pretend to pretend to be Jesus for all I care. <laughs> I only care about what you're gonna say, right? So, like, I I don't care. You can troll. You can do this. Someone may come up here and name Kevin Samuel something. I I don't care. If you are gonna talk, I'm gonna let you talk. I'm going to agree if I agree, disagree if I disagree. Ultimately, my principles are my own. They're not decided by whoever I'm talking to. I'm also not into anyone's beef. So if you, I don't know Jessica X. I've never listened to a video of hers. But if you guys have beef with her, I don't know her. I will not go Google her and look for her after this. I don't care. You wouldn't be able to find her anyways. No one yeah, cares. Like, uh, okay, well, let's not talk about this woman or whoever. Yeah. Um, I did actually want to make a comment about uh, redlining. I think um, a lot of Black folks kind of stuck in the past. We're kind, of, we kind, we're kind of nostalgic when it comes to certain aspects because I think redlining in 2022 is not the same idea of redlining in 1960s because 
all neighborhoods today are white neighborhoods because they were white and then we moved in there and they moved out. So every neighborhood, pretty much a white neighborhood, but we never maintain we never maintain those old white neighborhoods. That's why I feel like that we, we look for, we look we look up to white folks so much that we won't do anything on our own. Let's say hold our hand with it or carry us or give us some, some type of accolade or, or support because all these neighborhoods right now white we they they ran from every areas we're from. Every neighborhood that they're black right now used to be white and they left and left us alone to do by ourselves. We didn't do it. So I think that we're looking the same. We look at twenty twenty two black neighborhood as nineteen sixty black neighborhood, which is not the same thing. There were no black neighborhoods. We were over here, then we went over white folks, white folks left. This old, old black neighborhood they tore down and rebuilt parks on top of. So we we, we all we're all in, intermingled. So why is it that everywhere we go, it fails? Majority wise, why does it fail? And because we don't do we we count on somebody to take care of us too much. So that's what I want to comment on. That's what I was gonna say. All right. Cerebral, so um you I love that picture. <laughs> Thank you, Venus. Hey, I just Venus. wanted to come in. I thought I was like, period. Go ahead. Hello, everybody in Themis. Listen, Themis, my heart is racing. I just came on here. I haven't seen the whole show. Um, Jessica X left. I don't want to uh, start too much drama, but if she's listening, honey, you need to step back. You live in England. Stop speaking for the experience mm. of Af African-American women over here in America. You are not over here. So stop talking like you know what we all go through with Black men. And last time I checked, Black men in England are with white women all over the place. In fact, their biracial kids outnumber the black kids over there. You know damn well, even over there, all your football players and many black men don't even date the black women over there. So shut the hell up, okay? You need to shut the hell up. You only came on YouTube to uh, get in the good graces of the Manosphere men who donate to you. Shut the I'm, I'm, I'm not going to curse on your show. Be quiet and stop. As black women, we do share a lot of the same experiences. I've talked, I've had many black women who are foreign from Africa to England calling my show and they're all going through the same thing with black men over there. So be quiet, Jessica X. You can talk about some things you observe with the African-American community, but it's disgusting how you do, how you talk about black women in America, how you want to throw away what we're going through. You think we're not lying about the things we talk about. And it's disgusting how you do us, just so you know. Also, also she's not black. She's biracial. Wait, she says her, continue, her dad um, is black. Let me just say that I, look, man, I will say this. this woman, man. Um, <laughs> Cerebral, I have tremendous respect for you, which is why I allow you to speak. Obviously, I don't really mind. But I will say that the words coming from the people here are their own opinion. I do not care about anyone's stance once it's logical and you can explain it. That's it. That's all I care about. Um, so I allow for everyone to speak once you're not being abusive. Now. With that said, I will just say I'm stepping back from this because I don't I, I don't know who this person is, but I would prefer to hear what she has to say to this. So I don't I don't care. So please stop sending me messages in the private chat or in um, email and the DMs. Please get out of the DMs talking about her. I don't care. Oh, All right. I, I, I won't say any more about her. I'm not starting a beef with her. I don't I've known about this 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 horrible woman for a while. And I don't um I don't make videos towards her because she's not even worth it. But Jessica, you are a disgrace to black women. As far as the Monahan report, I already knew black women was head in the households. Black women have are the hardest working women in America. We have never had a break. We have never in large numbers experienced being able to rest in our femininity and not break our backs working. I always knew black men was lying about, oh, you, you got on welfare and destroyed everything. A woman that's being taken care of doesn't have to get on welfare. Black women have always had to be the ones on the front line for every damn thing most of the time. Black men wasn't getting hired. The black woman has always tried to keep the so-called black community and family together. And I'm happy to hear about the Monahan Report. And there are other articles explaining all of this. Themis and everybody, I got to go, go but <laughs> thank you for letting me on. I'm going to keep listening. 
All Thank right. you. I appreciate it. Bye, y'all. I really Bye. like your picture. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Themis. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Um, I don't know that one. Was Nora. <laughs> Nora, go ahead. By the way, the people who are showing their faith, I keep up because uh, just as a general matter, I, I like I wish more people would show like show their faces. But go ahead, uh, Nora. I don't have anything right now. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> not, not y'all doing the playing the same game. Um, I don't even know what to say now because this conversation went all the way left. <laughs> Valerian. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I have a quick point I want to make. Um, and I'm glad you're still here at Sunnyside. Okay, um, two points really quick. Um, now, these in no way uh, take away from the general point that's being made about um, gender with the Monaghan report as well as um, the infantility of of males, black males. Um, so there's two different subcultures in black America. Um, so when you talk about redlining and home ownership and maintaining homes, there's a generalization about black people that all black people don't own homes and that they never owned homes and that they were never able to maintain homes. And that's, that's just not true. Um, so I, I purchased my home from the original owner. Um, the home was built in 1963. This is in Chicago. Um, during that I'm back, time, Coz. What are you guys going to say about it? I muted you just now. Um, you, we do not interrupt each other. Go ahead. Um, Valerian. It's Valerian. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I was just saying, um, so there, so in the early 1960s, there was a wave of black people that came up to Chicago and purchased homes because they were really cheap. It was, it was, um, that pro it was the FHA. Program. Oh, wait, your, your, um, audio is going out. I can Crusty ass really phone, no. I can you hear me? Okay. I think it might be. Uh, Wait, let me just say, um, if there is one more interruption cursing Jessica, uh, Jessica, um, I will have to remove you. Um, I, all right, well, she left. Good. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me okay? No, it's like a very, it's very staticky. Um, is this better? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on. I'm so sorry. Um, go ahead, Rob. Hey, um, I just kind of wanted to touch on the subject of um, the conversation that we're having in response to kind of like the manosphere and bad faith, bad faith actors who use the Moynihan report to kind of try to prove a point that's in their favor. When when you read that whole thing, it, it, it's very um, it's anti like I don't see how they think black men come out looking good from that report. But then I do want to kind of separate the larger political discussion about black families and their wealth position in America, which does. We did not hear you. You went on mute. Oh, for some reason, my mic just it just muted by itself. I don't know why I did that. Can you hear? Yep. Okay, uh, I was going to say that I don't know, um, like there's a larger wealth discussion that we're talking about, about the wealthlessness that we see in the Black community. And I think that the reason why this conversation is just so hard to have in general is because the Black people in general just don't understand what the Black family, Black life, Black communities look like on paper as far as the wealth is concerned. So when you talk about um, why weren't Black communities maintained. I think that Black communities were created, but they never really had the wealth to maintain themselves. So just because you build a public housing infrastructure, well, Black people don't own the building to maintain it, right? Um, and then when you live in America where we attach our school systems to property values, well, when the Black communities are artificially depressed by things like redlining, 
then you don't have the 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 economic base to pull from in order to consistently because building a school like that's to, that takes uh maintenance you know that's not just a one I mean, you can ask dr umar about that school building but continue. yeah and that should have that right there should have alarmed people that this is going to be a problem because his goals were just too lofty for what he had like you can't build a school and say okay the school is built now we're done no you you have teachers to uh pay you have um a, a facility to maintain right. pipes, electricity, bills, uh, um, taxes and things like that. All of that stuff has to, that's monthly. And so I, I, I do want to caution because one, one thing that I notice is whether you're in the manosphere or whether you're here, there's a very strong conservative thread that runs through a lot of these arguments. Um, but I do want to keep in mind the actual data about the wealth position of Black people in America. I mean, I, I am not conservative-leaning, I don't think, but if I am, that's fine. I don't care. However, is there a problem with the conservative lean? Um, not inherently, I don't think so, especially when you start talking about some of the more social aspects of Black life. But, but if then, it's not, I don't understand. Let's be direct, because if it's not, you wouldn't be cautioning us. Well, like I said, so when we talk about um, Black families who wanted to buy homes, well, Black, the way that people bought homes in America is through government subsidy, right? So government um, said that they were going to subsidize loans that eventually went out mo mostly to white families. And that's how they started building middle, cl uh, the, uh, middle class homes. Even when you look at the jobs that it took in order to build those suburbs, that was a government jobs package, right? And so you had a whole bunch of um, soldiers coming back from war saying, like, these are the things we need. And then you had the New Deal spring out of that, something that the Black community largely was annexed from, except for a few individuals here and there. And so when you try to somehow make Black people at fault for that when they didn't hold any of those offices, they weren't the ones who were di distributing the loans. Right. So... I, I take your point. I think why it might seem like a conservative lean in your mind is this idea of um, agency over system. Right. So I think that there's... Yeah, um, yeah no, that's uh, fine. Just yes or no on that. Um, I think the issue, like if, if you're critiquing this channel, I take that critique, but only to the extent that I have intentionally refrained from talking about systems. I mean, if you want that, those videos, they're here. Um, I did one on the prison industrial complex. I've done many, I think, just generally talking about systems. I have refrained from doing that because it's becoming a cop-out. Um, and I cannot, in good faith and with good conscience, talk about the system when the people fighting the system, Black feminists generally, are the ones getting dragged online by the people they are attempting to protect. There is no possible way I'm going to allow that uh, as the point of conversation here. I guess that's not going to happen. Rewind that like 30 seconds and listen to it again. Thank you. Hold on, who is that for? Huh? I said, who was that for? Rewind that for 30 seconds. I didn't. Wait, uh, that was just a note to the viewers because that was a good point. Thank you. Um, Rob, no, no, I want Rob to respond and then we can wrap this conversation up. But not to hurry you off or anything, but I just, there is always this caution about we just remember the system and I'm like, I know, and apparently women, most women know, but we need to be telling men to know, stop fighting us and go fight the system. That, that's where I agree. I think that what we see a lot from the uh, manosphere is the talking points that they've adapted, is, or adopted, I should say, is where they, it seems like they're blaming Black women for things that they don't really have control over. Um, 
and I, I have an issue with that, which is why I say like there's a strong conservative thread that goes on over there where they said if black women would just do A, B, C, D, and E, then the black community would be fixed. Not considering that all of the lever, uh, the levers of power that black people would need in order to sustain a community, black women don't control those. Black women don't have uh, factories for people to work in. They don't control water. They don't control land. They don't control resources. And even the idea of black people live in a matriarchal community. No, black people live in America and America is not a matriarchy. So how can you even say that? At most, you can say that black the black family is matrifocal, meaning that it's it's centered around the mother. But yeah. black women do not control societies. And I, I think do think this is a rhetorical point that is of some consequence. If we divide the larger culture from the subculture, i.e. the black culture being sub, smaller in quantity, um, not quality. But, I mean, we can argue that either too. Can, can but, I say... Oh, wait. No, no. So the idea that this is a patriarchy is actually super important. The broader culture is a patriarchy, means that a structure in the subculture that is a matriarchy runs up against tremendous challenges, which might explain why we are where we are. One could argue, right? Because the woman is not taken seriously if we believe in the sort of um, patriarchy that is being espoused generally. Um, but continue, go ahead. Someone said, Themis, I can't find most of your older videos. Oh, can I ask, Rob, are you sure that the Menosphere don't have control over it? Or is it that they do have control, but they just don't want to do anything about it? Because I feel like they know what to do. But the thing is, if they have to reflect on it, it just means that they're a the problem. They don't want to be told they're the problem. They have so much high ego and an inferiority complex already. They need to switch the blame on someone, which is black women. So is it that they don't have control over it or is it that they do have control, but they just don't want to man up and do anything about it? No, I don't think that they have, they understand the issue. At all. You still have a, uh, many of those people talking about the majority of black men are middle class. But as soon as you start asking them, you know, probing deep, deeper questions. OK, so what is the floor for middle class? The floor for middle class is closest to 20, um, twenty thousand dollars or something like that. Um, I was reading an article where they said that the, the, the middle class is considered 20,000 to like 125,000. But any rational person could, would be able to hear that and say somebody who's making $20,000 is living a very different life from somebody who's making even $100,000, let alone 125,000. And the fact that they, they run with that point and try to progress it tells me that, no, you don't understand what black people look like on paper, at least not the wealth position. You don't understand. And so you're fighting the wrong fight. You're, you're, you're setting up uh, black women to be made your enemy because you don't understand the fight. You don't, you don't, you don't understand the fight. You don't understand where to go to have the fight. You, you don't even understand who your um, quote unquote enemy is. Because you've been fed, uh, force fed, or I wouldn't even say force fed, you've been fed such bad talking points. And because you do feel a level of oppression and you look to your side and see, okay, Black women have oppression. It's gendered differently. I, I, I will say that. But Black women, you know, they go through a, a lot of, of, of oppression that is women gendered. So st something like when you look at... um the mortality rates for women who have children. Black men don't necessarily see that because that's not necessarily something that we have to deal with, or maybe it's something that we should be dealing with considering that, you know, black women are having black men's babies and the fact that they, black men don't consider that, that's an issue, right? So I would definitely hear that argument, but because black men don't deal with it directly, it's something- What about the domestic abuse? The, the like, you know, domestic well, violence? You guys deal with everything that we deal with on like the same exact level that we deal with it on. But I think there's like a disassociation that you guys, you know, deal with that kind of tries to take you out of every situation that looks negative on on black men. It's like, oh, OK, let me take let me find a way to disassociate from this 
So that way I don't, I'm not a part of the situation. That's where you guys get the good guys and you try to differentiate from the educated lanes and the Pookie and Ray Rays, all of that. So uh, the responsibility still lies on the black men in every scenario you just mentioned. Uh, they know, I feel like they do know some of the time, they just don't care. Like a lot of times they, they really don't care. But also what you just said, I agree with about them. Like most of the time, the, the DV things, they're mostly the reason why. Some of them just don't care because they don't like many black women. And some of them just, like you said, I agree with, find a way to get themselves out, out the problem. But they should know, even if it's if they're just saying, oh, it's just the pookie, they do realize that it's still part of the black man, right? No, they don't realize that. Yeah. that that's why they disassociate, so they don't have to realize it which is what's really messing up our community. Rob, if you could summarize um, your stance, what would you say it is? Like, I feel like there is a critique and also a positioning. So can you do both in like a sentence each? I'll try. So I think the main part of my argument is one of agency. You have the responsibility that the citizen has to each other, so the responsibility we have to each other, and then the responsibility that we have to our communities, and then the responsibility that the community has to its citizens, if that makes sense. Did I set that up clearly? Yes. And so, we are the commute the the I mean the system is failing its responsibility to its citizen, particularly to black people, but the agency part, we are failing in our responsibility to the women in our community. Be you right, and, and, and not even just that, but I would take it a step further because we don't understand how the system is failing Black communities. Black men in particular lash out at Black women, <sighs> ah, right. and then they make them problem. the nexus. That's my problem. They make them the nexus for everything that is going wrong in the life. It's your fault. It's your fault. You did this. You did that. You did. And then it's like, no, if you want to take control of your communities, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to fight for it. Because right. this, I mean, the, the last group of people who fought for it in the 60s for the civil rights movement, many of them ended up taking bullets. So that fight isn't going to be pretty, but it's one that needs to happen. You have to take control of your communities. And I'll end it there. Gotcha. All right. LB, go ahead. Oh, was it LB? Yeah, LB, go ahead. You're muted, LB. I can, I can go ahead unless LB's ready. All right, go ahead. Okay, um, thanks. But who is that? Can you say your name? Yeah, um, a a lady, right in the middle. A lady. Oh, got to, got to, got to. Oh, thank you. Okay, great show. Um, I think what we need to do as women is to move on. We cannot wait for men to get their act together. Um, we just have to work collectively and move on. We have so many channels now that are talking about how men need to change and they're gonna to have to want it for themselves. We can't, we can't do it, we can't raise these men. So I think we really have to start maybe um, some of uh, our channels talking about what's the next step. And they have to counsel themselves. I'm hoping and praying that this attitude that we're seeing from young men and old men, unfortunately, online is a small uh, minority of black men. I'm hoping and praying that most men are not feeling this way and are involved in manosphere and use those as talking points. So I just want to say that. And then the other thing about redlining, I don't see how redlining had anything to do with uh, breaking up the black family or taking men out of the home. Um, in Michigan, redlining, it, what it did was it, it affected your insurance rates on your home and in th it affected your car insurance rates. So when they drew these really crazy uh, lines, if you were within a certain uh, area that was predominantly white, your auto insurance could be a quarter of what it would be for black people. So it was just another tool to uh, ba basically punish um, upwardly bound African-Americans but it did not have any effect. Well, let me just say, I can't say across the board it didn't, but it was just another economic issue. And that's all I wanted to say. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. Um, the education bit is the most important for me. When it comes to children, they didn't ask to be here, and so they, they need to have access. So that's, that, that's the one super um, progressive thing that I will always stand on. I mean, drop them kids off still. Love them, though. But um, I think school education is one of the most important things in contemporary society. And, re well, I mean, gentrification is the new thing. Um, also, one more thing before I leave. You're absolutely right. It's the children part. I mean, Black women, they are pumping up pumping us up full of babies and it's keeping us economically behind. So really please think about who you procreate with. And if you think you can do it all by yourself, be prepared to do it all by yourself. Um, don't wait on a man to, to, to do that for you because we can see like 70% of households, they're black are have black women who are heading them. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for letting me talk. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Mad Black. Well, I was going to say, too, that um, most single-headed households of women are not actually Black women. They're white women. But um, since we're a smaller population, we have the higher rate, so I get that. But um, I, like, I, I agree with you. Education is the forefront, I think, of all... <laughs> Educa well, I guess education might tie into morals, depending on how you define education. And I think our issue is that we see education and morals and logic and uh, this under understanding is separate is separate factors and it's not really separate it should be the same but i don't think that we understand that so we like even the dude that called in for most well, people called in talk about redlining and how you know the system the system like we escapism like accountability like we find a way there are racial issues there are racial issues we already know that but it's like a like you said before, we 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 milk we milk we milk the cow too long. We just sitting on that. This is what it is. This is what it is. Well, that's not only what it is. How is it that racism is such a big thing? White folks have been messed up. Other white folks, different nationalities and ethnicities. They're just that's how they are. Everybody. Why is it we're so like we can't get past white folks? So I don't, that's part. Of it. No, no. I mean, well, it's interesting because if you look at this from a class perspective, which someone did, they. I cannot publicly make the argument that I want to make because it will give away too much. But the fact that there are so many um, poor other races of people yeah. is not, I mean, it's a bad thing generally if you're morally good, um, which hopefully most of us are. Um, but that, that means that the underclass is full and you don't have to be there. Um, that's all I'm going to say. You read between the lines. I, I, I was going to say that, you know, my thing is that this this nation is built off of slavery, but we're not slaves anymore. So it means that we can benefit from our own ancestors' loss. Yeah. I mean, I wish the man would all come together and say reparations um, and go fight for reparations. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's literally something they can attach themselves to so that they can feel well, useful. Yeah. New plan: the BW, B, black women are going to be adulting while the men will be playing with their coloring books. <laughs> Move on. Thank you. Curry up and eat. Um, wait, mad black. Mad. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear me? Ah, I keep thinking this is gonna be a man that's gonna argue with me. <laughs> So sorry. No, no, no. Don't <laughs> apologize for not being a man. <laughs> He had a man. He, he, he dropped off because he couldn't uh, combat C CNG. So he all of a sudden, his audio don't work no more. So yeah, you had a dude that, but yeah, he might come up here like that. If we, oh if we, if we drop down, he might come up. Man, if we all drop down, they might come up. No, nah, y'all drop down. <laughs> kidding. No, no, no. You're fine. No, no, no. I like this level of discourse. So like, uh, let's stay right where it is for now. I don't, okay. my head is not ready to hurt. Okay. I just wanted to say, um, as far as, um, like steps that need to be taken. I think that was the question that you had asked. Am yeah. I correct? Like that, like, what do we need to do now? So that's sort of the gist of the conversation as far as I understood. Um, and my point uh, I wanted to make about that is just that, um, you know, black women, I think we are kind of like, we are the community. Like mm -hmm. we are the ones that have been maintaining the community. So it's kind of up to us. Um, to make choices for the community that are going to help the community 
And I think that a part of that is going to be obviously to have those standards that will cause us to choose, um, you know, um, partners to partner with people that are going to help us, whoever they are, like whatever their race is going to be. Um, and I think that is going to help the community. If you want to think of like a, uh, think of black people as a singular community, I think we have to kind of take black men out of it in a way. Um, yeah. And I, I think um, also that as far as redlining and like um, property maintenance, um, I work in utilities and it really is a real thing that um, certain services, like, so the way that communities are based off of infrastructure and that those infrastructures are delivered through public services that are regulated by the government. And it's true that like, in if you are in a certain zip code, this the way that the service is delivered to you, it may be better based on you living in that zip code why because the people that live in that zip code they are more connected with their local political leadership they are not overworked they have the time and the access to use the agency that people in maybe single family household communities don't have the time to access because they're so overworked so i think that's something that we have to be serious about you know as black women in the who are the community that there is a unsexy part of this work if we are really talking about re-stabilizing the community like there is an unsexy part of it that's not going to be on youtube that's going to be like us us doing a lot of footwork behind the scenes and i think my last point um if we take some of the examples from Asian communities and how they kind of do things, even though I, there's, there's not a direct comparison, of course. Um, but I think that we can learn from some of the ways that they uh, structure their community in order to um, make progress. Yeah. Yes. Move on from B- BM, Black men. Best advice from my dad was a man doesn't need a woman's help. He can figure it out. If a man asks you to help him find something, run, fix something, run, help him finish. <laughs> uh, I want to apologize yeah. speaking on <laughs> redlining because I did went a little bit further than I thought it would be because we're still talking from redlining from a 22 perfect, 2022 perspective to 1960s. It's not, it's not interchangeable. So, you, but yeah, I know you yeah. talked about uh, Morningham before, and everybody's focused on redlining and still speaking from it from the 22, 2022 perspective versus the 1960s, not the same one. But yeah. um, the the last the, the the woman when she said that um, the last woman that spoke said uh, we need the black community, and then mentioned you know di- basically divesting, and I think that's not interchangeable either. If you divest, then you're not thinking about the black community. Because I do think that when it comes to a community, it needs to be a, a collective mindset, like you know. And she said age, she mentioned age community it means Asian men, Asian women come together, community. If black women and white men or white men, I'm sorry, well, black men and white women, not, not community aspect. So divest from the community. I, I'll give you that. Divest from the idea of, of saving people you can't save. But I don't want people to think that, you know, getting interracially dating means community, correlates with community. It doesn't. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't correlate with community. Black women, you go to a white man, do what you do, but it's no longer community aspect, which is not that, that that's part that I think that keeps you from in putting yourself in a situation where you're not thinking about yourself first. The vest from the community aspect, the vest for the responsibility of carrying everybody and think about you, put you first, which doesn't mean you carry everybody. So it's not the same thing. So not interchangeable. Put you yeah. first means not community, it means you. Outside the context of the word divest, I will say, and this is not advice, but I will say that the I, I think part of why Black women, or not just Black women, any person who makes every decision they, they're thinking about making a political decision with thinking about the political consequence and the reverberation of their um, decisions out in their quote-unquote community is going to have a very hard life. <laughs> just as a general matter. Well, that's a, that should not be political at all. That should be more of your moral... 
uh, perception of everything for how, but, but it was better for you. So I, I, political and divestment should not go together at all. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you that do, people think divestment in different ways. It is what it is, but put you first, make sure you're healthy, make sure you're okay, make sure you're moving forward best for you. But you say community mm. that takes away the you part. It takes about, it makes you carry other people. And I'm queen, the people. Queen, queen, do, moderators, I'm not, I don't actually mean this, but Queen is in timeout. <laughs> queen is in timeout for this comment. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I I just think that we respond. should be divesting from the culture, not from the community. I feel like the biggest issue we're dealing with right now is black culture. Um, and, you know, what we're what we kind of base our community off of. So not necessarily the community. I can date I can date a white man or a Hispanic man because he does the things I need a man to do around the house and still be invested in changing the black culture as a whole within America, like with black culture in America. You know what I mean? Because my children will not be completely black, but they will have black in them, which would mean that they would have a little bit of black culture. They'll be raised with a little bit of black culture. And the biggest issue that we have is the culture, which to me is like hip hop and, you know, baby daddies, baby mamas, marrying football players and stuff like that, toxic relationships. There's a lot of things within the black American culture that I mean, could be. Guys, I don't equate divestment. To wait, wait, Amara, I actually kind of, I like agree. And the culture is just bad when T.I., who is the culture in some ways, the, the hip hop culture, when his child born in extraordinarily amount of wealth and richness, like financially, that is, to, to be that well off and that, I don't want to use the word degenerate, sorry, um, and, and to be what he is, is ridiculous to me. Like, I don't understand how you can have, so sometimes I'm wondering if like wealth, if Access to resource might not be the problem. Like, I, I do think there is a deep-seated problem with the culture. I agree. And yeah. I I think, like, I wasn't really saying, like, diverse, because I, I agree that there's different definitions. But I think the, so I, I see what, Sunny, I think, sorry. Um, I see what you're saying about, like, not carrying everybody because, like we are burned out from that. Like we need to be more collective and each one, like, you know, many, many hands make light work. I think that our understanding of what a community is and how it's structured, it needs to be updated so that there's not, so that we don't have too many heroes and saviors who are being burned out. Um, but also, um, community is still important because we're still human. We're still women. Like we still deserve the right to have up to be partnered with somebody that's going to help us. Um, the, and the, I think that that means that in a lot of cases, you're going to have to open up your options. And, and I think we need to be okay with that. That's going to be a part of our taking care of ourselves as women. Um, I, but, wait, wait. I think I, I'm i fearful um, because the need for a community, I, they, interestingly, divestment swirling, all of it happening online, won't actually have a broader impact, I don't believe, at least in the short term on women, because I don't, it, a statement you just said, taken out of context, and so not yours, but it's going to be, Black women are not leaving. And because of that, I mean, I don't think it's fear that you have to leave as an incentive, but incentive for, for male change that put too much responsibility on women. But the reality is like, we are in a culture where it feels as if black men can do no wrong. Every attempt to speak on the issues that we face is bashing. Um, everyone is crying and whining and mad about the conversation because men don't want to take, like, if you look at all the stats, like, when we talk about going to school, jobs, income, care, like, even movement for 
political and economic change all the led by women. The new, the, the new Jim Crow was a book written about how prison um, and policing disproportionately affects black men, written by a black woman. Well, I don't know if she's Well, black, yeah, she was, I think she was biracial, yeah. Michelle Alexander. Yeah. Um, so to some extent, it, it's like the, the, a lot of the work is being done by, by women. And at what point do we say, okay, man, let's do it. Like, I am here at great risk to myself, just an FYI. It's fine. It's the least I can do. But it, it's interesting for me to see people unable to take accountability. Like it's so like it is one of the most interesting that I think thing that I've seen online where it's like, we are the men. And then you find them and they're like, men need to speak. And then you give them the microphone and it's degeneracy. It is women ought to be blamed. I have no responsibility. Single motherhood is created by women. Like it's just this very specific talking point that is being echoed over and over and over. And it's the one that says, I don't want responsibility and or accountability. Because they're still in their mother's home. Yeah. I think there is a deep pathology. And I think women have to do what's right for them and their children because we're the ones carrying the community and ultimately it is going to be for now allowing men to have the space they need to be men and like figure it out because like like you're saying i think it's been too much of us women picking up the slack and it's it's created a huge imbalance i'm gonna uh, mute myself now all right. Oh, that was you. Yeah, they're yeah. I was gonna say, what what is that? Is that? I don't know oh, who that is. But whoever oh, that is, you probably won't get because that is a lot. <laughs> that is, but that is a lot. The Seamus, uh, do you think it's better for us to divest, you know, instead of trying to say divest from uh black culture? How about we divest from the degenerate part of the black culture? Because well, I don't at the end of the day, even different. if men and women divest, you the women, black women, even if they even if all black women didn't deal with black men and just separated themselves from it, right? It will still be a group of black women. They still have that in common. So I don't think the culture should be, you know, just totally be tossed away, just the the degenerate part. I mean, I, I don't think women need to be a part of this conversation about how to improve. And the reason I don't think that is because um, they've done, they've been doing more than enough. Everything. And because think... of that, whatever they choose to do, divest, not divest, be here, fight, whatever they choose to do, they can do it. I think we have dropped the ball tremendously. Like, how do we make education and trade school because like formal education is not for everyone and i think because i i care about it so much it might come off as if that's what i'm that's the only thing i'm pushing i promise you that is not but how do we make those jobs sexy and the reason i'm asking is i actually believe in the capacity of black men if you this is going to sound like a drag. Actually, let me try to reframe it because it's going to sound like a drag and I promise you I'm not trying to. But I heard it in my head. So let me reframe. If you can spend your life attempting to be a rapper, doing all that work to be a rapper, I promise you it's easier to be in med school. I promise you it's easier to be in law school. Now, is it going to be difficult? Yes. Will you hate it? Probably but I promise you, the way I've heard about people hustling to be rappers and like living and learning and practicing the art as if being good is going to get you anywhere in hip hop. Like Kodak Black is a rapper. I don't care who Kodak Black is. Who is that off mute? Whoever it is, there is an echo. If you're coming off mute, mute us in the background so you can talk. I don't mind you interrupting sometimes, but like the 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 feedback is going to be a problem. So the fact that Kodak Black is a rapper and Blueface or whatever his name, Red, Green, I don't care. The fact that they are rappers imply that it's not about skill. 
Young Miami is a rapper. Like, it is not a bad skill. I'm sorry, I had to drive her in because I'm very disturbed. Cardi B is a rapper. It is not about your ability to rap. Like, get it out of your head. But there are people, and I've listened to... <laughs> Just this weekend, actually. Um, I've listened to people and I've li seen wordplay that I could not come up with myself. The fact that you have gone through some level of education to be good at your art is amazing to me. And the fact that there are people like we. Y'all are talented as like it's talent that I don't even understand. I think if you tried for a year or two and then you went to law school, I promise you law school is easier. I promise you that much. And yeah. The the and the majority of them will make it. So we should go to law school, Themis? No. <laughs> um, no, I'm not, it's not even law school. Like, what the, the bigger picture is that... Education. I, not even just education. I wish there were the jobs that you don't want to do because it's not sexy we're seen more, more like we're seen as accessible because the way in which you guys sacrifice to go for your dream i wish you guys could put that into something practical and this idea that the, the millennial approach to oh i just want to and gen z is going to destroy it i think but in a bad way that, oh, go after what you want, and if it doesn't make you happy, disregard it and go for happiness. I find that to be all sort of BS. You, there are times when you have to make practical decisions, and you just have to. Like, yes, you have your dream, and yes, you want to write, and yes, you want to rap, or whatever. Do that on the side. Figure out a way to do it on the side. I was going to say, there's like... The motivation, I was going to say the motivation in those jobs, like, I don't see, you know, the law, et cetera, being pushed. I agree. Um, I agree. Um, that is, is. Please, just Please, turn me turn off. Turn me off. I don't know how. Don't know how. Who, is Who is this? All right. Uh, I'm done. I think <laughs> it might be the box of corner. All right. No? Um. It, 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 it's really difficult to hear through that. Um, El, who was talking? Go ahead. Oh, I just kind of think it might be the black square in the left corner, but I don't think so because somebody left and it went away. Um, All right. I'm sorry. If there's too much background noise, please let me know and then I'll move. Um, no, you're fine. But one thing, okay, so I do have an answer to your question. Um, however, I can't share it online, how to make um, those programs sexy. That's actually part of my business plan. I'll show it to you later, but I can't expose that. Um, <laughs> but I actually have plans for that. And I think that part of it, like just a little part of it is figuring out what attracts people to those jobs and then showing people how they can access that same end by different means that's more practical and um, long, like that's, that has longevity. I was trying to think of the right word. It was slipping my mind. I only think when I'm getting paid to think. <laughs> um, no, so um, another thing is I wanted to say, because I work in education, I see the test scores and stuff. I think we're like missing something major. Um, most of the little black boys can't read and write and do math, like basic math. Like, and I'm not trying to like, like to, no, the, no, 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 it is true. But it's, it's very true. difficult. It's very difficult to read and write and, and learn when you don't have food, um, when mm. you don't have structure, when you don't have the kinds of resources that every other group have. And so, yeah, I mean, I, it's not surprising. Oh, like, I know that. Yeah, In that but, case, I wonder why the Black girls aren't as bad because we're coming from the same households as the men. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not, that, that is not a comparison. I think that the drive... I'm confused. I, I don't know who that is, but I, I literally can't talk to her. Right? Can I um, complete my thought? Go ahead. No, when you're done. like It was just like we were responding to half of my thought. No, I think Black people are at a distinct 
this uh, black kid. Grown people I don't care about. <laughs> I mean, I do, but at some point, we, we got to get therapy and fix it. But children being born into areas, boys and girls, and I think someone made the comment um, in the fact, I'm not comparing black boys to black girls. Let's be clear. If black girls are doing well, it is not because they have a leg up. It's because they're working hard. Black boys in the same situation seem to be diverging from what they should do into what the culture demands. That culture seems to demand you to be tough and thug-like, hip-hop culture, that is. And so I am, I am not surprised at Black boys' outcome, honestly. I'm very surprised <laughs> at Black girls' outcome. I'm surprised at the young women who are willing are able to not pedestalize whiteness, right? Because every media tells you that whiteness is what you should get. Yet women still, black women still prefer black men. I, I, I don't know why, but fine. Um, as it relates to going out in the streets and doing all that stuff, the hip hop culture has a female version, yet women are still attempting to go to college. In fact, some of the most of my black attorney friends are women. Essentially, all of them are women. And there is this literal double, like I didn't, what you see with me is what you get. But my friends <laughs> are able to navigate two very different worlds. Like I would I was dragged to Texas this weekend and I have never seen the kind of uh, just the <laughs> fun degeneracy that I've seen in my life. Like, <laughs> just, which part of Texas? Houston. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> it was a mess. But what do you like, mean by double double life? Like, I'm sorry. It's like I love a good hood jam, but you yeah, know. no, no, yes, <laughs> they 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 had all of that but they were, came back and were some of the smartest people. These okay. attorneys are some of the smartest attorneys I know. And I was very surprised when I was in Houston seeing them act up in the streets. And then we come back and I'm like, wait, this is actually quite amazing. Like, so... That's the Cold switching. That every single black woman I black know woman. is the same mm -hmm. exact thing. I'm the same. Every single black woman I know is the same exact thing. When I'm out, I'm twerking my asses on the floor. And then when I'm at work, I'm at work. And the, the two things exist at different times. And I, I, it's like, where, why is there not capacity to do that as well? But also, now that I say that out loud, I feel like what's encouraged for the, I guess, like degeneracy of black women is something in a way you can like separate your like I don't know you can kind of touch and go with it right like we encourage okay go shake your ass on the floor okay go talk to that guy okay whatever and of course there can be consequences to those actions depending on what you do but I think that what's encouraged for black men versus what's encouraged for black women I feel like there are higher consequences like death um and not to say that there aren't that consequence for black men and I, I'm, I'm speaking very, very generally, right no, now. No, no, no. Actually, kind of I, I get what you're saying, but that's not true. Black yeah, men not. are killing black men at a very, uh, at a disproportionately high rate. But I do take your point. It is one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced in my entire life. Because there is this notion that once we become corporate, kind of like, I don't know if it's a notion or just my assumption, um, I would watch. Um, people, and I just assume the way you show up is always the way you show up. I don't have the capacity to code switch. What do you, I was in there with a button up and I had to like, <laughs> I had to change um, because the, the, the guys were cool or whatever, but like we were talking, there was no differential treatment for anyone. It was, the, it was a good degenerate mess. <laughs> it's but, it's similar to how I can go from rapping about one thing and then talking about political things. I think it's just something that black women ha are, have to do in order to make it. And that's why we have made it so far is because we realize that that is like a, a cheat code to make it through life, the code switching. Wait, and can so men not do this? 
I feel like there's a there's a stigma with men against men who kind of like give men who are doing the right thing the the title of simp or loser, but that has nothing to do with black women. Like black men will call other black men who have a degree or who um you know are just doing good in the community losers instead of uplifting them the way black women uplift women who have their degree and then still want to go twerk at night. It's just I agree. Uh, it's their I was gonna say like all this has to do with motivation and the fact that like competition is involved with motivation because black women have a reason to do it and and black, um, on the other side there's no reason to because there's no competition offered. I was going to y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about though. I don't no, know. If no, it's, I mean, like, someone just point out the boy. Um, I, I do know this. The, I understand this idea. I just never, I've never seen it that up close. This, like, I never, think it's really interesting also because co- in corporate culture, um, the, the, the bravado or the swag, you know, that, that is identified in pop culture that comes from black men, it's generally acceptable in corporate. Like you'll hear a little catchphrases like you'll see them fist bump in corporate you'll hear them say things like cash money rules everything around me you know and fight you'll hear them talk like this but i hear you saying that black men can't code switch or well, it's not as know. acceptable or I, yeah i i hear it kind of being brought up and i find that really interesting I mean, to be clear, I learned the word period online. I learned the word period, and I've said it in meetings. Um, and, <laughs> and everyone looked at me like I was crazy. Um, and I was like, oh, no, I'm just verbally punctuating the sentence. But I, <laughs> I, I am saying from my perspective, I don't know how to code switch. Um, but I, I think it's, sorry, we are on a tangent. But I think, Wait, what's code switching? Is that like I can get to it one morning and educated the next? Is that what it is? It's not adapting to it. More or less, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily twerk, or but I, I kind of feel like it, it is sort of that sort of yeah. You, you can get a little ratchet, but then you can turn back around and put your job interview voice back on. That's what I don't LB was exactly right. Knowing your environment and my idea of divestment. You you do what's best for you in, in, in your situation. Like you don't twerk at the job, you do it on your weekends off. Why twerk, twerk at all? Right. Why twerk? Why chick can call it a day, but no, to me it means do what's best for you in your situation, depending on what it is. So it's better for you to, to act a certain way in certain situations, do what that's do what's best for you. To me divest it means do what's best for you, period. Not get and then do with dating, do what's best for you. So yeah, you can go be professional in the office and go to work on the weekends. You divest it means do the best for you in a certain situation. That's why I see divestment. Is. It's interesting. I like. I, I'm going to end the code switching conversation here, and then we go to Obi. But here's the thing. Wait, um, Demis, I can think, I make the point that I was trying to make earlier? After. Yeah, I think okay. the problem. So there is hopefully a different when we thought, think about double consciousness and code switching. I think hopefully there is a difference about someone is not on mute um, and there's a little bit of feedback. Um, I hope there is a distinction being made about what, who, not just what, because twerking obviously as in the job is, should not be acceptable, but who shows up and what is acceptable. And I hope that it is not a matter of I am not acceptable and so I have to conform. Rather, you can show up being fully who you are outside of the ratchet stuff, right? Like, that's fine. Um, and be fully accepted for who you are or make people uncomfortable with who you are and not care. <laughs> um, so I do hope that there isn't a distortion of one's identity in the workplace because if you're code switching to change and conform too much, then I worry that imposter syndrome may kick in and things like that. But that is something that I need to get into. um, I need to think about more broadly. However, the, the ability to go from one of the smartest people I know 
to literally twerking on the floor is one of the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but she's still the smartest person twerking, though. She's yeah. still the smartest person. She just twerking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those two people, yeah. the fact that those two people are actually one is very important to me. And it is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So not just twerking, but the fact that you cannot discount who this person is by this action. Loved every minute of it. <laughs> Someone said versatility. To I can't with you. Go ahead, LB, finish your thought and then OB, and then we'll start wrapping up. Okay. Um, what you just described as like an amazing thing that you witnessed is actually something I've witnessed my entire life, like seeing the two sides of people. So yeah, it is a beautiful thing. But what I was trying to say earlier was with the black boys not being able to read and write, I wasn't trying to say like black boys can't read and write, so feel bad for them, blah, blah, whatever. Um, what I was trying to say is that um, with them having lower readings levels and comprehension skills, why are we even trying to have this conversation with them when we already know that they are not on the level to have a base conversation? Like, it's one thing to talk to an educated Black man, and I'm not even talking about higher education. I'm talking about, like, graduated high school. Like, it's one thing to talk to someone who's been able to show basic reading, writing, comprehension skills, and then it's another thing to, like, try to talk to someone with no comprehension skills but hold them to the standard of somebody who's been through high school, college, or whatever. Um, and I'm not saying that that takes away accountability because at some point you're an adult, like, figure your shit out. But also, like, what like I'm not gonna go blue in my face trying to talk to some dumbass that comes on here because they don't have basic skills. I could see they don't have basic skills. So like, what are we doing here? That's like my, that was the main point I made. So like, I see like women going in, like, and women and men too, like, cause you're here. But like, I see people going in circles trying to rationalize with irrational people that don't have the skills to converse. So either go there and help them and give them their skills or leave them where they're at and let them find their skills. But like, why are we sitting here doing this? Like, I, that's just me personally. And I know this is your channel. You can do whatever you want. Um, and I'm not telling anybody not to do it. But also, like, I'm just sharing, like, the frustration that I feel as I watch this and witness it happen. Um, yeah. One I think of that I don't do, hopefully, is... is make women have to talk to, to men, particularly men that they don't want to talk to. But I take your point. Obi? Hello, Simis. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? You've been so patient. I apologize. I should have come. Doing great. I'm always safe for last, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, this is a good topic because um, I've heard about this Moynihan report like a few years ago. And when I skimmed through it, it shocked me how men would actually present this as any kind of defense for them. Like, I thought it was like something was wrong with my thinking because like it didn't, it makes men, look, black men look incredibly horrible. It makes us look weak and incompetent. I'm like, so why are these people mentioning this over and over? People that were using it like a Bible. And I didn't understand why people would use such a damning report on black men to kind of switch it over and blame it on black women. I did not get the, the, um, the, the logic behind it, then... Oh, wait, wait, the pause, pause. The yeah. logic was, I don't know the logic, but if any of them read it, well, they didn't read it. But if they did, I can assume that the logic was, they said matriarchy. So women, that's the problem. Not realizing if it is a matriarchy, that meant that you have failed to lead. Continue. Yeah, I, I think... Yeah. The desperation for victimhood because once you let go, of that ah, I, wait, 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 I love That's that phrase. It. That one right there. I need that phrase. Wait, can someone, I don't know, text it to me Des or message it to me? The desperation for victimhood. Yeah. That period. Oppression Olympics. Yeah, once you let go of that mm -hmm. desperation for victimhood, all you have is accountability. And that is a very scary thing for most of these people. Yeah. That That is what I found out because, like, I've, I've had conversations with them and you see like they know they're not making any points, but once they let go of this victimhood, they'll be left with accountability and they will, there won't be anybody else to blame. For them to be alive, they need to blame black women. 
they need to bl bl they blame black women to just keep doing this thing. And another thing I need to say about this whole accountability thing is leadership cannot be separated from accountability. If you want 100% leadership, you have to take 100% accountability. The less accountability you're willing to take, the less leadership you should take. So if you if you want to be leaders as men, this is 2022, not 1960. I don't know why we're so obsessed about like the, the past, the Black Wall Street and the civil rights movement. It's 2022. We are here. We are taking over the failed company. And when a, a leader takes over a failed company, he doesn't cry about what they did in 1960. He assesses the mess. He takes on all liability and assets and fixes it. So if we want to be leaders, we need to take leadership, take full accountability, including what the women have done under our watch and the children. Do we have mm -hmm. to own all the liabilities and assets for us to be considered any leadership? If we want the women to be accountable for anything, then let them be leaders. They've already said, like when people say we're in a matriarch, it was like, you're actually saying that women are ruling you. What kind of an alpha male, uh, alpha male are you to be comfortable to repeat such a weak statement? Look, let's stop. <laughs> Just that moment right there deserve a round of applaud. Everybody, so wow. in the matriarchy is saying that women are ruling you. <laughs> that is capitulate, capitulating yeah. to woman rulerhood. Like somehow as an alpha male, somehow a woman came over and took over leadership from you. And you're yeah. asking them to let you lead. That is a weak make. That is a weak movement. Like that, that it it literally makes no sense. It, it doesn't. The whole, the whole thing makes no sense. A theme is: Can I? Can I use a scenario? Um, there's people who will talk about how and where they're going to live when they're millionaires, and they've never even had $20,000 to their name. They don't even understand the lifestyle or what it would take to ever become a millionaire, but they're talking about how millionaires should live or how they're going to live when they're a millionaire. So in this same situation, when, when the opportunity presents itself, you don't see them taking on the role that they should be taking. You know what I mean? Because they don't know. No, they don't I know what have, you mean. I... They don't have any guidance. They don't have any, you know, structure of their own. So they don't know how to be leaders of a community. And, and then on top of that, it's hard to tell them that what they're doing is wrong. And it's hard for them to follow other men. So it's like, what, how, how can you gather men in a community that thinks like that? You know what I mean? You don't know how to be providers. You don't know how to be protectors. But you want to be respected as if you are a provider and a, protect, a protector. It just doesn't make any sense. Let the man govern the man and let the woman govern the woman. Point blank. I was going to say that. I think that. All right. I think that. Wait, wait, wait. words of poet. Uh, wait, wait. Kadash, sorry. Our words of poet. It's one of you. <laughs> it is one of you that um, is having the thing in the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. I was going to say that. Um, I was going to say that I noticed that it's not that they want to be providers or protectors. I feel like it's that they want the original thing that they've been fighting for ever since down the time, which is being friends with white men. Uh, because, like, you know, if if it comes down to them be like, well, it's not my fault. Uh, my women did this and this and that. They want um sympathy. For the for white men, I feel like that's the whole thing. Originally, they're creating excuses so they could have friends with white men and you know leave black women to dust. But the thing is, well, then you don't want equality, right? Because if, if I have if if I am looking down on you and, and being like sympathetic, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry for you. At that point, you are less than me. Like you, you, you're not a leader in that way. So it 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 frustrates me because I'm in the group, and while I don't care about your masculinity, I'm also don't I don't want to be seen as weak. So like <laughs> this idea that oh my god we're in a we're in a matriarchy. No, no, uh, the patriarchy is failing, but that's what we're in. And because some random man wrote in a report that it's a matriarchy, it doesn't mean that. And if you accept that it means that, it means that you're in a community that is being led by women while you're in that community. Again, you are in that community 
as a matriarchy, you have decided to let women lead it. Or even if you don't decide, women were strong enough and more powerful enough to lead it. Um, Y'all put some hearts in the chat for OB. LOL, I'm such a... Uh, wait, what? Is my mic better now? Or it's still making noise? Oh, it's, it's better. better. Okay. It's good? Yeah, I changed location. Yeah. This is what wait, I think. Wait, before, I think... You speak, before you speak, stop. Okay. Right. Dean, maybe it's time for you to redeem yourself. If you can do something redeeming tonight, that would be great. Go ahead. Words of oh, words yes. Words. Yeah, I was saying that. I just think that how, you know what I'm saying, the man, like how it was in the old days, the men should govern the men. I don't think a woman should tell a man what to do and how he should do it. And I don't think men should tell women what to do and how she should do it. I think when I a woman for sure... I disagree. I think men, black women should tell yeah. black men how to, how, how to do it. Because That's the only way it'll work. Mm, wait, 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 wait. Back up. That's the only way how, what I, would work. No, 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 no. I'm being facetious, but apparently we don't know how to do it by ourselves. But continue. Oh, facetious. Okay, it's being facetious. No problem. But no, I understand what you're saying. We're not, we're not holding up. We drop the ball, like you say, right? We drop the ball. <laughs> But I, and that's where we drop the ball again, too. The fact that other men is not pulling out the other men. Like how everybody call Russell, the guy Russell, a simp for marrying Sierra. And the guy's a good father, making money, love his wife and stuff. And that shit, I thought that shit was crazy when I saw like dudes making fun of that dude for like taking up the mantle and doing it. And I, and, and what the lady said, young lady said before was right that how if, you know, we need to, um, you know, Tell them, let, let them know. Hey, this is this is how it go. You can't be, um, you know, what I'm saying you you gotta you gotta some find some middle ground. You definitely gotta find some middle ground because mm -hmm. we definitely need. You know, we can't keep doing this. What we gonna keep doing? We are gonna keep doing this shit or or till to life till we dead. You know, it gotta be something where we gotta come to and and we gotta you know. And I do believe that yes, a man could tell a woman something and a woman can tell a man something. But as far as like you know, making sure and, and sending the the, the 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 structure and the foundation, the, the, the we should do that. Men men for men, when woman for woman, and like there's a middle ground. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, Someone, <laughs> wait, let, segregation. <laughs> let the king's cosplay leader go. Curry up and eat. Go in the corner. <laughs> go in the corner. <laughs> You're in timeout. You're absolutely in timeout. <laughs> We're not... <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I think the imbalance is that um, somebody said earlier that you know you should speak on issues that you're a part of, but then if you blame black women for everything, then aren't we a part of the entire the entire conversation? And, and when you say you know somebody, I can't remember who said earlier. You know, women speak on women, women issues. Men speak on men issues. Talk of conversations you're a part of. Well, women saying we're holding ourselves accountable. Do this, do that. But men also saying this is your fault too. Well, now we're, we're part of your conversation too. You're making the whole thing about us. But if you take us out of it, you have to hold yourself accountable. And they can't do that. You can't say, talk about our own issues, but then make us part of all the issues too with you. So take us mm -hmm. out of it. Now it lands on you. And they can't seem to do that. Like women have been blaming ourselves for everything. And then men blame us too. So we can't say, you know, hold each other, hold, hold your own people accountable when you won't get, get our name out your mouth. Hold men accountable, get, get, get our name out your mouth. We won't go over there. Say men are doing this. You're right. We, I, we're done with the conversation. But you, most men are saying, well, everything's wrong. Issue with men is women's fault. Well, now we're part of the conversation. Now we got to come in and, and speak our mind and say our, our stance because you made us part of the conversation. So I think it's very weird when uh, some men say, you know, you women, women tell men what to do. Well, you you brought us into it. Leave us out of it. Leave us out of it. We won't be in it. But then they can't leave us out of it. Leave us out of it means it's your We all talk about it's each you. other. The women do it to the men and the men do it to the woman. Ain't no, ain't no one side business. Let yeah, but it makes sense coming from one that. No, this is not true. This is actually not true. I wish it were, um, and people are blaming each other, that women, by and large, take full responsibility for the... I don't know why. I really don't know why. But, they, they, like, women will go do these self-help books and clubs, and even while talking about... Um, the issues in the community will be learning about femininity and how to be more feminine and all of that stuff. And it's like, at some point you have to realize that no matter how much you improve yourself, that doesn't change the other person. It is a very recent occurrence where women are 
able to communicate effectively about their grievances with black men. In fact, one of the panels I've had was for black men to come up and tell me what women should be held accountable for. And they failed. Now, the one thing that came out of it is single motherhood. And a black a man telling me that women should be accountable for a single motherhood is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. Yeah, I've heard that one too. It is not the woman's fault that she's a single mother unless she literally physically prevented you from being a father. Um, so for me, it, it's I don't believe it. Men have been talking about, oh, we have not had a voice, and this is why the ministry is important. I'm like, okay, period, here's your mic. What do you talk about? Absolutely nothing. So it, it no, mm -mm. no, I don't think it's I don't think there is even an argument on the other side. Um, and by the other side, I mean the black man's side, as it relates to black women. Black men's problem is with the system. Uh, that's who you need to fight. Who you need to compete with is outside of the black community, so go compete with those people. It is not the black women actually holding up the community. That's not who you need to fight. I so, agree. Um, men, right, I agree. Fight, I agree with that men too. fight other men for territory, right? Men compete with other men for territory. When you fight and win territory, you secure it and you keep it. I think a lot of men don't believe America is a, that it, they can build a successful community in America, so they don't care to take um, responsibility for the territory territory they conquer. People, we, we, I think we've been forced or we've conditioned ourselves to be uh, more like individualistic and not care about the community. But like the world is con gonna continue to treat us as a community. It is not going to change. That's why I don't have the liberty of abandoning community mindedness because my son is going to live in that community too. And I care about his well being. So that is why I do the things that I do to make sure that my son is better, much better than I am. And I, I network with other fa black fathers that are around me. We take turns reading to the kids, making sure that they're way above eight, 10th grade, whatever it is that they need to be at. But we cannot abandon community mindedness. If you're a man, and I see the men are burning with an instinct to lead, which I think is natural. But I don't think a penis gives you a mantle of leadership. With that burning to become a leader, you need to take on the skills of leadership. And the men are not there in the home to teach the men leadership. That's why we have generations of failed men. We have to take responsibility for the boys because only us can actually teach this man how to be disciplined, how to have a and all of those things. We cannot leave it up to women and point at them and say, they nope. failed. That is not going to work. You can, you, you're gonna be on the only person that believes that. Everybody else will not believe that they will, be, they, all they will know is that your, your women actually outsmart you and beat you. So why would any other race of men respect you when you are crying that your women have defeated you? <laughs> Fear, period. One Obi. point of correction can from I, me I, is that I don't think there is a burning desire to um, to lead. I think there is a burning desire to have power. And because I think intrinsic in leadership is accountability. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't think any of them want it. <laughs> I don't um, really want it. But I, yeah. I, they need to learn how to sacrifice. I feel like what Black women do a lot is sacrifice. Like, Getting our education and having kids and still raising the kids, but still going to get your education but while being a single mother and all of those different things that are just put onto black women's plate, like it's all sacrifice. I just feel like black men need to learn how to control their urges and sacrifice their time. Like there's no nobility there. It's like, oh, if I can't have sex with women in America, I'm just going to go to a different country and have sex there when they could just be like, oh, since I can't have sex in America, let me figure out how to improve this community that I'm in. It's like, I, I just don't feel like the mindset is there. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't realize how they're using American imperialism to further marginalize groups of people in different countries, but that's neither here nor there in terms of this discourse and the reason. You're right, and I would, but I made a video that I had to private um, on here because um, I, was, I was sounding the alarm too much, 
And I would prefer for them to put their degenerate behavior online to be caught. So I'm not going to tell them not. Even when this it's still the same situation where Wait, black men are not. Uh, um, I'm not sure if I'm delayed right now. You Is there a delay in speech? Right, yeah. I, I, Sunny, I think Sunny was speaking then. Yeah, there's oh, a really strange yeah. delay. Okay, I was just saying, even in this conversation right here, there's still a lack of accountability because to say that, well, women and men are doing it. So are women, uh, are you following women? Like, are women doing it and you following women's lead? Are men doing it? We're following your lead or the community of up? Even saying women and men are both doing it, why are they both doing it? Who's the leader? Because you're doing it too, we're following you, we're, we're following you, criticizing you, we, we follow you. But we're leading, you following us. Is that normal for you to is that normal for you to follow us? Or running them up, we're running them up, you're doing this, we're doing that. We don't we, we're not we're not you know connecting. Who's not leading that, you know, that that charge? So even conversation right here is still saying women are still equally accountable for our, our issues, but we don't like feminism. But I just like think it's I just think that when it comes to a lot of I was talking about community earlier. When I think community, I don't think like literally in next to black folks. Because even though black people live larger next to other black people, you can live you can live outside of black areas and still have a black mindset. Still think about the community. Community to me is a mindset. It isn't like sitting next to other black people. I'm not. I don't. I'm not pro black. I don't like all black folks. I don't like child molesters. I don't like rapists. I don't like all black folks. So we put ourselves as a a black first mentality and not realizing that includes all black people. Like I don't include all black people in black growth. And I think we don't, we can we, we say community as if the pro, the problems of the community are part of or, or the same mindset. Like if they're issue, they're, these people are here are issue, they're not community based. Community based to me is mindset. So I was talking about divest earlier. I don't mean go get a white dude. I mean divest with the idea that all black folks are part of the community. No, they're not. Some of these people out here are not for the community. So I'm not for black folks who are not for the community to grow. So you you got you gotta be over here, be white dude, not be the white dude. You got be white black man your whole life and still not be part of the community. If you're you have perpetual issues, then you're not part of the community. The people that grow the growth for me, the growth for me. The divest means the no, there's not all black, not all black or black, not black on black or black. It's just growth. It's growth. By the way, you are the fastest speaker that I've ever heard. Yeah, man, she talks fast, faster than me. Yeah, I'll be trying to put it on on slow. <laughs> Sorry, you, did you catch it, girl? Did you catch it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point to think about. Like, what exactly does community mean? That's good. Well, I literally have to study, guys, and give it to you know my trainers. Like, I can't teach a class. I can write the good books for it, but I cannot teach it. I'm gonna write. So I write well, it I think up. I, think I, think I would That's love it because I like, I like people to be quick, so I love it. <laughs> They want to peacock on the world stage, yes. I'm actually writing an article on peacocking and um, my experience in Houston because while it was fun, I definitely did look up the, the poverty rate and I was like, in no way we are supposed to be up here affording the same um, area. <laughs> It was a mess. I, I don't know how this was happening, but period. Um, wait till you come to L.A. Huh? I said, wait till you come to L.A. Yeah, period. Yeah, it was a mess. Uh, Timmy, to invite you to LA. Whenever you come, you let me know. Hey, who is, that? is that Obi? Yes. Obi, you're in LA too. Hey, what's up, brother? Wait, <laughs> is that an invite? Because I, I, I will show up. You're oh, invited. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, if I go there and I let me not say that on myself. Um, y'all knew where I went, so come find me. <laughs> Funding up what white women built abroad. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, truth teller, go ahead. Um, everyone will get a couple minutes. Well, not a couple minutes. 30 <laughs> seconds, except truth teller. Yeah, I know. Hi, everybody. Nice to, uh, I was only able to catch the last, like, I think 40 minutes or so of everything. But um, I did see Sin's video of the same Moynihan report and have been watching the last few lives, of course. Um and I just wanted to, to make the comment. I mean, I everything that everyone has been saying so far from what I've heard, um, you know, I agree with uh, for the most part. And I really do think that upon reflecting on the ways in which, and we've said this uh, numerous times, uh, Themis, that you have been so gracious with Black men, giving them the opportunity to come up and air their grievances. And they've very inarticulately and unsex 
unsuccessfully been able to or to say what it is that they have issue with, although they're complaining against black women all day long. And I've been, you know, reflecting on it, reflecting on it. And, you know, I've arrived at the view that it's not that, and, it's, and I think this is a tension perhaps for most black women, at least it is for me, which is the case that we want for the community to do well, right? And I've never been the type of person where I have limited myself in terms of uh, relationship prospect um, in, in terms of only dating black men. But regardless, from what we've observed, a lot of black women still care very much. And I think that's due to our nurturing, um, our natural nurturing nature. You know what I mean? Because whether or not a black woman has given birth to a child or not, uh, we do tend to care uh, far more for the black community than our male counterparts. And um, what I've discovered is that, and the tension is that uh, it's been hard for us to come to this conclusion where it's like, okay, you know what? They're just gonna have to handle it themselves because it kind of feels like we're giving into the negative stereotypes that has plagued the whole black community. You know what I mean? Um, and so the issue is not that they're incapable of doing it, is that they're simply choosing not to, right? Yeah. It's not that they cannot be the men that they need to be in order to make it in this society is that they simply do not care to and they have resigned themselves to mediocrity and degeneracy that is the issue right and so to be able to distinguish between those two is not that they're intellectually incapable per se but they've never applied themselves towards becoming capable which makes them incapable in the same, currently in their current state. Yeah, like in the same way that black women have, right? Because as someone else was saying here earlier, you know, black women are part of the same environment uh, in terms of the single parent household and not having enough guidance and, and, and food insecurity and all of that. And yet and still we persevere and we push through because we understand that we do not want to continue in the same level of subsistency where you're just getting by we want more for ourselves and so therefore we strive after a better life but if by contrast black men are not doing that and that is the crux of the issue right yeah. and so the danger uh yes uh erica they're they're in that they're and they're doing it purposefully and so that's the thing is that like you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink like we can tell you that you're capable of doing this thing but unless you believe it for yourself unless you choose to do it for yourself, it will not be done. And what no. black women have been doing is we've been leading them to the water and picking up the water and giving it to them to drink and they're boxing it out of our hands. <laughs> not boxing it out of our yeah. hands. Yeah, I have to put in a little Jamaican, you know. Yeah. <laughs> because, Thank you. I, I mean, I, there's nothing to add. Right, yeah. like that's what it is. Because I'm thinking about it and I'm watching you too and I'm getting pissed off quite frankly like as other women have shared because i'm like the boy i'm just not get it i just like I, and i'm just like mumbling to myself in patwa when you're like they're just they're just not getting it they're just not getting it and i'm like you know what they just don't want to get it they just do not want to do it and this is it sad i think it's spiritual and it won't change you think it's spiritual until right now Yep. So, so, so a demon upon them. <laughs> me not, me not know if it's a demon there, but you know, me not, me not if it's a demon, but it's something, something spiritual. But, I just feel like you know, it's just spiritual. It's not going to change until Ragnarok. Um, yeah, Cynthia, Ragnarok. you have spoken about something like that before. She called it the reckoning. Um, mm -hmm. Cynthia G and her psychic. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that it's a big, well, it's something. It's because here's another thing. I just want to make another point because it's like. There is something going on in their mindset. Uh, I think you had mentioned it before too, uh, Themis, that um, we are in a white dominant society and we're socialized to believe that white is right in anything. And see, again, that's where the tension comes in for me because one of the best things that could have happened to me is coming from Jamaica and gr growing up for the second part of my life in a predominantly white community. And I do not say that because they're better. I say that because I was able to observe that they're no different than us in terms of their capacity. There are many white kids in my class that I was as smart as or smarter than. You understand? So nobody's gonna tell me that just because my color is this, that I'm stupid or incapable or ugly or whatever. No, I see them, but black men don't see that. They still idolize and praise and black women have somehow by the grace of God, I don't know how we do it, been able to hold ourselves with a certain level of esteem 
and confidence that black men clearly has not done. There is a underlying hatred that they have for themselves. And therefore, if you hate yourself, you cannot love your counterpart. I mean, there is something to be said. Ready for the tomatoes? I'm ready for the tomatoes. There is something to be said if you are a man in a world where you are told that you should lead, but you are dominated. Like, that that has to mess with your psyche. Like, but the thing is, when it does, I one would assume you would want to push back against the system as opposed to a push Acquiesce back against... To it. Yeah, or, or, uh, push against the women. But by pushing against them, you're acquiescing to the system. So maybe the way in which we are internalizing the hurt that we feel from our lack of social, political, and economic power as a group is being... I don't know, it, it's being turned in the wrong direction. Like pain is not bad. It's either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, right? Exactly, so you, exactly. You are either going to get, you're going to feel pain. Pain is going to happen. Either you feel it now and fight for what you want or you feel it later when you realize and you look back at your life and realize, oh crap, I failed, right? Exactly. So you're going to feel pain. Pain is just going to be there. It's inevitable. Yeah, it's inevitable yeah. in this life. And I, I, I think it's how we, 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 we deal with the pain and I think we're dealing with it improperly. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And if I may make um, one more point uh, with regard to that, um, you know, that's one of the things that I've been discovering for myself uh, as I get older and as I, you know, uh, have gone through therapy and, and really thinking through a lot of the things and 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 shift in my own mindset. Um, and, and not, I think I joined the live when you were talking about, you know, purposely not talking about the system as much and really focusing on the agency that we all have as individuals, even in spite of the challenges that we face in a in a white supremacist society. And, and that's the thing is that the black men, like people need to make a decision, whether male or female, about who you are and who you want to be. Because um, even the Bible says it is that, you know, and it, it was Jesus that uttered these words, in this life, you will, you will have uh, trials and tribulation. Not you might, you will, because it's just the nature of things. And, and, and the difference is how do you respond to it? So you can either see yourself, we're all the authors of our own story, so we can either see ourselves as the perpetual victim or we can choose to become a victor. So it's like the people are going to do what the people are going to do, right? Like white men are going to do what they're going to do to benefit themselves. That's just who we are as human beings. So you cannot expect and beg them to like do for you what you can really do for yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so when I shifted my mindset in that way, because I study political science and I also study the political culture of race and racism, um, and it was very depressing, <laughs> to be honest, um, because there were concerted effort put into setting up this structure and this narrative that has had severe and long lasting impact on black people globally, right? Um, however, with that being said, you cannot allow that to stop you because then you might as well just give up altogether, yeah. right? So it's a choice you really have to make. And this is what it comes down to. And what I've seen is black women have made the choice that, okay, this is the system. These are the, the cards that we're dealt with. And I'm going to play those cards to the best of my ability. And we, it's showing that we are, you know, elevating ourselves as a result. Black men have not been doing that. Pain is inevitable. There is no human being on this planet that um that can say they've been through life without pain exactly unless you um, haven't lived long enough yet and in that case it will come so <laughs> and Themis, I'm gonna just, uh real quick go back to my part where she was saying uh where this thing is first this is what i believe you, know, uh, you everyone only have 30 seconds so whatever you do with that 30 seconds you can do with it you're okay. muted you're muted you are muted oh sorry yeah, so this is what I think. I think that how, um, like I say, I think it's spiritual. You know what I'm saying? When the Egyptians didn't listen to God and that's his people, the Israelites and God had them, um, you know, 40 years by the Egyptians. This is why I think that's happening. You know, you got to be a Christian, first of all. If you don't believe in a Christian, don't believe in the Bible, don't listen to me or whatever. We can talk all this black day shit all day. I know one day there won't be a judgment day. 
I know one day is not going to matter. All of this fuckery we're talking now, all right? And I feel it's, it's very spiritual because I think like we're God's people. And just like in the biblical days, when you don't pay attention, when you get far from God, that's why the woman pushing away from the men and the men pushing away from the woman in our right race more than anybody else. Because I just think that when you separate yourself spiritually from, you know, the father and doing things like family and being corrupt, that oh, happens. Your time. Time. That's I, your <laughs> um, um, I actually really wanted to get in, go back and forth with you a little bit on this, but I won't because I need to get it's this. In my next time, next time, man. Next time, I got you. <laughs> Let me go next. Right, have a good one. All right, who is next? Me. Who okay. Amara. Oh, hey, hey y'all. Yeah. It's Amara. So um, here's where I'm going to angle. The Black community is a matriarch, right? That's what they are trying to promote to us. So at the end of the day, if that's what we, our cards have been dealt to be, then we should actually move in that way. I feel like we always get to the point where it's like, oh, Black men are uh, like incapable of doing the things they're supposed to do because they don't want to. But I honestly believe that it's because a lot of them can't. Oh, wait, I'm almost done. I honestly believe that it's because some of them can't. So with that being said, we just need to put them on our front lines and the women need to make the decisions. We need to make the decisions. We need to make the rules and they need to fight for us because they are the strongest men on earth. Anyways, that's it. (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> I won't go back with you either. Uh, g- g- dish. That is not going to work. I would say simply black women need to play smart. You know, eventually you have to stop trying to be a savior. And if you're not going to wake up and see that people that don't want anything to do with you, you need to like let go of that. You know, you can't do anything. These people are in survival mindset and they're trying to get rid of you to survive and they're trying to kiss, you know, the white side's butt. So I would see that and I would go into survival too because we've been in survival for like centuries. So what difference would that make? We just have the internet to show and, you know, help. So I would say we're all on the fight and we got to do what we got to do, you know, support other black women and black women on businesses, for example, like me, et cetera. That's all. Thank you and good night. Wait, that your audio. Oh, all right. Um, Go ahead. Um, It's funny. Okay. uh, I probably have less time than that. Uh, I just actually want you to do a show, Thermos, and you were for black men and ask them to talk about the issues of the black community without mentioning black women or white supremacy and see how far the conversation goes. I I challenged men to have a conversation without black women and white, white men, white supremacy. See how far. I oh go. yeah, we can. I can talk That's about it. it for days. That's it. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate that, and I will definitely do that. There's a men's only panel coming soon, so I'm just talking through your your 30 seconds. Okay. Um, okay. Well, no so, black women mentioned. No white supremacy mentioned. Black men self reflect. Or t- say say something that they, they can deal with, but no black women mentioned. No white supremacy mentioned. That's what they say. <laughs> I you. second that. This is so annoying, <laughs> and I apologize. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, thank you for also being up here. For people on camera, I appreciate it because I like seeing other people. This is why I have not removed you from the stream at all. Um, um, who, SKJ. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say I would challenge everyone to um, think about the idea that we don't have to live in either extreme on either side of the fence. There is a middle ground and you can live within it. Um, go outside, touch grass, drink water, meditate, don't blame other people for your problems, heal. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you. Let's restart. Um, have a good night. Um, hey. Help me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, who is that? Mad Black? Mad Black. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I just really quickly just wanted to say thank you. This is my first time listening to your show. And this is my first time being up here. Um, I've been listening to Cynthia G for a few years, and that's how I got here. So thank you. Um, my actual name is Valerian. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, my actual name is Valerian still. I don't know why um, I kept getting kicked out before. But yeah. Um, anyway, 
I just think that women, black women, we need to relax and let men be men. Let them do their job, and they'll they even if they make a mistake, they can figure it out. We don't have to jump in and save them. We've gotten them to this point. Now it's their turn. Thank you so much. I Amen. mean, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. And yep, <laughs> I the next person. I actually really like this. It feels like I'm not being mean. So I like it. <laughs> uh, Mad Black, thank you, and I hope you come back on. Um, Obi. Thank you. All right. Um, I think that one of the challenges we have is that it's not that we, like, I think a lot of Black men, we don't know how to fix this. We know there's a problem. We can feel it every day. We see it on the news. We see it around us. But we don't know how to fix it. And a lot of us don't believe it can be fixed. They don't believe it's, there's a black community and it cannot, it can be fixed. And they watch some people try to fix it and fail. So they don't believe they can. So like all they have to do, all that we've done right now is to create coping mechanisms of hyper individualism, degeneracy, blaming women, anything because we don't know how to fix it. But I think black men can, I think we have the power. Father you know, black Americans actually built this country. They built, the country was built on their back. So if we actually can build the whole country, we can build our own communities. We have the power. We just Obi, need to... Obi. All right. Thank you. Thank you so I'm trying to be strict with the time. I appreciate right, that. Then. Bye. Um, truth teller, go ahead. I mean, you just spoke, but if you... you <laughs> oh, the, the final thoughts? Um, yeah, in 30 seconds, I think... Uh, Obi said it before earlier, leadership means accountability. You cannot be a leader without accountability. Start seeking accountability and leadership through accountability and not just power. Oh, all right. That's great. Four, 14 minutes left. That's <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, LB with the one. Everyone else, we can talk in the after show. LB? Mm. Sorry. I was eating. Um, <laughs> I mean, your time is going. <laughs> that is so rude. So I want, can I restart? <laughs> All right, I'll restart just for you. This will not happen I'll again. Go ahead. Follow me. You probably started timer before I came on. Okay, so I think um, I, don't, I don't remember who said it. Don't have time to figure it out. But life is suffering, right? Like people said, somebody said that, and I feel ridiculous for not knowing who. Um, but I, I modify that, and my belief is that life is struggle. And it's not about whether you're going to struggle. It's about which struggle you want to endure and if it's worth the end. That you're <laughs> Demis, you're so lucky you're in D.C. because I would snatch your phone. <laughs> you're enjoying this. You love this. You're like, ha, ha, ha. finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, no points were made. <laughs> No points. I, mean, <laughs> My, I don't believe that life is suffering exactly. I think that you life has struggle and you have to decide how you want to struggle and if it's worth the ends that you're trying to meet. Thank you. I appreciate that. With that, we go into the after show. Um, so we really is here. So let's go into the after show. Um, and we can talk yeah. for like five minutes. No more. Um, I'm going to put a timer on five the, minutes. They miss. Hi, um, famous, please let me say this to the world. Well, you will, you will in two seconds. Oh, okay. All right, the after show panel is going to be five minutes. I'm starting it now. Go ahead, Cerebral. Also, why I'm doing this, no reason. I just like to have separate segments. Go ahead, Cerebral. Thank you so much again for letting me on, Themis. What I'm about to say to Black people, I say in love, okay? Um, I took a few notes. I'm going to be very fast. Um, I, some things that were said, um, there is no war to fight. The war has already been lost. Black people need to focus on a recovery. Black women, step aside and let the Black man learn how to be a man on his own. Stop doing the marches. Stop stepping in. If he doesn't, if the Black man as the collective, if you don't have the strength within, you just ain't got it. 
either you are alpha or beta. That's just the way the world, the world is going to move on with or without the black man. And, and, um, okay. Um, oh, oh my God. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The black man who said the black man built the country, you didn't really build the country. You were instructed from the white man. The vision of this country comes from the white man, the Bill of Rights, the black woman. Some of you out here, you get more protection under the white man than you would in any black nation. You are one of the luckiest women. And I know some might not think that, but you are. Also, as far as someone saying, okay, Black American culture. Yes, we have some beautiful things within it, but a, a large percentage of it, throw it away. Out of wedlock children, the men don't want to get married. They don't want to provide the twerking. Do the twerking in the bedroom. Stop going in the public with your butt halfway out, shaking your behind, embarrassing Black women. Um, as far as some solutions, um, I have heard someone say, Black boys and girls need to be separated in schools. We can see each other during recess or lunchtime. Um, for the Black people who, who want their own schools, understand you still need a curriculum uh, under the white man so that you can come, your men can compete with other races of men. Black man, the solution, y'all have to get educations. You have to be able to compete. You have to get hired for a job so that you can make money and raise us up. If you're not going to work for somebody, go to school for business and start a business. Whether you like it or not, you live in the white man's world. You either going to learn how to play this game or get left behind. Jewish white women, some of them get educated, but from what I heard, a number of them don't even go to school as much or work. Their sons do, and then they come back and take care of them. Okay, look, other men from other cultures, I've seen it. They'll have these long names. They come to America. They change their name to John and Brian just so they can get on to get hired. They play in the game. As far as code switching, you can be who you are, but understand you have to be a professional. You cannot take that ghetto mentality, speaking incorrectly at a professional job. Nobody's going to take you serious or want to hire you. Yes, there is a, a time and a place, but stop being delusional. You don't run this country. You're going to have to learn how to play the game. Okay. Also, um, if black men get power, we see how treacherous a number of you are right now. All you would do is just marry up a bunch of women, not black. And you, the, you, you, a lot of black men, not all of you, you're just mad because you got outsmarted and you got screwed over. If you were in the position of the white man, I believe you would do the same thing. It already happens in parts of Africa. OK, and we have to come to the truth. Yes, black men and a few a small number of black African women, but a large percent of black African men participated in the slave trade. Black men in America had slaves, had um, purchased slave women and sent them back into slavery. I have the book. We cannot heal until you face the truth. And the truth is ugly. Somebody said about the church, the black women in church. I said it in one of my videos. You got all these black women who are trying to be Christian, going to church. It's full, the church is full of women. If your men are not on the same page with you, you will continue to have a disaster. You can't be the one going to school, making money, lifting yourself up, and your men say it doesn't matter. You can't go to church trying to be a, a Christian woman and have Christian values, but your men are walking around saying they're God and don't want to follow nothing. You're God, but you can't fix your situation. We keep talking about history from 2,000 years ago. Yes, we have some great history from some of our ancestors, but what people care about is where are you now? I don't give a damn what you did 2,000 years ago. Look at us right now. And my personally, I think it's a done deal for a large percent of, of Black America. If you're going to save somebody, save the children. But most Black people are not disciplined enough and they don't want to sacrifice and throw away a lot of black culture you got other groups of people who are black they don't even want to say they're black because the culture is too bad they don't want to be associated with it so um that's all i have to say for right now thank you sorry i just had to stop that um thank you um we're in here <laughs> um no need to read 
life has struggled. It's not about whether you all struggle. The question is how and for what will you struggle? What will you work for? What will you sacrifice for? What is worth it? Um, someone actually, sorry, sorry, I actually have to do this and then come back to um, uh, where's and goes to go to bed. <laughs> Log off. We're not doing it. Um, for the people who say um, life, th there's no pain in life. I I don't I don't know. I think we we have to be honest. And even if I'm wrong, I'm nothing but honest with how I feel. Um, honesty is important. And I would be lying to you if I say I believe you when I say there won't be um, one struggle. And I'm not talking about struggle of you can remove yourself from that, but there will be pain. Pain exists. It, it, it's inevitable. Um, and I see a lot of comments on that. And I think you guys are reading that to mean that I say you have to choose pain um, in the way that you have to choose struggle. And that's not what I mean. Um, but I'm also not going to clarify it any further because I'm not going to get caught up in semantics. Okay. It is what you believe. It is what you believe. I'm not about to explain that over and over again. It, it's fine. All right. Yeah, Let's... also just want to clarify, by no means am I promoting struggle dog or anything adjacent to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, I'm saying look, I, I, love I, right now. I, I will promote this. Yeah. People drag me for it in academic sphere, and I don't care. Um, I believe women should be hypergamous. There's too much to lose. But I'm not telling you what to do. Don't listen to me. But I believe women should be hypergamous. Uh, take that how you believe, want. Um, there is no amount of money you want that is too much. Thank you, Sari. Oh, she left. I wanted to say thank you to her, but she's on a move. Um, she came up, dragged, and then left. So period. The Chosen. Hey, sorry. Um, I've been trying to get on. It's like 4 a.m. I'm in the UK and I was just about to go to sleep. But um, I was, I was thank you. Wait, wait. <laughs> a very Not special a thank you for staying up with us. Um, it was actually Sinji. I was watching. I watch Sinji all the time. Um, I've recently came across the Rebrals channel and um, obviously yours tonight. And um, thank you so much for having me on, first of all. And it's been a really great live, obviously, because I've been here for like four hours. <laughs> Um, We've been on but, for five hours now. That's amazing. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but what I really wanted to say was, um, I think one of the problems is the fact that men and women, regardless of the race, I feel like we 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 te we pretend like we don't know, or we 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 allow men to pretend like we don't know. Or, or they don't know what it is that they should be doing. We allow them to pretend like they are not supposed to provide. They're not. We are, we allow them to continue to make single parent parent household and make excuses for it. And I feel like that's on us a little bit because if we didn't allow that, and we didn't allow men to pretend like we don't like, like they don't know what the expectation is it would be really it would be very different for a lot of people that and I, and, and and sorry i mean wait no so this is what i'm saying someone came up and said black women push the blame off no black black women keep taking responsibility for things that are not their and, and and the thing is um uh, cerebral mentioned the whole thing about christianity um, and it's, I was I was raised Christian. I was born in Zimbabwe, but I've been, I've lived in the in the UK for about seventeen years now. And we have Zimbabwe has history with Scotland. David Livingstone brought the Bible to Africa, basically. And um, it's 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 not it's not for it's not for black people. It's it's not for Africans. Like that's not our book. Um, in Zimbabwe, there was actually a female spiritual leader that headed basically just that whole region. She was the spiritual leader for both men and women. And I think we're seeing this in society with how black women move. We are natural born leaders. Look at the men who are, in, it's men running the world everywhere. Men should not be running the world at all. Because look at the havoc that it's wreaked upon 
different races, um, the whole class thing, the whole, um, you, it's just the whole ego power trip that they go on. Personally, I don't believe that men should be in positions of power like that. Can, um, well, I mean, without, I don't talk Which about in, in, in terms of prescribing what to do or what not to do, but I will say that, um, I kind of agree to the to, with the conclusion, maybe not fully the reasoning in terms of who should lead, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I appreciate you, the chosen. Can one of the moderators drop Cerebral channel? Um, I think everyone is asking for it, so the crowd gets what the crowd wants. Um, thank you, chosen. The chosen. Who was the last person? Wait, why? Who is this? Why should black with that? Oh, all right, good. Uh, not good, but good. Too lovely, go ahead. Okay, thank you for having me back on. Um, <clears throat> this is what I wanted to talk about. Someone talked about it much earlier. They talked about ego. And I think ego is not a problem in the black community for black men as much as it is something that is seriously lacking in black men. I Pause. feel like I one, one one second. Okay. LB, absolutely not. You can literally say it's like interrupt me and talk um in the after show. I, I feel like you're the super chatting. I feel really weird. Um, <laughs> Don't be super chatting when you're up here. Well, yeah, I could like I could be at a movie right now, and I'd probably be at a movie spending like fifty bucks, like ticket, popcorn, a drink, and so I don't mind spending that to be here. And I didn't want to interrupt the conversation. All right, I won't. I will. Like stop. when I super I, chat, you don't have to read it. Yeah. All right. Well, I will stop trying to be paternalistic with you guys and your money, uh, but you don't have to super chat. But I know you guys I mean, want to like, support. I, my cash app is. <laughs> you can just send me all my um, super chats back. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll get fifty percent of it back since YouTube would take half. Anyway, wow. sorry, too lovely. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, like I was saying, I think I think ego is actually something that is extremely lacking in Black men in the community at this point. It feels like a character of ex shameless. Like they have no shame for their position in society. They're not ashamed of, actually they wear it as their pride and excuse their condition instead of having a deep ego that pushes them to change the, the state of affairs. And that's what I feel that where, where's the creativity? Where's the complex thinking? Where that is lacking in the black community because if, we all understand where we are. We understand the history. I feel like it's been beaten over the head. Not that every time I talk to white people in these organizations, I, I always bring up the struggles and the history. But at this point within the community, I think we, sh we need to be focused on, especially as Black men, how we can infiltrate, navigate, and overcome a system that has been against us instead of staying in it and in that mindset. Yeah. Can I, I, I mean, go ahead. I was going to just say like how how long are we just going to make it like their obligation when they're proving that they're just not capable like I said there's a few black men who are capable, but when we look throughout history, it does not look like Black men are capable of doing that. Even if we look at Africa right now, there is an issue. And I think the problem is that Black women are the matriarchs, and we are supposed to be the matriarchs of the world, if you were to ask me. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And I feel like Black men being the most, the, the strongest men you know, physically just proves that they're supposed to be that masculine protection in front of us. And I wait, think the wait, fact wait. that I think the fact wait, that their their um comprehension skills and just their mentality is so daft sometimes that they're literally meant to be our protection. And that's it. That's that's just how I, I feel. Everyone wait, has wait, wait, the 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 um there was this really I think he was a skinhead. So there's this Russian, well, I wish you never said where. Um, he was in one of my classes and he literally got up and said, 
the because your muscles are big, not to me. I was a skinny thing then. But because black men muscles are big, it doesn't mean they they're they're like kings or anything like that. It's dumb. He was responding to someone. It is the bigger the muscle, the smaller the brain, or something like that. I don't remember what he said, but something like that. And I remember him like explaining how because you're bigger, you should be working like essentially um for people other people um and lifting heavy things and whatever but he went in and there's i probably shouldn't continue this story because it gets you please we're waiting, we're watching. We're waiting. Please, please, don't do this to us. thank you this black woman got up uh, black woman yeah black woman got up and dragged him in the class in front of everyone i'm not going to say what she said but she talked about lips she talked about um, athletic inability. She talks about the sun and the skin and see-through. She just went in. <laughs> and I have never in my life seen someone dragged so badly. Um, but I'm not going to say it because I, I can't. Um, vitamin Q said, make it ri- No, uh, n- don't bother read. <sighs> please don't. <laughs> Dean can do it. Dean, please send more. <laughs> I'm not as well as a fragile snowflake. Anyway, um, I do appreciate this. The last thing I want to say is we have a debate on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, the teams hopefully have been working hard. Please show up for that. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The topic is whether our, whether sex work should be de- uh, legalized in the United States. Um, and we have two teams that are working hard to um, get into that. However, before we go, um, this is what I was hurrying to get to. Um, here we go. So I got this comment, um, and I will explain. Well, maybe someone here on stage already know this. It says, I'm not really understanding the car stolen in a bad neighborhood and choosing better analogy. Something in me just can't agree with that. I believe that's two different things. I believe something in you, wait, (laughs) you are not understanding versus something in you just don't want to agree are two different things. (laughs) I think that is the problem. I think something in you don't want to agree because what we're talking about is culpability. It is not about choosing better. The argument goes, black women because of your choice in men is why you are single mothers. And so you are to be blamed if the father walks out on you. The car in a bad neighborhood is saying, if you park your car in a bad neighborhood, I mean, if you didn't know it was a bad neighborhood and your car gets stolen, Mm -hmm. is that you being culpable? Right. So when we catch the thief, are we going to say, oh, believe the thief, nothing wrong with that, because that thief stole your car because you parked it in a bad neighborhood. The legal system is not going to say, go away, thief, because she parked it in a bad neighborhood. Culpability is with the person who did the bad act. In the same way, when you have a child as a man and you leave and walk out on your responsibility, which is the bad act, you leaving, you are culpable. Mm-hmm. Exactly, that part. That is, that, that is it. Now, you can understand it, but you can choose to not agree with it. What is <laughs> what, what are two different things, as you said, I believe that's two different things. The two different things is your unwillingness to understand and then your unwillingness to agree with. Understanding something is not the same as agreeing, as agreeing with yes. it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's your problem. You're, mis- you, you, you're misstating your position. It might be that you don't understand, which a comprehension problem is not a bad thing. Um, and it also could mean I understand, but I don't agree with it. That's yeah. a separate thing. So mm-hmm. I, I think there is a, 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 a lag in learning. <laughs> There's an issue 
in, in comprehension, maybe. Um, I just wanted to point that out to bring you clarity. I do read every single comment I get, but I don't respond to all of them. Um, it takes too much energy now, and people are being annoying. Um, you know, benefit of the doubt, blame the English language, because to come to understanding is commonly understood to mean to come to agreement. So maybe he got confused somewhere in like English. Just I was gonna say that no, <laughs> no. <laughs> the vocabulary was expeditiously for Friday. Period. Um, <laughs> Jeff here to say men are the prize. Period. <laughs> you, you better take that woman's space. Um, <laughs> Go I ahead, queen. queen. Period. <laughs> Treat her like a woman, twenty twenty two. <laughs> Treat her like a lady. Um, Say that again, Demas, for them in the back. Uh, someone was stalking and I interrupted. That's everything, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, just to piggyback off you making like the separation, I think part of what's happening now in our current society is being that we are in a postmodernist um, state, of, of state of being, like in perceiving the world, that's where the issue comes in. Because there's a difference between, that's why I'm a firm believer in objective truth and separating that from your truth. Because there's a distinct difference between what you experience um, in whatever is, is being addressed and what is objectively true, regardless of how you feel. So you can, and, and there's an obscurity happening in our culture and society today because of uh, postmodernist um, uh, lens that people have adopted, where, which is that when somebody tells you the truth, um, people take personal offense to it. And I think that's what's been happening a lot with these guys when you're questioning them in order uh, to give them an opportunity to either reconsider uh, their position or be able to articulate it better. And instead of seeing it for what it is, they take it as a personal attack on their person instead of an attack on their idea. And dissension is now dying out for fear of causing hurt or harm to people and people are unable to distinguish between the two. I can disagree with you without hating you. Disagreement does not equal hate. Like this needs to be clarified. And I can speak the truth about something that is objectively empirically true and you can not like the truth, which has always been the case. Like not every truth you're gonna like, but it it still remains a truth, whether or not you like it. Yeah. And it just um, is what it is. Um, Queen says, uh, do I have permission to use a few clips from the stream to teach with? Just thought I'd ask. Um, teach on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, you can. I would say, though, um, the one thing the one thing that would annoy me is if my content is just reposted verbatim. Like, there's no adding of anything. But yeah, sure, you can, definitely can use it um, uh, to talk, to, to teach. Um, so with that... It is now 11.30 where I am. We hang out for five hours and 15 minutes. I thought that would have taken me an hour to go over the Moynihan report and that we would talk for 30 minutes to an hour, but I know that I'm always wrong in my estimation of how long this is going to be. Um, I appreciate all the work of the moderators, everyone who did, uh, came up. Uh, Sinji, thank you for pushing me to do this. Um, I was not going to do it because you already did it. Um, so I, I was not going to go for it. So hopefully I brought something else um, as opposed to going through it. I do appreciate all of you. Cerebral, Amara, Truth Teller, LB, Too Lovely, um, even Petty. <laughs> that in the chat, Prince Petty, thank you all. Um, and one thing I will say, and it's um, a reiteration of something that I said earlier. I do not care about the beefs happening online. And the one thing, if someone is yelling at me, talking about me, they're doing it to themselves. I am not responding to it. I don't have time for it. Um, but the space is open for people willing to engage in discourse. So I will give people the benefit of the doubt because I'm not about to go investigate them and their channels, but they can come here and talk. And I hope that we can allow that. Let's imagine this space to be um, not even neutral ground, because I don't like neutrality, but an objective, at least want to be objective ground where people get to talk. Even with my own biases, they get to talk and we get to challenge their ideas. 
that would be a beautiful thing for me. I would love to hear people's opinion. That is it. Thank you all so, so much. Um, <laughs> um, I don't respond. I don't have time for it. Um, so anyway, thank you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't, there is a ton of videos that you can watch um, and comment on and disagree with me and come up and then drag me for it. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you.